one. I'm going to go a little slower than usual just because new stuff here. Three, two, one. Ready, set, here I go. Hey, everybody. Tonight we're debating Muslim Civil Society, or Dr. Hashmi's organization, versus MuslimSkeptic.com. Which organization has helped or harmed Muslim Americans more? And we are starting right now with, before I hand it over to Dr. Hashmi for his opening, I'm going to quick read his introduction. Dr. Javad, Dr. Javad Hashmi is a PhD candidate in the study of religion Islamic studies at Harvard University, former fellow of medical ethics at Harvard Medical School, and practicing emergency physician. In addition to his medical training, <clears throat> Dr. Hashmi has obtained bachelor's and master's degrees in Arabic and Islamic studies from UC Berkeley and Harvard University, respectively. Dr. Hashmi is currently completing his doctoral dissertation on the topic of jihad in the Quran. His research interests include Quranic studies, Islamic intellectual history, with a focus on Islamic modernism, and the inter and the intersection between religion and violence. He recently stepped down from his position as research director at MPAC, MPAC, the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Dr. Hashmi can be followed on Twitter at Dr. Javad T. Hashmi, as well as on YouTube with the, hand, the handle Impactful Scholar. With that, thanks very much for being with us, Dr. Hashmi. The floor is all yours. All right, thank you so much, James. I'm gonna be sharing my screen, so if you could just hold on till then. Um, oh, I always forget to close this. All right, and then if you could give me that warning as well. Um, am I set to go now? Yes, crystal clear. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, so the first thing I wanna state is that I didn't actually want to do this debate. This is, I wanted to do the debate that we had two weeks ago, which was an intellectual debate, not one where we engage in ad hominem attacks. Uh, but unfortunately, Daniel insisted on this debate, and so here we are, and it's unfortunately going to get deeply personal. I just want to uh, remind that I didn't start this. In fact, Daniel has attacked uh, numerous or almost all of the major Muslim leaders, personalities, and organizations, and MPAC is just the latest victim of this. Although I no longer work for MPAC, I recently resigned. I am proud of the work they do on behalf of the American Muslim community, and I will seek to exonerate them from Daniel's lies and slanders. In fact, it's Daniel and his org that are complete grift and harm to the American Muslim community. Now, who's behind the Muslim skeptic team? Well, it's a bunch of anonymous nobodies. We have no idea who these people are. It's really, at the end of the day, just two people. It's Daniel Hakikachu and his wife, Um Khalid, or Ola. Ola is not some innocent third person here. She is part and parcel of the grift. She's the one who runs Alasana Institute, and they both benefit from financially from the grift that they engage in. So Daniel wants to put MPAC on trial, but today I'm, being, I'm putting Daniel on trial. And the charges against Daniel are that he's an insincere grifter, extremist, racist, hypocrite, conspiracy theory kook, smear merchant, and serial liar. Liar, and nobody should take him seriously. You could not possibly pay someone to do a better job of being an agent provocateur and of making Islam look bad than Daniel. I don't think we need to claim that Daniel is literally getting paid by some secret agency, but he is certainly lining his pockets with his obvious grift. So that's the first charge, that he's an agent provocateur. He, he himself recognizes that these people exist, people who are Muslim, but make Islam look brutal. And he says this is fed-like behavior, and this is the exact behavior that Daniel displays. He recognizes that there are people who just want to talk about slavery, sex slavery, and wife beating all the time. And he says of them, they're cons, con men. Well, Daniel, that's you. You talk about it all the time. In the last year alone, you've tweeted a defense of sex slavery and child marriage over four dozen times. And that's something that not even a reasonable traditionalist would do. You make Islam look bad and you make Islamic traditionalism look even worse. Daniel uh, spreads these kind of images and ideas that Islam was spread by the sword, that Muslims defend slavery and child marriage. There's such thing as Islamic slavery, which he thinks is justified, sex slavery in Islam, wife beating in Islam. And the ex-Muslims and Islamophobes have a field day. They love Daniel. They reproduce all of his uh, content. Uh, they give him a lot of material to work with you know men must beat their wives he says here's he's defending having sex with little kids and child marriage here he's defending the idea that muslim women should not be educated uh basically everything bad that ex-muslims and islamophobes say daniel says yep you're right in fact he just repeats all of these tropes uh it's hard to tell if he's an, uh, a muslim or an islamophobe here he's defending the idea of rape these words here, they could be say, said by Robert Spencer of Jihad Watch about how you can just kill your uh, person's husband, capture her as a sex slave, relocate her by force, no problem, et cetera, et cetera. And he's defending uh, raping uh, slaves. 
this is the work of an Islamophobe, not of a Muslim. Even the ultra conservative fundamentalist Farid had a problem with this and was pushing back against Daniel and saying, no, you do need consent. And then Daniel's arguing with him because that's what kind of a rape apologist Daniel is. Here he is defending uh, marrying and having sex with a five year old and then even a four year old. And this clip went viral. I mean, this alone is enough to cancel Daniel. I mean, who spreads this kind of stuff? And it's not just me who's saying this. Ex Muslims themselves, they are celebrating Daniel. They love Daniel. Here's an ex Muslim Reddit thread in which they're thanking Daniel. Daniel Daniel, if you're seeing this, I just want to say, keep it up. You're doing a great job. You're deviating people from Islam. Daniel is confirming what ex-Muslims have been saying for decades. Another ex-Muslim Reddit thread. Here's ex-Muslim uh, Islamophobe Haris Sultan saying, Daniel just makes our job easier to expose Islam. Here's apostate prophet saying we should give Daniel more exposure. He's doing a fair, you know, give. He's doing a good job. Here's uh, someone saying actually Daniel does a better job than AP himself in turning people away from Islam. Here's other Islamophobes saying the exact same thing that they don't want him canceled. They want him to reach far and wide. He's doing a great. Even in our debate, there were comments like this. And he's uh, basically burying Islam, as one Christian apologist says. And he's loved by right-wing think tanks. Here he is uh, described by this right-wing think tank as a scholar of Islam. He was interviewed by Mideast Forum. And in fact, I got an invitation because of my interaction with him. And Jihad Watch Robert Spencer loves him and says, at, at least Daniel is honest, unlike so many other Islamic apologists in the West. So why does Daniel take all of these extreme and outlandish positions that make Islam look bad? It's the money. It's grift. From his YouTube alone, he's making probably a six-figure salary. He also has multiple streams of income. He's, he's selling content online, like Hustlers University, Andrew Tate's Hustler University. Uh, his uh, service for the year costs $132 a year, and his minions are, of course, paying that. He also had this fraud of a book in which he just pressed print on his blog site and just printed out the articles from his blog and slapped them all together and made it into a book and sold it to his unsuspecting customers. As one reviewer said, this was a scam, just a disgusting cash grab. Nothing original in the book, just his online content. In fact, he's so good at monetizing himself that Alpha Muslim said he's the one to follow when it comes to try to make money. Now, Daniel, that's funny because Daniel has accountability reports on his website, Muslim Skeptic, which is really just him, by the way, and his wife, like I said. And they go into the money. They go into the finances. They ask Yakin Institute about their finances. But really, Daniel should release his financial records for both Muslim Skeptic and Alasna Institute for public accountability. Why are those kept secret? Why has Alasna, your unaccredited homeschooling program, run as a for-profit business when most homeschooling groups are nonprofits? And he might even be violating the law. We can talk about that later. So not only is there the financial aspect, we can just document the grift. And that's why we need to see the finances. From 2015 to the present, Daniel has shifted dramatically, becoming more and more extreme. And the reason, of course, is the money. It's all about the money. So recently, he got some fame by attacking all these mainstream American Muslim leaders for their document navigating differences, which was on LGBTQ issues. Uh, and he criticized them for these three points. But the reality is that Daniel himself he basically issued the first draft of this in 2019. He just called it Tough Conversations, but you might as well have called it Navigating Differences. In that document, he defends gay rights as human rights. He says Muslims ought to defend LGBTQ people. He says that he's, he's celebrating the stalwart allies amongst our LGBT neighbors. So there's really no difference here. In 2019, Daniel spoke like the compassionate imams that he was he's criticizing now. In 2016, he right. said, if you're going to if you're going to post uh, hey, accounts you, that are doxing I'm, me, then I'm not hey, going to show your screen. I'm not, Gentlemen, I'm not, uh, I didn't, hold I didn't on one second. I do have, what are you talking hold on. about? Who did, I, who did I share uh, that? Didn't I'm not I didn't. going to share your screen? Okay, you're scared. You're scared to you're do not share doxing okay, accounts. I hate to mute you you're guys, gonna get this video gonna do banned. Is, you're gonna get our uh, video the banned. audience can still see me, but just until we square away whether or not this is any sort of doxing. So he's he's there's no doxing sharing accounts that are doxing, how, what was doxing me and my there was family. nothing doxing. The I have no idea. That you tw the what? account that you have Daniel, this what, what's, the, what's is a doxing the specific account. information. I just my I just, uh, family pictures of my family. Daniel, in my... case you saw that, so that you can speak to. Can you let me know what piece of info that uh, Javad shared? Did he share your email, or was it your address, or what was it that Javad shared in the screen share? He sh shared an account that has plenty of doxing information about me and my family. Has posted my address, my home address. The account, like this sleaze ball, is. Uh, promoting an account that doxes me is dedicated to doxing me daniel so i did is, not this promote is, this any of doxing Javon, this is how you. unethical he is oh unethical we'll see how unethical do not you do are. not post any, on, if there are any slides if there are any slides that have accounts that dox me and my family that you're showing on the screen to promote i'm not going to show your screen 
You have lied okay. against me. You are smeared. Mario, okay, hold on. Lying is one thing. Doxing is another thing. Lying is one thing. Doxing is another thing. It's all. Uh, uh, you're, you're a sleazeball. You're a scumbag. No, you're the sleazeball. Do not show pictures okay. of accounts Forgive that dox me for muting me you guys. Family. I seriously don't like muting guests because you are our guests. But I am doing a quick review here just to be sure uh, that there's nothing. So I am reviewing Javad's slide just to be sure that there's nothing about daniel's family or address it's the account it's i'm the not account. trying to side with daniel by doing the review but i just have to be sure that there's i have to you know kind of look at this so i am doing a quick review right now and there might uh let me just be sure i've seen everything here yeah so this guy is Posting accounts that are I, dedicated a lot just of to doxing me. Didn't you know the rule, Javad, that you're not supposed to have more than six words per line and no more than six lines per slide? Just one sec. I've just... Hmm. I have to be honest, uh, Daniel, there might have been a misunderstanding. I'm going to double check that I've got it here, but I don't think... So I'm looking at what Javad shared right before the screen share went away i don't think he shared the address uh i don't think that he shared unmute me james unmute me so i can, can tell you what i'm going to give you a chance to explain so daniel go ahead i just asked you to unmute i didn't say that he the screenshot included my address the Sorry account that, okay. the account haram the haram account is an account dedicated to doxing me it has my name it has my name in the account name and it's used, it's just dedicated to doxing me and spreading lies about me. So this is unethical. He's going to get our stream banned. He's going to get your, this stream on your channel and my channel banned because he's posting an account that doxes me. So this is, I'm not going to share his screen. And I would recommend not sharing the screen either, James, because I'll have to report it. I'll have to report your stream for that. This is like a safety concern for my family. I'm I'm looking at it right now. The only thing is, uh, Daniel, I'm trying to like work with me here, is that maybe Look, like I'm not account, taking. If there's an account on, that is dedicated on, Daniel, to doxing I've got you. something to actually say. I wasn't just speaking for sorry, no reason. Sorry. Maybe they are an account that has doxed you in the past. Maybe Haram Hakikachu is like a legitimate like you're terrible. Just, you're just saying it on the stream yeah. now, James. You're saying the name of the account on the stream. Okay, what this theoretical this is not, account? Yeah, roll your eyes, James. This is serious. Evil. This is this is very serious. Daniel, I, don't roll so, your okay, eyes. So this theoretical, this theoretical. It's not your information. Account. It's not Daniel, your family. Why, it, that's why being... am I not allowed to talk? Is that okay? I'm. I'll defer to you that this account has been evil and they have doxed your family because I agree doxing is not okay. I'm not for doxing. I'm against it. But I, the what he shared itself isn't doxing you and so you might hate that that website but i to be fair i like the yeah, it okay. itself if okay here's what i'm gonna say if he continues to share it i'm i can't promise that i won't report uh your stream i'm not gonna share his screen because he hasn't given me any assurance that he's not gonna provide doxing information so um that's we can proceed that way Daniel, this is, if I understand right, this account is active, like it's public knowledge, like it's it's just out there. He's not sharing anything that people can't already see on the internet, which doesn't have any of your personal info. Maybe the person who runs this account, this account is evil, and I'll no, even no, defer they, to you and say they are. It's based on their prior behavior, so making these accounts famous by streaming them to thousands of viewers, potentially hundreds of thousands, that is a that's a threat to me personally, my personal safety and the safety of my wife and children. So okay, I'm one not going to sacrifice so, that for the sake of this stream or this debate. Let me, let me just, okay, Javad, let me quick ask you a question. I'll give you, I'll unmute you, but let me ask you a question. Is Javad, to be fair, I do sympathize with Daniel. Like, if this is an account that does play dirty, such as doxing Daniel's family, I can understand why Daniel doesn't want them to be known about. So, if would you be willing to not show that particular slide? Because, okay, so 
ipso facto daniel's concern isn't okay and i misunderstood it like i said i mentioned your address and stuff daniel i'm sorry about that because you didn't say that but daniel is just saying hey i don't want to give any more attention or exposure to this website that's actually doxed my family it, like so, so i understand so, where daniel's okay. coming from so so if you could mute daniel for while i respond okay because i was muted while daniel was speaking Okay. He's right, so Dan Daniel. I'm gonna mute you. Bear, bear with me, Daniel. But I wait, gotta, yeah, but, the same thing. but he's he can't be he can't be manipulating his stream and having it different than I mean, you're the Why moderator I? and it's your I mean Why it's your I? platform. So he that's See, I can just mute you like this. See? You're not you're not vis uh, your sound is not on in my stream. I can do that on my stream. <laughs> no, James has your stream, you can have one. Okay. I need you to specify. Do you think it's not fair that you're not allowed to, that I'm asking you to not show this organization that is no, allegedly no, no. I, doxxed? Dan Hold no. on, just let me finish yeah, the sentence. Sure, sure, James. Is, sure, or James. are you saying that it's not fair that on Daniel's stream, he can mute you so that theoretically he could mute you through the entire debate if you really wanted to? But Correct. You're saying, so, okay, you're the audio. So you're saying you just don't like that Daniel's... Uh, I... I even even when we're having this discussion, his audience should hear because he's going to make a big deal out of this doxing issue. So when I make my defense, his audience has to hear my defense. And so he is manipulating. He's scared now to debate. And so he's muting me. Even I'm explaining that I'm not doxing and he's muting me. Why is he doing that? Because he wants okay, to so continue wasn't the that you're okay. doxing. Hold on, the one second. is that you're sharing. Okay, gentlemen, I hate okay. to do this, but so, hold on. Okay. Uh, so I think we're at least, I hate to mute you guys, but I'm doing it. So just for a second. I think we're at least on the same page. Resolving the first issue, Javad, you're okay with not showing that account that allegedly is engaged in foul play. Okay, you don't agree. We're not even past that issue yet. Yeah, he wants to show all these accounts. Like that's his strategy. He wants to make these uh, doxing oh, accounts oh, wait, famous. Uh, okay, I'll give you a chance to speak, Javad. If you just go ahead. So I would. I have reviewed it just right now as we were speaking, and I don't see any doxing or personal information on that account. If he shows it, about, then we can about... say, okay, he's proven it. But he can't no, just no. simply claim that there's doxing. He should report it to Twitter. I mean, like you said, this is a public mm -hmm. account. He's just but, creating an issue, right? This is a this is an account dedicated to refuting his ideas, as far as I know. It's not one of the doxing ones. I saw one of the other doxing ones, and I'm not showing that. So if he can show that this and prove that this one is doxing, then I will remove it. And I will also, I, I'll take a quick look and make sure that there's nothing else on, on but he is, he is making that accusation and then he's silencing me on the other side. So now he's going to spread the, the lie on his side. Hold on, that one, I'm one, let's him. do one thing at a time though. I hate to interrupt. Is I do, I think it's hard. I mean, maybe Daniel will prove me wrong and he'll have screenshots of when they doxed it, uh, him. I don't, I mean, for him, whether or not he saved those, I mean, I don't like for him to have to provide proof. It's just kind of a, it's a like how's hard. That, how's that relevant? That that is if they well, engaged in foul play, he might have just reported them. Well, can and, you show I, the mean, I would guess maybe he since then threw away the screenshot. So I, I do kind of want to side with Daniel in terms of like if they've engaged with foul play, if they've docked him. I don't know for sure if it is, but let's just for the so, sake of the debate so, continuing. Hold on one second. What I would... Let's just not show that. If you want to read it out loud and you say, an account on Twitter has said this, that particular one, Daniel's just saying, hey, they've engaged in foul play. I don't want people to know that account exists because they they seem to be malevolent. But for so, the audio, I do kind of side with Javad that Daniel... I can. I even if, don't if mind he's removing not sure. it. I don't mind removing it. I don't have a problem with removing it. I have a problem with his accusations against me. That's what I have a problem with. So, okay, sorry to do this to you, Javad, but it, just, just okay. I get we're on the same page there. So, I do in terms of whether or not the account can be shown. I do kind of side with Daniel, where I'm like, okay, let's just if you just said an account on Twitter has said blah 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 blah, let's do that. In terms of the audio, Daniel. I do sympathize with Javad because if I understand right, though, Daniel, and maybe the problem's already solved, if he doesn't mention the account, you're not going to mute him at all, right, Daniel? Like, if he doesn't mention that Twitter account that you say is malevolent, is engaged in foul play, then you're not going to mute him, correct, Daniel? Yeah, look at the... Um tweet that I just sent you. That's an account, a doxing account that Javad has repeatedly shared on his account. So 
Javad shares doxing accounts. He claims he's trying to say that, oh, I've never actually shared doxing information, but that's not my claim. My claim is that he promotes accounts that dox me and my family. He promotes them and he's doing it in this debate through these screenshots. Like, why does he need to show a particular account name on Twitter to make the argument? You can like just have the information. You don't have to actually show the name of the account. He's specifically showing the names of the accounts. Sure, but it, okay. it's not relevant to his argument. Like a random uh, okay. account I get with it. ten Wait, followers. I just, like, I why does he need to show that? I, but just to keep things moving, is that we're going to jump back into this debate, folks? Bear with us. But it sounds like we're actually in agreement that if Javad doesn't show the name of the account and if he doesn't say the name of the account, Daniel, you're okay. You won't mute him on your side. I correct? won't mute him. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds like, is everything cool if we just don't mention that account? Is, are you okay with it, Javad? So I have reviewed my slides, and those are the only time that I ever cited any Twitter account that's dedicated against Daniel, as far as I can tell. I, I've, I looked it over right now real quick. So I have removed those two slides. They were not crucial to me. The only reason why I said it was because I liked the argument that they were making, making fun of him for that. But, like... Uh, he has to show my slides. There's no way that we can have a debate where he's not showing my slides. So I have removed them. You lost privilege. On your... No. You lost the you... privilege when you showed an account that you... doxes you... me and my family. You... Sorry. You... I you're so scared you. to debate me. You're so scared no, no, to you, debate your me. Your claims, you won't be muted. People can hear you. Your my... <laughs> I have to use, imagine if, D James, this is not fair. How is he doing this, James? This is not <laughs> fair. Like, he has. I, I'm going to stream you doxing or uh, uh, promoting accounts that okay. dox my family so James, on my stream. So, James. My... James, followers. I'm going to request you that can you kindly uh, stop the stream to his because it should only yeah. it, it can't it can't be like this. That's not fair. I can't make my arguments. My arguments are all based on screen share. So I can't make I can't make my opening. That's what I prepared in advance. So he can't not share my screen. That's not fair. He's scared of what I'm going to show. And so he doesn't want to engage okay. in this okay, debate. Fine. I have said fine. that I will remove it. And fine. That fine. I, I've bent to your will, even okay. though Sounds you like haven't proved the that they doxed you. Fine. OK. It, you Sounds better like not show another account like that. Otherwise, you, that's it. All right. Yeah, because so you're scared. You've given it your word. Like we're we're much, in agreement so. here. You're scared. You're, so that, you're, you're one the more one chance. who has no word. One you have, you chance, have no Jafet. word. Yeah. One more chance, yeah. Jafet. Dishonest Wait, Dan. Chance. On. Dishonest. I hate one to do more this, chance for you. Gentlemen, okay, just to be sure we get back into the debate. I forgot how long, how far we were into that opening statement. I, I forgot to hit pause on the timer. It's like eight So I'm going to have to go back and check that too. Give me a second, but sounds like we're all in agreement. Is Daniel, are there any other accounts just so Javad knows what There's to many, share, what there are not many to share? Accounts. He knows exactly that have which actually ones actually docs you. So we're going on the honor system here, Daniel. I don't expect you to have necessarily saved screenshots. Like if you reported a Twitter account and then you threw the screenshot away after the Twitter account got punished by Twitter, I'm like, okay, it's probably what I would do too. So I'm not expect, but I'm just saying, like, obviously so there doxing, probably is. Doxing means to share private information, um, to dig up someone's family and personal address, personal employment, personal details, and share that online as a way of intimidation. There are multiple accounts Wait, that engage know, in but... this against me, and for the purpose of de this debate, Javad doesn't need to show up those accounts like he has done on his personal account. In, Nobody. So I'm this. I'm willing to give him a second chance. I'm willing to give him okay. a second chance. Um, you know, if he does any account like or shares another account like that, then that's it. I'm not going to show his slides, but I'll give him okay. a second chance. So, do you know of any that nobody can see the chat here on Zoom? Could you send him the name of any accounts so that we can prevent him from sharing those accounts that have doxed you? He knows exactly. These are accounts that have my name in the account. They're my, but, like but it it's says, not against the rules to have your name in the account. Like this doesn't mean they dox you them, just because they have your name in the account. He has posted them all before. Here, I'll sh I'll put them in the chat. There's, don't share the chat. I'll put them there. Nobody can see the chat. And uh, Javad, like we're going on the honor system here. I know that you don't trust Daniel, and I know that Daniel doesn't trust Javad, vice versa. So I I do sympathize with Daniel not wanting accounts that have doxed him to do that. I don't know how many of these accounts have doxed him. Uh, I'm not... Yeah, so I don't know. These are, so, these are three. There's also the one that he, he did, which was this one. 
Um, and just to be fair to Javad, letters. if they doxed you, you know, like obviously, I don't know if, you know, I doubt Javad saw the tweet that doxed you. So he's probably sharing these. Yeah. Without does, knowing he, that he they're malevolent. Them. Yes, he does. He he comments on them and replies on them to give them more visibility and okay, to give himself pl plausible deniability. He says, oh, just I'm to, just telling them not to. Okay, hold on. Something. All right. I hate to do this, Daniel. Sorry, man. I just I just I'm trying to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. So I'm going to unmute everybody. We're going to go back to that opening statement and. Which was Javad giving his opening. Uh, let me just first. Mm -hmm. Folks, if it's your first time here, as I look for the timestamp for where we went off the tracks so that way i know how much time javad has for his opening still i'm just going to let you know folks if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button we have many more debates coming up in the future so thanks so much for subscribing okay 1634 all the way back to 16 about 22 23 Seven minutes. So you've got about eight minutes left, Javad, roughly, for your opening. You don't think that's right? I can double check. Okay, I'm going to unmute you. I'm going to just trust you. Go ahead. What have you got, Javad? Uh, so, James, I removed those two slides. I do need to do my opening again. That's I can't have an uninterrupted, uh, an interrupted, disjointed opening. I don't even. I lost my complete flow. It, this people watch the opening in one go. It's really unfair to me that I, I don't get my opening. And as far as Daniel saying he needs to prove that that account is doxing, he could have messaged me at any point in time with proof. He never did so. He just made false al allegations against me. I have let's, never, ever promoted doxing accounts at all. OK, I did respond to I, I can't keep track of all of the he has so many accounts dedicated against him. There's no way to keep a track of them. OK, so, you know, I, I, I need to do my opening again, sir. And also, I'm Daniel, okay can't, with you doing he, your... Daniel can't like have one stream for his own audience. He's he's like talking to them and debating like like he's 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 he's, he's smearing my good name on his channel, which has yeah, good, like 100,000 followers at, at any time. So that's really unfair of him to do that. So sad. OK, so, so let me just first, Daniel, I think you'd be OK with Javad doing his opening, right? Uh, doing it over. Are you OK with that? I mean, he's done redone so many things from the well, last to debate, be so fair, sure, Daniel, to be fair, uh, someone showed up late tonight. So I kind of sure. I'm like, let's just give him the opening. Sure. OK, go ahead. And then in terms of Daniel, are you OK with I, I think it's I sympathize with Javad when he says, hey, like if I'm doing my opening, but then J Daniel's on his own stream refuting me as I'm giving it and he's not waiting until his opening or rebuttal. Like that's not no, no, a fair. I'm not refuting him. I'm just I had or, to intervene when he's p posting doxing accounts. No, no, no. I on, mean, but you're. I I think that Javad thinks that during his opening, you are at some during some points muting him and engaging some of the points he's made during his opening to your no. own audience. No, I haven't done that. Okay. I've, okay. So Daniel's not doing that. So we're all on the, the same page. So the only thing I would say is the doxing issue is part of the debate, right? Because that's part of his slander against me. So that's part of the debate. And so we need to engage in that. So in the open discussion, we're going to talk about that because that's a big slander against me. Um, so he if can't you show the talk about accounts, that. If you show the I will accounts, not, I'm not. Daniel, going to sh first, I'm you going had to, to prove it. You. You had I'm to going to you. mute you. I, I put this some is, of the accounts in the you're chat. You're so scared. James, of, I, I hate to do witness. this, guys. I hate to do this. But the only thing is, I do have to, like, I know that this How sounds, is this, uh, this is an maybe a little partisan on my part, Javad. But I, I do, if someone docks me on Twitter, I take a screenshot, I would report it, and then after that account gets hammered by Twitter, hopefully, I'd probably throw the screenshot away. Like, I'm always throwing files away on my computer. So, I don't, I, like, it's just hard to say he has to, like, I, I don't really... I, you could say I'm overruling that. I'm just going to say, I don't know. It's kind of a hard thing to say that he has to show that it happened where he may have thrown it away in the past. At the same time, Daniel, like how many of these, like doxing's pretty rare. Like I've, you know, I've done 900 debates or so I've hosted 900 debates. I've seen maybe like one, uh, one person in chat ever dox someone. It's really rare. So Daniel, like 
I don't know how many of these Twitter accounts have doxed you. Maybe it's different from YouTube live chats, but like we're def we're trusting you, right? So why do you look so? <laughs> you look so you're, skeptical, you're Dad. You're, you're like it shows because that okay. it's not other. All right, people's so everybody on agreement. I'm gonna unmute you guys. Is that fair? Are you guys on the same page? I'm okay with that. It's just that Daniel agreed to you, James, as I'm, the moderator, and he can't make himself the moderator on his own channel. That's no, no, violating the you, terms. I warn you, Javad. If you mention you're not the moderator, I'm, I'm muting you. I'm not, going to, I'm not going, going, to going to mention those accounts. I'm okay. I, I'm not going to mention those accounts. But you, but you need to, but you need to. Okay, yeah, we're all on the same page. Sounds like we're all on the same page. James Javad. is the moderator, not you. Javad. Thanks, well, thanks, yeah, Javad. we You're know smart. that. Like we're like I've sided with you, Javad, where I've said, like, I agree, you know, Daniel, like, don't be speaking to your audience during your he's and he's agreed that he won't do that. Like we're all okay. on the same page. Like Okay. Okay. All right. What I'm gonna do is let's start completely clean. It's yeah. fifty five minutes in. And, you know, uh, we're just going to start completely clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably edit out this first 55 minutes Absolutely. or something. That's fine. And, and that will remove we'll, those do accounts is... that he's worried about. So that was unintentional if they actually did docs, but whatever. It's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the cold open screen. Folks can still hear. So folks, hang in there. I'm going to go on screen. I'm going to do the cold open and everything again. Let me just pull up that bio and then i'll read that as well and then we'll jump into it so thanks for your support folks appreciate your patience as we're glad to have you here no matter what walk of life muslim christian atheist you name it and so i'm going to kick it over well, let me do that cold open first and then did we uh when did we like when did i pin anybody here two seconds i'm just gonna i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do the cold open from this screen so here i go Hey, everybody. Tonight we're debating Muslim civil society, in other words, Dr. Hashmi's organization, versus MuslimSkeptic.com, Daniel's organization. Which organization has helped or harmed Muslim Americans more? And we are starting right now with Dr. Hashmi's opening. Mm -hmm. And first, his bio. In particular, Dr. Javad T. Hashmi is a PhD candidate in the study of religion, Islamic Studies at Harvard University, former fellow of medical ethics at Harvard Medical School, and practicing emergency physician. In addition to his medical training, Dr. Hashmi has obtained bachelor's and master's degrees in Arabic and Islamic studies from UC Berkeley and Harvard University, respectively. Dr. Hashmi is currently completing his doctoral dissertation on the topic of jihad in the Quran. His re research interests include Quranic studies, Islamic intellectual history, with a focus on Islamic modernism, and the intersection between religion and violence. He recently stepped down from his position at research as research director at MPAC and the Muslim Public Affairs Council. Dr. Hashmi can be followed on Twitter at the handle Dr. Javad T. Hashmi, as well as on YouTube with handle Impactful Scholar. And with that, thanks so much for being with us. Dr. Hashmi, the floor is all yours for your opening statement. All right, James, thank you so much. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen, so give me a second. Okay. Uh, and if you could give me a two-minute warning, please. All right, I'm ready to begin. Let me know if I can begin. You bet two secs. Just uh, two seconds, just adapting the screen. It shifted on me. And thanks very much. We're ready for you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. The first thing I want to say is that I did not want to have this debate. I wanted to have the intellectual discussion that we had two weeks ago. Uh, that's what I wanted to have, but Daniel always likes to go ad hominem and make it personal. So he's the one who started this, but I'm the one who's going to end this. Daniel attacks all different Muslim organizations, any American Muslim leader, organization, and personality he attacks, that's part of his grift. Uh, and MPAC is just the latest in this latest barrage. I, I, although I recently resigned from MPAC, I'm proud of the work they do, and I'm more than happy to defend them today. But I will show today that it's Daniel and his org that are the complete grift and harm to the American Muslim community. So who's behind the Muslim skeptic team? Well, it's a bunch of anonymous nobodies. We have no idea who these people are. It's really only two people. First, Daniel Hakikachu and his wife. Um Khalid or Ola. Ola is part and parcel of this grift. She's the one who runs Alasna Institute, uh, and we'll get into her in a bit. But Daniel wants to put MPAC on trial, but today I'm going to be putting Daniel on trial. The charges are this. 
Daniel stands accused today of being an insincere grifter, extremist, racist, hypocrite, conspiracy theory, kook, smear merchant, and serial liar. And nobody should take him seriously. You could not possibly pay someone to do a better job of being an agent provocateur and of making Islam look bad than Daniel. I don't think we need to claim that Daniel is literally getting paid by some secret agency, but he is certainly lining his pockets with his obvious grift. So that's the first argument against him. He's an agent provocateur who makes Islam look bad. He himself says that Muslims who make Islam look brutal, that's fed-like behavior, and that's the behavior that Daniel shows. In his own words, he says those people who just want to talk about Islam and slavery, sex slavery, and wife beating, they're cons, con men. Well, Daniel, that's you. In the last year alone, you've tweeted a defense of sex slavery and child marriage well over four dozen times, something that even a reasonable traditionalist would never do. In fact, you make Islam look bad. You say that Islam was spread by violence. You always talk about slavery and child marriage, about Islamic slavery is what you call it, sex slavery, wife beating. The ex-Muslims and Islamophobes, they love you. They love reproducing your work. You're everywhere on their uh, YouTube. Men must beat their wives. Here you're defending uh, ch ch child marriage and having sex with minors. Here you're defending that Muslim women shouldn't go to college according to your version of Islam. Everything that ex-Muslims and Islamophobes say, you say, yep, you're all right. These are the things that Islam says and you say everything that they say. In fact, it's hard to tell if you're the Islamophobe or you're the Muslim. Here you're defending rape. Here, these words could be attributed to Robert Spencer, that you can just kill someone's husband, capture her as a sex slave, relocate her to your home, and then rape her. You, this bothered even a fundamentalist like Farid, who pushed back against this, and then here you are arguing with him, trying to defend rape. Here's your clip that went viral about how you can have sex with a child, a five-year-old or a four-year-old. Uh, this clip went viral. I mean, if this is, you're the Fed. You're the agent provocateur who's spreading this kind of ideas. In fact, ex-Muslims love you. Here's an ex-Muslim Reddit thread that's thanking you. Thank you, Daniel. I love that you're spreading this information. Good job. Here's another ex-Muslim Reddit thread defend, uh, defending you, that you're just confirming what we've been saying all along is what they say. Here's an ex-Muslim Haris Sultan saying you're making our job easier to expose Islam. Here's apostate prophet saying that you should actually get more exposure. It's, uh, and, and here's another one saying that Actually, Daniel does a better job than AP in turning people away from Islam. Here's all of these accounts saying that they love Daniel and they're all Islamophobes and ex-Muslims. Even in our debate, there was somebody who said that. Daniel is burying Islam and they love these people love it. Here's a right wing uh, think tank, which is praising him as a scholar of Islam. And here is uh, Jihad Watch Robert Spencer saying that at least Daniel is honest, unlike so many other Islamic apologists in the West. So why does Daniel take all of these extreme and outlandish positions? It's the grift. It's the money. Here we see that he's making a lot of money off his YouTube, probably a six figure salary. In fact, he has multiple streams of income. He runs courses like Hustlers University on his website. He, he, he has all these other sources of money, including his yearly subscription, which costs $132 per year. And then there was this fraud of a book where he just literally pressed print on his blog articles, compiled them and slapped them all together. And he never even told his audience that that's what he did. As one reviewer said, it, this, is, this was a scam, a disgusting cash grab. In fact, he's so good at monetizing himself that he's featured on Alpha Muslim as an example of somebody who did a really good job, a Muslim content creator, about making money. It's funny that Daniel has these accountability reports on his Muslim skeptic site where he looks into the finances. For example, he's looking at the finances of Yakin Institute. But Daniel, you should release the financial records for both Muslim Skeptic and Alasana Institute. You should be held publicly accountable, right? Why is Alasana, your unaccredited homeschooling program, run as a for-profit business? And you might even be violating the law. So we can actually track your grift, and that's why I wanted to see the finances, but we can track it, actually. From 2015 to the present, you've shifted dramatically, becoming more and more extreme. Why is that? It's because of the money, obviously. In fact, recently you became famous for attacking Navigating Differences, a document that came out by some American Muslim imams on the issue of LGBTQ, and you criticized them on three points. But the reality is, is that you yourself in 2019, you put out the first version of Navigating Differences. You called it Tough Conversations. And in that, you literally said all three points. You said gay rights can be defended as human rights. You said Muslims ought to defend LGBTQ people. You, said, you even celebrated that we have stalwart allies amongst our LGBT neighbors. You, back then, you were saying that it's inappropriate to call gay people Qom Luth, and you said, don't make fun of gay people. You, but here, all of a sudden, in 2020, you're calling them Qom uh, Luth, and here you're, making, you're, you're implying that we should throw them off high buildings and kill them. So you went from a compassionate imam to a psycho. What happened? You're a straight-up grifter. That's what happened. Here's you. This is before your uh, cosplay as, as an Islamic fundamentalist. This is when you were in a suit and a tie. In 2017, you have high praise for Imam Umar Suleiman, talking about how his scholarly credentials are beyond question and how he's doing a great job of, balance, of doing the balancing act that is very difficult to do. And then all of a sudden, in 2020, now you're attacking him. It's actually you who have the early onset in Alzheimer's that you're accusing him of. And now you've gone to the extreme of saying that we need to unschool. That is, don't even send your kids to uh, public school or forget that, private school or even homeschooling. You don't need to educate your kids at all. These are extreme positions because you have no accountability at all. All you do is attack other Muslims. You even make fun of Muslim girls who want to go to school. Like here's, here you are making fun of girls who just want to get an education.
اما امروز خیلی جگر خود جدا بود Uh, Muslim or is this, a, is this an Islamophobe? Here Daniel's actually admiring the French for the French hijab ban. Here he's calling all these Muslims all these vile names like a Trumpist. Like he's, he is, he's Trumpian in the way he call, uses these nicknames. But worse than that, Daniel actually, flirt, because of his grift, is actually flirted towards Islamic extremism. Here he has on his website Sheikh Haytham Saifuddin, who's writing for Muslim skeptic. He's a known Islamic extremist that Daniel is promoting. Here he's thanking him as Sheikh. Even Muhammad Hijab says, why are you promoting this radical extremist? Muhammad Hijab of all people. This guy is connected to Sheikh Ahmed Musa Jibril who wrote the introduction to his book. Who's Musa Jibril? He was a, he's a convicted felon on FBI's watch list. He's considered Anwar al oluki's successor. He's well known in the global jihadist scene. He approvingly speaks of ISIS as a spokesperson and one of the 2017 London attackers was said to be radicalized by his videos. Not only this, but Haytham Saifuddin is uh, connected to Sheikh al Alwan, the Al-Qaeda Mufti. Not only that, but Daniel defends the Al-Qaeda Mufti. Here he's defending him. And this is the same guy that's being used to justify killing Shias. The same view that Daniel, by the way, might be sympathetic to. We'll talk about that. But Sheikh al alwan lauded ISIS's operations, at least when they were confined to Iraq. And one of Sheikh al alwans students was a 9-11 hijacker. And he is a brother-in-law to the leader of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. This is the guy that Daniel is defending and promoting. Then there's Sheikh al-Tarifi, who is also sympathetic to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Daniel follows him, but not only that, he quotes them. Here he is promoting his material again, and there's Sheikh al muhaysini who Daniel is also promoting as an ISIS and Al-Qaeda sympathizer. Here's Muhaysini sending off a young boy, strapping him with bombs, and telling him to go blow himself up. Remember that verbiage when Daniel's going to use that? Well, that's here he is promoting a guy who does that kind of thing. So when Daniel th uh, starts praising the Taliban, that actually seems kind of mild by compar comparison, doesn't it? So Daniel has all of these ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Taliban connections. Now, I don't think he's a devoted ideologue. I think he's just his grift and extremism that has made him uh, support these people. But why doesn't he denounce these people and apologize? He always uh, demands Muslims to apologize, American Muslim leaders. Now it's time for him to apologize. And then he also promotes this takfiri mentality that we need more takfir. Here he is quasi takfiring this Muslim hijabi girl. It's not Muslim versus Muslim. It's now Muslim versus hijabi feminist. And why is he blurring out the face of this hijabi? Why is he doing that? Because his wife cosplays. His wife cosplays and wears a niqab, even though if she's not a niqab. I'm, going to I'm not showing I'm not any showing pictures of your wife. I blurred out your wife. Meanwhile, you're the one. See, family who, pictures. Wow. Yeah, but I blurred them. Okay, she's no the one more. who's. This is a public profile Sorry. that you, your wife has, a public profile in which all of your kids are public. showing. It's not. Yes, it is. This is not her it's profile. on Instagram. Is, all right, it's hold on, on gentlemen. Okay. This is doxing my family. See? No, it's not. Look at this scumbag. Look at this scumbag. Uh, Look I hate at to do this that, scumbag. But it, he's Javad posting is pictures right. of my. That, this is not. Or, I'm sorry, Daniel is this right. This is way too far. Picture of his wife is way too far. I can see. This is way too far, James. Clearly, there's no blurring around the eyes. So, unless I've misunderstood. And but Javad, you're saying that's a public photo. All right, let's no, just. It's given not that from us. Let's put it this way. Given that your point on in your opening statement, Javad probably doesn't depend. It doesn't hinge upon showing a picture of Daniel's wife. Like and kids, probably like kids. let's keep family wife pictures and out. Is that fair? Does that sound uh, fine? Showing my pictures people? of my wife and kids, you guys. So Javad, does that sound fair? Even though he's not, it's a. Key uh, I mean, in a way, he's, he's showing pictures of my wife and he's kids cosplaying. Him and his wife cosplay. They're, 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 this they're, is doxing, imagine, James. Imagine this. this is if there's a Christian preacher who's pretending to be all holy, and and in the meantime, in their personal life, they're going clubbing, going to gay bars, and all this kind of stuff. And what a lying they're, piece they're of preaching the exact opposite. Are, Dude, I'm sorry, bro. I'm, a, just, what a lying I'm, like, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm not you trying to be hard Javon. on you. I just, I don't understand. Like, you have to show... This is doxing. This is textbook doxing. Okay, if you have photos of Daniel and his wife going to gay bars, you can show those, because that would show that Daniel is fake. But showing, I don't see how you showing an authentic photo of his wife at home in the uh, hijab demonstrates that her and Daniel are going to gay bars. I'm not trying to interrupt. I'm just, uh, I'm not trying to be unfair here. It's just kind of like, okay, let's just not show pictures of people's family. I can, you know, I don't, I'm not blaming Daniel for not wanting his wife shown in the stream. Um, wife and children. If it is a public photo, though, Daniel, like I kind it's of not. Uh, no. Okay, Daniel says it's not a public photo. 
It, it just it just doesn't need it for your point. If you have a picture of Daniel and his wife at a gay bar, by all means, expose Daniel. But otherwise, if it's just a picture of them at home, I just don't... I hate to do this to you, Javad, but I just kind of like, let's just pass it over. Is that okay? I'm uh, giving you a chance to speak, Javad. Daniel, let's give him a chance to so, speak. Please don't... So I blurred... The, the picture is a public profile pic, but I blurred it. So you're talking about the eyes. You're, you're talking about the eyes in the Nikabi picture. That's from his YouTube channel that's public. This so is I blurred the private. I, textbook I, doxing. It's not textbook This is a family block. picture. If someone it's came a, to my it's, house it's and a stole public, a picture and then published that's not, it, that doesn't that's mean not, that, oh, it's allowed because it's in public now. This that's is not, not the account. Okay, I hate to do this, you guys. Account. Forgive me. But this I... Is, I it's just that it's relevant to the debate. Showing He's a picture showing of his wife of my and children. his job. I just don't see how that drives any of your points home, Javad. So, like, let's just let it go. I know that you're like, come on, it's a public picture. No, this guy is... And I get that. I'm not and I kind of, I'm kind of like, anymore. you know, okay, Daniel, if it's a public picture. Simple. I think I've and seen that picture before, but I don't know where numbers, uh, uh, of you and your wife, Daniel. But I agree with Daniel that it's like, it's not needed for your point. So let's just keep photos. Unless, like I said, if you have these gay club photos, by all means... But otherwise, it's kind of like, ah, it's just a picture at home. It's not really driving a point home. Can we, is that okay? Let's do that. Okay, Javad, I'll give you a chance to continue. I just clicked. James, there. I'm okay with doing that. Um, but I, I, so it's one thing when you're advocating that specific thing, which is a face veil, which is extreme position, like extreme fundamentalism. And if you're not doing it yourself, then that is a point of contention. And she is part of a Lusna Institute. She's not a random person. It's not someone that's unrelated to the Institute. So it's not like I, uh, and then I, and I'm the one who blurred them out. It is a public profile pic. So I blurred it out. I didn't show the picture. And so I will not show it, but I, the record must show that this is a point because this is showing the hypocrisy. I'm trying to show that Daniel is a hypocrite. That's the entire argument. And this is an ad hominem, I, but this is, uh, this whole okay. debate is ad hominem. Wait, I mean, just to be like, I'm not, I know this sounds like really pedantic, but like, it's, it's not di like, it looked like she was wearing a face cover. I'm not trying to get into a debate with you, but like, it looked like she pretty much was wearing a face covering where I don't see the hypocrisy. She's wearing like, a face veil. She's wearing a hijab, but not a face veil. Hijab is completely normal for Muslims. Face veil how is do, considered. How are you like, proving that this is a small is percentage public, of people who do that? And people who how do you know that, that this are pretty I know exactly so where this picture is from. Place. It's from a but relative's like house. Like I said, I just need it's from right, a relative's house. That this is the grift. But we'll, All we'll, right, we'll, we'll let you James, verbally. Let with the, how about you make the point without the picture? We've seen the picture. Let's go with your rest of your opening. That's fine. So. But I need to know that um, he's he's film he's he's showing my slides. If not, then 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 you need to J James. Then I'm not going to continue on his his stream channel. Hold on, I go off one Bye. sec. Okay, so okay, like Daniel, I'll I'll continue please. on your channel, uh, James. But you're Hold the moderator. On. He can't just have his own not show my slides. That's ridiculous. Hold on one sec. Unmute me, James. Okay, Come Daniel. On. I'm going to. Let me just mull this over. There's so much, there's like a billion pieces of information flowing and that's just how every debate is, but I'm trying to like, so I'm trying to like not get engaged with the debate while simultaneously trying to enforce the rules. Okay, so you've shown the picture. You don't have to show it again. Daniel, are you, like, I, I think I get Javad's point that the, in theory, I'm not Let taking a talk. position. <laughs> Let Daniel, why, Daniel, why are you, why are you addressing your audience while I like? I'll give you a chance to speak, I Daniel. But why are you audience. talking to your audience even while I'm just yes, trying to I will. make a point here? Is that I'm just trying to say, if if he's saying that one of the members of the organization, because it sounds like you guys run it simultaneously, you and your wife, Daniel, and he's saying that one of the members of the organization is not true to their uh, what they preach, then I, I get Javad's point where he's trying to say, hey, your organization is not like morally aligned. And so at the same time, so Daniel, I don't think it's that bizarre that he showed a picture. And Daniel, I do, given that Muslim skeptic has about, or at least double, uh, the the uh, subscribers is modern day debate, and in terms of active subscribers, probably way more than modern day debate. Uh, 
So I do get why Javad is like, hey, come on, you know, Daniel, like, let me make my point to your audience, too. Like, that's one of the reasons why he was doing this is he wants to get through to your he wants his case to be heard by your audience, Daniel. So, Daniel, are you OK with showing the slides that no longer have these accounts that doxed you and that no longer have photos of your wife? Will you show the subsequent slides? I'm asking you to unmute now, Daniel. Uh, first of all, he didn't establish that that picture was a public photo. He only claims that it's because it's posted in public. That means the picture was taken in public. This picture is from a relative's house. We were sitting at a relative's house on the couch as a family and took a family photo. The face covering is not required when you're in, you know, amongst family. That's point number one. Point number two um, this is not relevant to the debate. My children are not Alasna employees, okay? They're not employees of Muslim skeptic. Why is he showing pictures of my children? The third point is that uh, I acknowledge that my wife wasn't wearing niqab uh, throughout her entire life, okay? People go through change and development. Number four, Daniel, we never just... claimed, we never claimed, like made claims, like he's, descri like this is not a public um, photo, this is not a public photo. It's a it's a private personal photo. I'm not surprised that someone who has connections to a intelligence agencies would get a hold of a private photo. Hold on, okay. I hate to do this, GCA, but so I'm not I'm not going to just I'm tell, not okay. show his I'm in his like again, slides. I'm saying this in theory. Is that I'm not saying he's right about your wife in terms of like her behavior. But I'm just saying like I get where if he did think that she was being inconsistent, it's a theoretical, I'm not taking a position. I get that he's saying, like, if he did think that she was inconsistent, that why he'd want to show this photo to say, look, like, she's not consistent with it. He's, that's the case he's trying to make. Not where where is he? Even if it weren't a public photo, I, like, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, it's like you, your guys' organizations are on trial today, including the members of your organization. Show, so show, I got to be honest, like, even if it wasn't where, a public photo in this case, have, I'm kind where. of like, he's, it's part of his case. But... At the same time, Javad, without showing the photo, can you just say, hey, you know, there are photos out there where I'm making my case that she wasn't consistent without showing the photo? Because I get Daniel saying, hey, like, I don't want these photos to be shown out there. Because I don't remember where I've seen that picture. I'm trying to think, like, was it, was it, I don't know. But Javad, does that make sense uh, in terms of like not showing photos of his family? Is that fair? Javad, I'm asking you to unmute really quick. So I don't think it's fair to show any private photos that have not been shared publicly. So even if it was at a gay bar and it was private photo, that's not fair game. But if it's a public profile photo, uh, I think that's fair game. But uh, in any case, what's not fair is him not showing my slides. On, so I will move move along as far as the um, photo, but I will not move along on his platform without him showing my slides. There's no debate then, because he he's now he does he's been mudslinging his whole life against every single. Hold American on, okay. Muslim just leader. before we do that, hold on. Okay, Daniel, are you willing to show his slides for the remainder? And then now that Javad has promised he won't show any of these Twitter accounts that you sent him the links to. And you've also told them, like, no family photos, period. Daniel, are you okay with showing his slides for the remainder? And then I, I just, there you go. Yeah, so he has to, first of all, prove. So, so the thing is that everyone can go through a period of growth in Islamic practice. So you can have a Muslim this, woman who doesn't to do this, Daniel. Sounds like something that might be more for your rebuttal, though. So like I, I'm, not I get I'm just explaining why I'm not going to show his, his his slides, because he's going to continue to show. And possi possibly I might have to report your stream because he's showing pictures of my family already. Like I have to you have to cut those out. Otherwise, I have to file a report, James. I mean, this is this is very serious. I'm happy he's to a cut those out. Person. We're all and, on. Yeah, we're you all... have to cut them out, and I'm definitely I'll not going to show his. his uh, I think we're all in agreement. Like there slides, won't be any so, more family sorry. pictures. Javad I'm happy to leave. cut them out. Like we can have a stream about impact. That's fine. And I'm thinking, uh, but if he's willing to agree to those terms, are you okay with showing his his slides no. for the remainder? No, he he's 
proven himself dishonest. Like he thought it was bad enough that he shared a, an account that is doxing me and my family. And now and then he pretended, like, oh, yeah, I took down the slides. And then he showed a picture of my family and kids, my children. Like, how is this appropriate, James? I don't understand wh how this is a hard decision for you to make. Where, where for example, just because my wife wears niqab uh, or wears the face covering, uh, how Daniel. is that proof? I'm not trying to take sides, but I just muted you. And the only reason is just that. Uh, Javad, the way this works is I can't, there was no agreed upon, like, uh, there was no agreement prior to the debate where I, you know, Daniel said, like, yes, I'll show all of his slides. I frankly think that you, like, you can make your case describing what is on the slides, even if Daniel isn't showing it. Like, and religion debates, or actually religion and science debates are only, the only ones that people usually use slides. Political debates... They just explain and they just, there's no, there's rare they ever use slides. So I'm just saying, I think you can make your points. I don't think Daniel is going to negotiate on this. And we've just, we've taken so much time on this stuff already that, and I want to respond to some of what Daniel just challenged me with, but for the sake of the debate, I'm just going to let it go. And we can uh, go, let's go to your opening. And Javada, like, I, I'm sorry, it's something that, we didn't get an agreement beforehand, so I can't make Daniel do it. Uh, you know, we, I, I would just recommend explaining what your slide says. I understand that right now Daniel's not cooperating. It's not what we expected, but this is just as good as it gets because, I, I, frankly, I don't think you need slides that much anyway. But I'll give you a chance to speak, Javad. So, James, um, first thing is I wanted to show you that this is a public profile picture. I'll send you the link. It's public. Here you go. I'd rather just keep going with your intro but, where you just but the other slide. The, the, so it's a public profile photo. You can see it there. He's lying about that. And number two is... I didn't say it's um, not public, uh, moron. Then I didn't I, say I it's think not a public profile, should, moron. Um, I know. There are many just public continue accounts on that are your stream, doxing James. my family. And if he leaves, he decides to leave. I'll continue my opening and my closing. Yeah, and your channel is going to get And reported, uh, leave James. it at that. I mean, because I it's no debate if I can't show my slides. Or you have to, yeah. like, tell him that he's got to... I mean, he, he's got to abide by rules. You can't, He's just using his... What um, rule? His follow... Like, look, he's, he's talking to his followers back? right now. Mm -hmm. This is not fair. Yeah. Hi, I mean, I'm talking sec. to my followers. Hold on. Okay, Daniel. What? Javad, one thing is like we're kind of getting into like game theory stuff in which like if if I defect on Daniel uh, and I say Daniel. So for one, I don't have control over Daniel's stream. So he can do whatever he wants and I can't stop it because I have no like veto button on my side. Like there's no, it's just, uh, they're independent. And then two is, Javad, I, I think that for the sake of the debate, I know that Daniel's not cooperating the way you expected. I don't know if, I just don't see why you need your slides to make I your mean, points if I, you just explain what the slide says. I mean, because I use slides in a way of showing content. So that's, that's why it's, it's very difficult to do it without the slides. It's just not fair. And... Uh, I mean, I'm looking at the rest of my slides. I don't have any other such content. That was only the only content against her, and the rest is against Daniel. So he should share my slides. He just doesn't want. He's scared of everything that I'm going to show. He thinks yeah, you I'm can mudsling against everyone else, and nobody's going to come against you. Look, I'm he's talking to his audience. Just right before now. we go too far, can't be honest. Wait, so yeah, he's, that's that's called being scared. Step up to me, Javad. Let's see who's scared then. <laughs> see what would ha will happen let if me you deliberate step up to me in the street. I'm willing, to, James. You got to put some pressure on him. So, like, if you just okay, say that James, I'll be able James, to give my let me opinion, make this very clear. and he leaves, James, imagine if I came me, to the debate and he didn't show clear, up. James. Wouldn't if, I be allowed then to give my opening? I prepared it. I spent days on it. It makes sense that I would be able to present it. He can't just because of his social media clout, uh, you know, dictate the terms like this. this is not fair, James. This is like, called if just somebody this doesn't is show never, up. Today, you I don't could, even have basic decency to engage in a debate. Without you can my family, you could say if I don't, you can't children. show that, I won't show that. But I should be able to sh no, sh go on the terms that we agreed on. I'm about to leave this. I'm about to leave this entire so Here, debate. let's let's put it this way. This is such an ethical breach from this. This fed, even if I were fed. to bring the hammer down and twist Daniel's arm somehow, 
and I said, hey, Daniel, this is just the way it has to be. What Daniel can do is he can take the debate off of modern day debate afterward. This is theoretical. And he could just put it on his own stream, like edit it so that your slides don't show and release it to his audience of a quarter million or 300,000, whatever it is now, anyway. So in other words, like Daniel can, can do whatever he wants with this footage. But you could strike it. You could strike it then. <laughs> I mean, so That's you have power here. You're well, the debate, you're the moderator, and I feel like you need to lay down the line. Otherwise, people are going to, like, if you're losing a debate, you could just decide to leave. I mean, this I, is not fair. We agreed to, so we agreed to I, conditions. There is, but the rule is, like, for me, for modern day debate, is yeah. I've always been wanting to be, like, for the debaters in the sense that, like, it's your guys' debate, it's your content, you can do whatever you want with it. So I can't, like, I, I wouldn't feel like I was being true to my promise to the debaters, including Daniel, if I were to strike him afterwards, if he were to upload it in a version of his own way. So whether it be live streamed or an, an export so what, and upload if, the next day, Daniel can make your slides not show. But and what if, I, what if, I what can't if somebody... Stop it. What if somebody did it like that and took out the other part, like cut out parts of the person's argument, edited it, manipulated it? Would then it be okay? They, if people want that's it, what people if the do debaters want to do it, but that's their content. They that's can do what whatever you do they want. But that's not Take my life. Content but that's and you not cut it to make it look like that's, it's that's saying something that it's in not. Post, that's what you do, right? Because right now never, it's showing that's in post, but this has never come up in live stream. Yeah, and I don't. By the way, I I've I sent you I need you to, to where I need you to take a look at the link is public. Because he made an it? accusation against me. I sent you the link, it's public. Um and, and so that should be for the record that this is a public picture. It's there. And I blurred it out by the way. He didn't if you click on it it's not blurred out. I am the one who blurred it out. I blurred out his faces of his kids. I blurred out her face. So it's public photo. I blurred it out. Like this is fair game. No. Nope. He used he he used pictures James, of me that I don't okay, like. James, That's, if you're going to mute me, you I'm going to leave. He, he used I'm the, going to the, just drop the, the picture okay, with Fedora, on. which I hate, but he used it, right? Yeah, that's a And she's part of the your, organization. I didn't show LinkedIn his kids. Media. I blurred out his I need to do this to you. Okay. So Daniel, it is true that it's a public photo. So uh like I I don't think that Javad has really pushed, you know, I don't think he was really gone too far. By showing oh, a photo that anybody on the web can see already. No, he, this so is... So I don't, you know, in terms of showing that photo, I don't know. I just kind of like, Daniel, you're being quite tough on Javad to say I won't show your slides. But at the same time, Javad, like, I, I have never made, this has never come up in the past. I think that you have to go on without your slides and just explain what is on the slides. Now, the modern people at Modern Day Debate will see it. If Daniel wants to put up, which I agree with you, actually, Javad, if Daniel wants to put up a biased version of the debate in which your slides aren't showing, because to be fair, Daniel, like that kind of, that's kind of what it is, I, I can't stop Daniel from doing that. Because Daniel, like I said, it is true. It's a public photo. So it's like I, I get Javad where he's coming from. So, okay, Javad, you're just going to have to do it without your slides. Out. It doesn't look like Daniel's going to budge. And we've got to keep moving because we're, we're about an hour and a half in and we haven't gotten through the first opening. So go ahead, Javad, with your... I've got it. I actually stopped the clock this time. You've got four minutes left. The floor is all yours. And then... Uh, that's right. I've got to un unmute you. Sorry about that. And then, okay. But Thank I would so say, much. Javad, for me yeah. to show the rest of your slides on my side, I, you can't show any of his family photos and you can't show any of these Twitter accounts. And then just so you know, like later on, <clears throat> I'm going to defer to Daniel and I'm actually going to go back and clean my stream. So it doesn't show those Twitter accounts that allegedly doxed him. And so that doesn't show his family <clears throat> photos because I don't blame him for not wanting family photos. Go ahead, okay. Javad. But but like I said, that it is a public profile photo. You confirm that, so I appreciate that. And I blurred. I'm the one who blurred out the images 
not in the public profile. So that should be stated, and I, I appreciate that you saying that. And I'm, if Daniel wants to cheat and not show my slides, that's okay. People can come and watch it on Modern Day Debates, and I don't want him to get away from this debate. So even though he's cheating and scared, I will continue, and that's fine. Okay, so um, I'm going to res resume now, all right, um, and let Daniel get his cheating in like he you know, likes to do. Come on, um, James. Let's go. Because this he's is... scared. Okay, so I'm going to start now. Okay, so Daniel, so as we've seen, uh, his, his wife cosplays in Niqab and Daniel also cosplays. They, this is all theatrics for the camera. When he came to Imam Suhaib Webb recently, he came with the uncut 4K video. What difference does it make if it's 4K? Is this cinema? Did you like the scene properly? Daniel is all about being watched in cinema. That's all he is. He's a hypocritical grifter. Daniel and his wife Ola preach one set of teachings for their audiences. They follow another set of teachings for their financial well-being. Daniel and Ola are the products of the same liberal education they condemn, which they use for aggressive self-promotion, especially Harvard. Daniel's publishing and teaching counter to the rules of traditional Islamic education. Here's Daniel ranting against cultural education about getting an anthropology degree. This is what happens if you go through this uh, education system, according to him. And meanwhile, on his website, here he is talking about his wife who attended Harvard University, studied anthropology and graduated with honors. Here's Daniel talking about his undergraduate degree on his, on his book site, uh, on his book page. Meanwhile, he has no traditional training, no ijazas, nothing. And his website is full of just postmodernist philosophy that even someone like me will say is completely un-Islamic. In fact, it's worse than that. Daniel tries to pick apart traditionally trained scholars, even though he admits that he's a jahil. He's worse than orientalists and modernists, according to this traditionalist, because he sabotages the, from the inside. I promise you this, that Daniel will send his daughter to university, even though he's preaching, don't send your daughters to university. Meanwhile, he won't go to Afghanistan. He says that he will make dua. This is all crap. He lives comfortably in Texas in a comfortable home. That's, that's what he does. He's just doing cosplay. Worse than that, he's tied to white nationalism. Here he is having a friendly ch bro chat with a white nationalist neo-Nazi. Here is he having with another friendly bro chat with a white nationalist, yet another one. And these are real white nationalists, by the way. Here's having another friendly bro chat with Roosh, who's a white supremacist and a misogynist. Now, you don't have to be a white, super, uh, white to be a white supremacist. You might be asking, why? Well, uh, he's from uh, Daniel's from Iran. Iran is the land of the Aryans, and they actually think that they're white. In fact, Daniel tries, seems to be arguing that as well, that, hey, people from Central Asia, we're white too, according to your logic. And he says that he's white passing. In fact, he's a racial realist. He says that races exist. He doesn't push back against these races. And he says, I, I acknowledge that there are racial differences. Some races have different strengths. So Persians, for example, are more analytical and more academic. Well, I wonder how black people are. Here's race and IQ being discussed and not a peep from Daniel pushing back. In fact, Daniel seems to accept the idea that black people are more criminal. And he says that's why certain what races need more of, of this yes. kind of traditional society and religion as opposed to whites, because you see whites are independent minded and therefore they'll be less antisocial as compared to the other races. And again, the, they were talking about black people. And this white nationalist friend, what does he say? He said, I love this idea. I certainly like this hypothesis that you can use religion as a kind of whipping effect on certain minorities. And again, they were talking about black people. This would be interesting. Oh, so yeah. he gives good yeah. ideas to these white nationalists. Here he is talk, making fun of George Floyd. Here he's talking about how George Floyd died from a fentanyl overdose as opposed to the knee on his neck. Here he's uh, again making fun of George Floyd, making fun of Breonna Taylor. Here he is complaining, why are we talking about all these black people that are dying? What about this white kid that was killed by a black guy and he uses the word thug life? Whenever they use thug, they're really trying to use the N-word. And he comes really oh, close yeah. to using the N-word. He's using the word wigger here. What's a wigger, Dan? Daniel, tell us who these wiggers are that you're talking about. And then he's worried about anti-white sentiment. And he says in his debate with these white nationalists, I love white people. I love yeah, white about people. 30 seconds this is, left. This is what he's talking about. And he wants this alliance with white people. And there's a lot more stuff. And I think I, I, I could have gone through a lot more material, but unfortunately he cut me off. The reality is that Daniel is a dr grifter. He's a conspiracy theorist and a grifter. He's an agent provocateur. He says that I'm an agent. He's an agent. He's acting worse than a native informer. He's acting like an agent provocateur who publicly professes the absolute worst views in the worst way possible. And he excel self admits this. I didn't get a chance to talk about impact, but I'll talk about that in the rebuttal. Yeah, Make sure to watch the slides on fed, modern day dude. debate because Daniel is trying to hide he have from this shown to prove that he's a fed. <laughs> what more could he, he have done to show that he's a fed? We will kick it into Daniel's opening statement as well. Let me, before I do that, just let you know, folks, I'm going to kick it into subscribers only chat mode. So if you haven't yet hit that subscribe button, as we have many more upcoming debates and want to say we hope you feel welcome, whether you be Muslim, Christian, atheist, we are glad that you are here. Modern Day Debate is a neutral channel hosting debates on science, religion and politics. We have no position videos. It's all debates here. 
What I'm going to do is kick it over to Daniel for his opening. Just a couple of things is this is going to be 15 minutes from each side. And then we're going to have seven minute rebuttals. I'm almost I think I'm stalling because I'm just uh, nervous about how this is going to go. But Daniel, the floor is all yours. James, because we delayed so much, I have to pray. So instead gotcha. of the we'll use, take an intermission. Break, yeah, we're going to take an intermission before the thing. Okay. We're going to take. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, sorry. My alarm for prayer went off. So just because so it. because it's been so heated, I'm just going to mute Javad and Daniel because during this intermission, I just want to be sure it's completely fair and right. that namely no position can.
rad as we just have a, already a lot of questions. So anyway, in the old live chat, Agent Black says, I'm doing okay. Thank God. Hope all is well with you. Thanks, to Agent Black. I appreciate that. And thanks for your kind words, Chris G. I see you there in the old live chat. Appreciate your support. It says, uh, doing great during this very normal, typical debate. <laughs> This is a true, truly interesting debate. Like I said, folks, I meant to mention it beforehand. This story between our guests, it goes back years. This debate has been years in the making. They've had another debate on modern day debate. You got to check it out. But this debate has been years in the making. Gentlemen, glad to have you both back. We are going to go over to Daniel for his opening. Here we go. I want to say thanks so much for being with us, gentlemen. Daniel, the floor is all yours if you're ready for your opening. Wait, no, it's not ready because and I just I just asked you to unmute, so it should the button should pop up. Well, I'm not ready. I have to share my screen. Okay. Um, share screen is this? While Daniel's loading it up. Well, there we go. All right. I've got you. So it's almost. All right. There we go. Ready for you, Daniel. It, it's showing, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so let me start the timer. And can you just give me like a 30 second warning, Jim? Yep. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Liberalism is a genocidal project. The goal of liberalism is to eventually destroy all religions. And when it can't destroy religion, liberalism wants to reform all religions to make them compatible with degenerate liberal values. Liberalism does this uh, because its goal is to maximize individual freedom and equality. But when you maximize individual freedom and equality, this comes at the expense of other important values like marriage, family, culture, and religion. So liberalism must destroy these institutions in order to maximize individual freedom and equality. Liberalism must use authoritarian and genocidal means to achieve this goal because people naturally resist. People don't want to see marriage, family, culture, and religion destroyed. So they fight back. Liberalism cracks down in a brutal way and unleashes a literal genocide and a cultural genocide to wipe away all those who oppose it. This is demonstrated throughout through the history of colonialism. Liberal colonialism was a white supremacist project launched by Europe in the 19th century. Millions of people were killed. Millions more were violently subjugated. And those same brutal colonial policies continue till today because Muslims resist liberalization and secularization. So the West invades and occupies Muslim countries and backs brutal dictators to suppress any resistance. This, the liberal secular West has always seen itself as the good guy in all of this. In the colonial era, they called it the civilizing mission or the white man's burden to bring the savage brown people into light of modern civilization. Today, liberals call it the war on terror and spreading freedom and democracy and promoting human rights in the developing world. But the underlying logic and motivation is the same to destroy th traditional cultures and religions and replace them with a liberal secular system. This is cultural genocide and Muslims have been the biggest victims of this, especially post 9-11. Now, whether we're talking about the colonial era or the post-colonial era, liberal genocide has always enlisted the helps of the natives, specifically natives who are willing to sell out their people for a buck. There are different terms that refer to this general phenomenon of a person betraying his culture or his people. For example, the term Uncle Tom can be used or native informant or as Malcolm X popular, popularized house slave. In the Muslim world, you had these sellouts who collaborated with the genocidal colonial powers. These Uncle Toms were the most vile traitors to the Ummah, the very definition of munafiqeen. One of the main liberal reformers in British colonial India was Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan. In this short opening, I cannot fully express to you what a dirty rat this Munafiq was, but I can show you some of his words. For example, he wrote, without flattering the English, I can truly say that the natives of India, when contrasted with the English in education, manners, and uprightness, are as like, uh, are as like them as a dirty animal is to an able and handsome man. We have no right to courteous treatment. The English have reason for believing us in India to be imbecile brutes. 
So he described Indian Muslims as dirty animals and brutes compared to handsome white Englishmen. He also says, British rule in India is the most wonderful phenomenon the world has ever seen. He even says British colonialism is a gift from God. He says, yes, my friends, the great God above gave you the government of the East India Company. How many millions of Muslims were genocided by colonialism? Yet you have this Uncle Tom thanking God for it. Then there is this revealing quote. Sir Sayed founded the Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College, and he said that the aim of this college was to form a class of persons, Mohammedan in religion, Indian in blood and color, but English in tastes, in opinions, and in intellect. The colonial powers worked with Sir Sayed to advance their genocidal project. This is a pattern we see from all liberal reformers. They work hand in hand with the feds. Now, as despicable as that Uncle Tom, Sir Sayed was, he has one huge admirer, and that's Javad Hashmi. Javad says he is closely inspired by Sir Sayed. Javad even thinks of himself as a contemporary version of Sir Sayed. Now, some of you might be thinking that Jafed is not a very good academic, so he probably had no clue about Sir Sayyid's worship of the white man. But actually, Javad defends the most racist Islamophobic views of Sir Sayyid. Javad is, a fu is fully on board with Sir Sayyid's cultural genocide project, as we'll see. But the topic of today's debate is about Javad's employer, MPAC, or the Muslim Public Affairs Council. MPAC is a political advocacy org that allegedly advocates for Muslim interests. In reality, MPAC is just a bunch of Uncle Toms who serve the U.S. government at the cost of actual Muslims. Let's go over the receipts. Right after 9-11, Salam Mariyadi, president of MPAC, who backed out of debating me, by the way, went to the Bush administration to support them in the fight against, quote, radical Islam. Mariyadi gave a speech to policymakers about the importance of reforming Islam in the fight against extremism. In this speech, Mariyadi literally praises colonial agents and reformers like Muhammad Abdu. Like a good Uncle Tom, Mariyadi boasted that at a recent MPAC conference, a speaker had said that the closest human document representing the goals of Sharia law in the U.S is the U.S. Constitution. Mariotti's message back then and today has been consistent. We are the good house Muslims because we reject the non-liberal aspects of Islam. Please, white master, accept us. Please, white master, fund us. We will help you eliminate the bad Muslims. By the way, who are the bad Muslims? Bad Muslims are the radicals like Daniel, the Tekfiris, who want to practice traditional Islam and not be forced to adopt liberal secularism. Over the years, MPAC has supported numerous invasions and occupations of the Muslim world. In November 2001, MPAC supported the invasion of Afghanistan and made policy recommendations on how the U.S. can best manage the occupied country in accordance with liberal democracy. In 2003, MPAC expressed some hesitation about the invasion of Iraq, but then, a month after the invasion, which ultimately resulted in the death and displacement of millions of Iraqi Muslims, MPAC said invasion and regime change represent the will of the American people. Therefore, democratic liberalization must, must be delivered as quickly as possible. In 2011, MPAC cheered for NATO military action against Libya and said, quote, these changes in the Middle East and North Africa are long overdue. They're grounded in the natural human desire to be free. We support that push toward freedom and self-determination. In 2013, MPAC urged the U.S. to take military action against Syria to order, in order to ensure, quote, a future for Syria that is democratic, pluralistic, and inclusive. Obviously, in all these cases, MPAC will claim that they only advocated military invasion and occupation for humanitarian reasons. So it's not fair to criticize them for their long history of war advocacy. The problem with that excuse is that literally every single war advocate claims that invasion and occupation is to help the poor people in those countries. Even the most bellicose neocons have always claimed that they only want humanitarian cause. MPAC has also supported military coups. On the day of the Egyptian coup on July 3rd, 2013, MPAC published an article celebrating the overthrow of the democratically elected president, Mohamed Morsi. The article says, quote, we rejoice and celebrate the victory of the Egyptian people. Of course, this U.S.-backed coup was against a democratically elected president, but since that president supported Islamic policies, MPAC was happy to call for regime change. 
What's funny is that after this coup proved to be deeply unpopular in the Muslim community, MPAC retroactively added as a disclaimer to the top, laughing, laughably claiming that the author, quote, in no way endorsed the military coup, end quote, when the article clearly shows that he absolutely did. This is the pattern with MPAC, as we'll see. They go back and rewrite the past in an effort to whitewash their long history of betraying the Muslim community. MPAC also has a history of aligning with Zionist organizations and interests. Obviously, MPAC has made many statements over the years against Israel. MPAC has to express this opposition to Israel because the American Muslim community would completely reject MPAC if it showed any kind of sustained allegiance to Israel. But when we look past the facade, we see MPAC's true colors. A telling example is MPAC president writing in the Huffington Post in 2015 defending the Muslim Leadership Initiative, or MLI. MLI is a Zionist organization that takes American Muslims on all expenses paid tour of Israel in order to butter them up to Zionism. In, two th in 2015, American Muslims almost unanimous unanimously condemned these sellout Uncle Toms for their betrayal of the pl Palestinian people. Boycotts were called to censure anyone even remotely associated with the Zionist infiltration. At this very sensitive and crucial moment, what does MPAC do? Well, Mariotti writes an op-ed telling Muslims to stop these boycotts. Don't be so harsh on MLI, they have good intentions. A more recent example of MPAC's alignment with elements of Zionist policy is their statement in support of the Biden administration's, quote, U.S. national strategy to counter anti-Semitism. Palestinian groups have condemned this Biden initiative because it conflates criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism. The White House says, quote, the strategy reaffirms the United States' unshakable commitment to the state of Israel's right to exist, its legitimacy, and its security, and makes clear that when Israel is singled out because of anti Jewish hatred, that is anti-Semitism. Many Zionist groups have applauded this new initiative while Palestinian activists have blasted it. MPAC, of course, sides with the Zionists. Now let's discuss MPAC's support for CVE, countering violent extremism. Like good Uncle Tom's, MPAC has worked closely with the FBI and Department of Homeland Security to implement CVE policies against Muslims. CVE was developed in Europe and the US was, uh, but was exported internationally via UN Security Council Resolution 2178. What you may not realize is that CVE is the program used by the secret police in Arab countries, the Chinese to target Uyghurs, the BJP to target Indians, Muslims and Israel to target Palestinians. Many human rights groups have noted that CVE is an Islamophobic weapon to attack and cripple Muslims. Basically, CVE is a continuation of cultural genocide of Muslims from the colonial era. If you grow a beard, wear a hijab, or if you have beliefs that are contrary to liberalization, then you're branded a radical and potential terrorist, and the government is justified in surveilling you, restricting your travel, detaining you, or even assassinating you. It doesn't matter if you have never committed a crime or, it, or you've never even threatened to commit a crime let alone actual terrorism. The mere fact that you hold illiberal beliefs means that you are a threat. This is exactly the reasoning that is now being used to put conservative Christians on terror watch lists because they protest at school board meetings or abortion clinics. MPAC has a long history supporting CVE or CVE-adjacent initiatives. For example, in 20, 2006, Mariotti pleaded for the FBI to fund his counter-radicalization program. He also outrageously said that every Islamic school should be scrutinized to make sure they're not teaching any kind of radicalism. From 2014 to 2016, MPAC collaborated with Obama's Department of Homeland Security to launch their own CVE initiative called Safe Spaces. For their trouble, MPAC was awarded around $400,000 by the feds. Several high-ranking MPAC employees like Harris Terran and Alejandro Butel were also rewarded for their work on CVE with cushy governmental uh, positions. The Safe Spaces Initiative claimed that Muslims who emphasized certain verses of the Quran or certain hadith of the Prophet وسلم, were potentially violent, and there needs to be an intervention with community authorities to neutralize such individuals. If a young Muslim, for example, talks a lot about classical Islamic scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah or Ibn al-Qayyim, that is another red flag for potential terrorism. So MPAC contributed to government efforts to thought police and surveil the Muslim community. Again, this is what Uncle 
radical Toms have been doing against Muslims since the colonial era. Over the years, MPAC was so thoroughly shamed for their involvement with CVE, they were forced to issue an apology, essentially an admission of guilt. Of course, the apology engaged in gaslighting the community and misrepresenting the nature of their vile CVE involvement. The admission of guilt was especially dishonest because MPAC has continued to work with the federal government since then. The person who has benefited the most from selling out the Muslim community is Mariotti. The man has had a working relationship with the Bush admin, the Obama admin, the Biden admin, and even the Trump admin. In September 2022, Mariotti was appointed to the DHS Faith-Based Security Advisory Council. The council includes hardcore Zionists, Hindutva-aligned Indians tied to RSS, and career shills and CVE veterans like Mariotti. The uber-Zionist Muslim Jewish Advisory Council immediately celebrates the appointment of pro-Zionist CVE shills like Muhammad Majid and Talib Sharif to the council along with Mariotti. A major purpose of the council is information sharing between essentially Uncle Tom's and the federal government. So this is ultimately a continuation of CVE type work from MPAC. Another notable thing about MPAC is that they're literally endorsed by RAND. RAND is the official think tank of the US military and it's infamous for its work in the war on terror against Muslims. In their report, Promoting Online Voices for Countering Violent Extremism, RAND mentions MPAC by name as one of the organizations in line with CVE policy. By the way, RAND also mentions sellout imams like Soheib Webb, but more on that another day. So this is Javad's organization. All this dirt is just the tip of the iceberg. The reality is Javad fits in perfectly with these Uncle Toms. Jay started his role at MPAC in October 2022, but 30 seconds left. this was shortly after Mariotti's Security Council appointment. What makes Javad more malicious is, than the average Uncle Tom is that he constantly makes false accusations against conservative Muslims of being affiliated with ISIS or other terror groups in order to get them in trouble with the feds, not to mention his doxing. For example, he has accused me of being one step away from suicide bombing. He has similarly attacked other Muslim figures online when confronted he just laughs and says, oh, this is nothing. Ultimately, Javad is like his employers and his idol, Sir Sayed. He's a disgusting sellout Uncle Tom rat and a mortal who worships time. the white man like his liberal reformist colonial predecessors. For the first time ever, someone has reported modern day debates live chat. And modern day debate no longer has a live chat. That's what happens when you have doxers. Okay, so uh, sounds like uh, you almost sound is, sympathetic to the person. Yeah, this who, is this who is what happens with our... Javad. Like if you took care of it, James, and said this is completely un inappropriate, it wouldn't have happened. But people in so our you're, chat, hold on, it sounds almost like you're taking the like you're siding with the person that that reported modern I said that this would ha I said that this would happen. Daniel, hold on, let me finish. Even though I agreed with you and I told Javad I didn't want any more family pictures and someone has reported modern day debate to YouTube and YouTube has shut down our live chat and even though I agreed with you Daniel and I told Javad hey like let's not have family photos it sounds Daniel as if you're sympathetic to the person who reported like as it, it sounds almost like you're saying that's what you get even though i agreed with you daniel that family no, photos shouldn't be shown no no i'm not saying that's so, what you get i'm saying i'm that not this is, I'm, I'm i didn't defective. i didn't report i'm not okay with this chat. i'm not hosting I didn't this this has never happened to modern day debate if people James, like look. if people are like oh i'm gonna report modern day debate's chat i'm gonna get them shut down i don't maybe they don't like our uh, live chat maybe they don't like that people are disagreeing with them whatever it is Whatever oh, reason James, it was, do you know that no one has doxed the, did, did anyone dox me on on the chat? That's the question you should ask first. I hadn't seen anything. Well, I can't review the chat now because it's gone. I hadn't seen anybody dox you, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. If someone doxed you in chat, we're in agreement, Daniel. That I would I, I'm not, not be okay. sympathetic. I'm I'm not sympathetic. Okay that your channel's live chat has been reported. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not telling anyone to report modern day debates. I never said, told anyone to do that. So let me t say it very clearly to my followers. Do not report modern day debates, not their live chat, not their stream. I'm saying this very clearly so that no one mistakes, you know, what I think about the issue. 
But if you do you actually know that my address or f family details were not posted on the chat? Let's see. I don't know that they weren't. I can't see every chat, especially as I'm trying to keep attention on both the clock during the debate as well as the questions for the Q&A. And then also, so long story short, I'm not hosting this when people do this to modern day debate. So we can reschedule this at a time at which people don't report modern day debate. I can tell you, I'm just saying, uh, I'm Daniel, I appreciate that you have told your followers to not report modern day debate. I'm looking in your chat. I see Andalusalan says, suck it up, James. Nasir Saeed says actions have consequences. Now I want to be fair. Not everybody in Daniel's chat is being like that. Some people who are like, wait, who would report, who would even report modern day debate? So I do want to say thank you to those of you in Daniel's chat that are in agreement with Daniel and I that it's not good to report. Because like I said earlier in the debate, so whoever this person is, uh Andaluzlin and Nasir Saeed. I just want to be clear. I agreed with Daniel earlier in the debate that it's that children would not be shown. And so I'm saying, why are some people, some of these people over there still that way? But like I said, I don't want to paint with broad brush strokes. Thank you to those that are watching at Muslim Skeptic and who are saying like, wait, why, why would someone report modern day debate? Thank you, folks. However, I'm not okay with this. And I'm not saying it's either of you, and I'm not even saying it's one of Daniel's followers, even though I am pointing out that some followers seem to be, like I said, small percentage, seem to be, uh, you know, even though I agreed with you, Daniel, that family photos can't be shown. Some of them seem to be sour. But I'm not hosting this when people are doing this to modern day debate. Like, it's not happening. So I'm willing to host you guys another time. And we will talk about things beforehand, like one, can family members be shown, which I think we all agree, no, they can't. I Two, mean, this is something that is not like, this is not something that anyone needs to be told. If I, if I knew that we have to make it explicit, yeah, please don't show pictures of my children in the debate. <laughs> like, I would have done that. This is ridiculous. He's hold on one second, Daniel, I just, just to, hold on. I, I think that to give Javad a chance to respond, Javad... I'll give you a quick chance to respond just because I know that you're eager to respond. Because I know that Javad, I don't think he was trying to... What's the word I'm looking for? But yeah, I'm not, I'm not okay with this. I'm, I'm, I don't know if it... Here's another possibility. Maybe it was that there were children shown even with their face blurred out. I'm not blaming you, Javad. But it, all I know is that when I, so we got 700 or so last I checked at Modern Day Debate that are watching live. When I go to the live chat options, it says live chat is disabled for this video. It says learn more. I click that learn more button. And it says, as YouTube creator, you're required to set future and existing videos as quote, made for kids or not. I think that because there were kids shown in the stream and Javad, you didn't, I know that you didn't try to, you know, get modern day debate in trouble. Either someone reported modern day debate, and I actually don't think that's necessarily the case, because like I said, most people at Daniel's chat are actually supportive of modern day debate. And so thank you guys for being positive and cool. And there are only a really small percentage of haters. I also think that Javad, you didn't do it on purpose, but I do suspect that might be what it was which I'm not happy with in either case, like if someone did report us or not. Are you guys open to doing this another night where we can have rules prior? Because I'm not okay with just being okay with modern day debate having this happen. Like I, I'm like, no, 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 like we're not gonna play if people are gonna do this to us. So I'll give you a chance to respond Hi, James. So uh, Daniel's followers and Daniel himself, they literally use words and verbiage that threatens my life. 
Okay, they takfir me, which is excommunication, and say that I should be killed. Right. So for him to talk about safety and all this kind of stuff, it's a little bit but thick coming from him and his lot. They are a very dirty lot, and they're the ones who probably reported it. He made all sorts of well, accusations. Okay, let's, let's, let's just, not... Just, when they're not able to defend it. themselves, I don't yeah, want to do that. I, I, I do but, actually... Despite, they, like, I do want. I keep getting back. muted, and and Daniel doesn't get muted. Like he talks over, and that's, I think that's right unfair. Now. Like he also talks to his followers, which is unfair. Like these, they, he's talking about decency in a debate. You don't get to talk to your um and and rebut. And even in the last debate, he this did his introduction instead like of doing his bio. Issue. He started framing the debate, issue. which is unfair. So no, you got you. Who said you James, could get a bio I think introduction? We should continue, to be that honest. was not agreed to. I mean, if, uh, he made so many accusations against me and. My organization and i feel like i have a right to at least complete my rebuttal and then you can maybe call it a day after the rebuttal phase <laughs> yeah. but like I, I don't i don't think that's fair that he can make he made one lie after another lie in his um in his opening i just think that's unfair and and james i'm sympathetic for what you're doing and i wish daniel's actually using his weight to as a social media in you know youtube uh, king to like he did this for my debate as well when he was dictating like what we could talk about and the what the framing spanked. would be all the stuff because he doesn't want a fair platform no yeah it wasn't and i fair. think you are the one with the power james like i just uh what a kiss up. i think he's he's using the, his followers to dictate power, what's go, what's going on and he's not going to agree to come back He's he's too scared now. You can you can debate me on my channel right now. Well, if and James I feel like he's made continue, these accusations. I should at least get a chance James to rebut. And then if he continue, wants to, move, okay. So it sounds like Javad wants to continue. Daniel, what do you want to do? Unmute. I'll give you a chance to unmute. Uh, yeah, I want to continue the debate. If you don't want to uh, continue it, James, I understand. But I will continue it. Javad can stay on like a man and face me one on one. Let's go. I'm I'm I, happy to continue to debate whether James. You're not even sharing not. my slides. You're not even sharing my slides. What, what other these slides are left? What these other are my are left? these are my rebuttal slides. No, these have I'm nothing not to do with you. you show, these have nothing to do with you. No. These are my rebuttal. Look, look how you, you, you're so nothing, scared to debate me. That's what you said before. You said you were, that's what you said that before. That I you're said done that with doxing accounts, and then you show pictures of my I didn't, children. Like the I never showed doxing possible. Like the biggest ethical violation possible. You did it. I did not. Your wife put it as a public imagine, profile imagine photo. Imagine if I put your I pictures of your James family. It, James showed it. Here's a First picture of, of Javad's child. Like I, I scan through Facebook and I try to find personal pictures of your family. I put it in a debate. Yeah. Imagine because like how I, sleazy I, that is. You, you, this was a public profile photo. So I blurred them out. Even if it out. was public. I blurred them out. Even if it was public. And that's why I blurred them out. I blurred them out. Why are you not admitting that I blurred children? it out? Why aren't you admitting because that I blurred it out? it's my children at home. We're sitting I, at home or so with why a, don't you at a relative's why, house. Uh, and you're it's taking, a public and you're profile using, photo. No. What, how, we're going how, to if do... I come and, if I yeah. troll... We need to do this to you guys. We're going to restart a stream at Modern Day Debate. So that way we can have a live chat. We'll finish the second part of the debate there. So this Zoom chat will remain open. I don't actually have to close the Zoom chat. So folks, if you're watching, I need... Or I know that you are uh, watching at Modern Day Debate and you're not able to participate in the live chat, keep an eye on the Modern Day Debate homepage. We're going to restart a stream there. that You can participate in the live chat, and then we'll continue. So I'm keeping my professional promise of hosting the rest of this debate, and we're going to restart another stream. And I appreciate, Daniel, thank you for telling your followers. I don't think it is your followers, to be fair, but I appreciate just in case there was a rogue one. Uh, I appreciate you telling them to not report modern day debate. Frankly, I don't even think it was. I think it's actually probably that YouTube realized there's kids in the video. That's what I'm guessing it was. I don't know. I like I've never had like it's that so, extreme uh, that he violated what we're gonna YouTube do is, policy. I'll be right back. If you're watching a modern day debate, stay at the lot. Keep just refreshing the homepage and we'll start the second stream that will have a live chat in less than five, less than four minutes so bear with us we'll be right back thanks to your patience folks yeah once again to my followers do not report modern day all right debates. well this do has all report. been very interesting so <laughs> let me just restart this one and hmm. yeah i don't know i i'm pretty sure though it is like a yeah anyway are you guys having a nice uh nice time Oh, are you both on mute? Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, two seconds. Okay. 
I feel like he's getting double the time to speak because he's talking to his yeah. followers, and that's where most I'm people are watching right the debate. This is common courtesy that you wouldn't do that. You would follow. Yeah, it's common James, courtesy I think not to show you pictures of me. That it's your common courtesy children. to follow the rules of the debate. Like <laughs> this guy is talking he, about common courtesy. Imagine if he just puts what me on clown. mute and during what the debate vet. he just talks to his audience and gets double time, which is literally this, what he's doing right now. He's talking baby. to his audience he's right now. Stop crying. Look at this. this is not the debate. This is not part Hold of the debate. This is like the I'm trying to get extra this debate, up as fast meta as possible debate conversation so talking debate. about how crazy unethical you are <laughs> like your your presentation violated youtube guidelines and he might be saying nice things about you you can't yeah. oh yeah i'm sure but i'm sure james is the optimist he just doesn't want he's a fraud in the entire let's, Muslim, yeah. American right, let's, Muslim just, community. let's just talk about yeah, we, movies we, you just outed yourself as a uh, fan. Just let me focus on this really quick. I'm going to put the second stream back up. Put new stream. And it should just say... I don't know. Like just compare this debate, like the, what he presented versus what I presented. I'm presenting like conceptual facts backed by all these reports, but backed by news articles. And by the way, YouTube He's would not ban the chat. They would ban family. the video, not the chat. I don't, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, Javad. You're an expert on YouTube. Well, I think his, <laughs> his audience reported it mess and yeah, yeah. that's why it got You can't just report a YouTube chat and then re YouTube just takes it off for no reason. Okay. This is why you can never mm. trust a Mortad. This is why Sharia is what it is. All right. So, mm. like this, like, all of his information is from Yaqeen Institute. It's from like the Medhalis. Like, all right, there it is. It's like a collaboration between compassionate imams, uh, Murtads, Madhalis, liberal academics. Like they're all Ismailis, maybe some Qadianis in the mix. Like they all, <laughs> they're all teaming up. They put their brains together, and this is what they produced. Can you imagine? I'm just going to share this link over there. So. Comments disabled. Yeah, that's the YouTube policy. Comments disabled on videos showing children. If you have a video showing children, you can't have live commentary. It's a safety concern. And then we'll be rocking and rolling. So if I remember right, All right, here we go. So that was the end of Daniel's opening. I'm just going to wait for people to find the chat. And then we'll go. So we will jump into... Mm. All right, folks, we are now going to jump into rebuttal from Dr. Javad. Dr. Javad, the floor is all yours for your seven-minute rebuttal. Thanks for being with us. Go ahead. Well, that's right. Let me do that too. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and I just want to state it for the record that it was a public uh, profile pick that I'm the one who blurted out. And Daniel, if he can't control his wife by his own standards, uh, that would be, oh, uh, he would call such shut a man up. a do youth, right? So like, like this is who Daniel is. He He's actually mouth. just a, 
you know, he mouth. plays this game. That's what he does. All right. Yeah, so I'm ready to begin uh, once my family, like, screen is showing. How low can you go? Uh, can right, I start Chris, now? Do other liberals yeah. Oh, hold this? on. There's that box showing. Do other liberals accept this okay. type of behavior, like academics? All right. Is this your so guy? Daniel had one lie after another lie. And please, I need a one minute warning. So it's hard to respond to all of this scattergun approach lies. Uh, but as far as the Islamic modernists, the vast majority of them were anti-colonial. In fact, they headed up the anti-colonial movement because they actually took the example of Japan. Japan was successfully able to modernize and fight off the colonial force. The exception is the one that he mentioned. So he tried to make the exception as the default, which was Sir Sayed. So if you look at this academic work, and by the way, you're going to have to watch it on modern day debate because Daniel's too scared to show the slides. So watch it on modern day debate so you can actually see my slides and the academic works that I quote. No but here you show, see that this academic says, whereas the majority of the Islamic modernists were against colonialism, only a few of them, including the Indian scholar Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan, opted for cooperation with the colonialists. The reason why he was a British uh, loyalist is because after the events of 1857, which was like the 9-11 of that time, the rebellion and jihad was viciously put down by the British and the Indian Muslims were targeted by the British. After this, all major Indian Muslim leaders realized the fertility of jihad against the British at that time, and they all turned loyalists. Moreover, they, because it was different in India, is because of the Hindu majority. Sir Sayyid feared repression by the British, which would target Muslims, and the rise of the Hindu Raj, which would leave uh, if the British were to leave India. That's why he cultivated this relationship with the British. Sir Sayyid criticized the racism of British rule and called for constitutionalism and increased representation for Indian Muslims. Daniel has selectively and misleadingly quoted him. Most of those are internal critiques, and some of them are sarcastic comments that he's actually making. Daniel is not an academic or a, a fair historian. And anyways, uh, the ulama at that time in India were also loyalists and quietists. Again, you can see the academic citations on Modern Day Debate, not on Daniel's channel because he's too scared. So did European colonialists want to reform Islam? Yes, some of them did say that, but actually most of them said that there's no such thing as reforming Islam. Reformed Islam is Islam no longer. It is something else. In fact, it was the Islamic modernists who took up enlightenment ideals of liberty and human rights and demanded them from the Europeans. So they didn't really like this. In fact, what the European colonialists did support, the British especially, they promoted Salafi Wahhabism, which is the ideology that Daniel followed. He says a Hanbali. In fact, uh, he talks about, Daniel talks about the Rand Report. I know the uh, fundamentalists love the Rand Report. These are the two Rand Reports that they use and they get a lot of mileage out of them. I actually contacted the author of these reports and she confirms what I suspected, that these two reports are actually her protesting against the long-standing U.S. <laughs> government policy of supporting the extremists and the fundamentalists, the Mujahideen at the expense of other societal segments. So these reports, are, these two reports that they cite and get so much mileage out of are actually the exception, not the rule. The rule, in fact, has been the exact opposite. You read these two books if you want to know what the rule is. The rule is that they always support the fundamentalists. So the British are the ones who sent spies and agents, just like Daniel, to go into Saudi Arabia and support these forces against the Ottoman Empire. This was Sheikh Abdullah, who also cosplayed Islam, just like Daniel does. And here's Ibn Saud, who was actually on the payroll of the British, 100,000 pounds a year. This is the guy who sp helped spread Wahhabism around the world. And this alliance, Saudi-British alliance, has continued ever since. And these are the real brand Muslims, these traditionalist minded masses and autocrats. This is who the West, the United States and the UK have supported. And this alliance has a long, long history and is reaffirmed by every single American president. And that's because they saw Islamism as a bulwark against communism. So they supported right wing Islamism against the Soviet Union. And they even wanted a Muslim version of Billy Graham. That's like a Zakir Nayak or like a Daniel Hakikachu. They didn't want secularism because and they didn't want religious modernism. And again, look at the slides on modern day debate because Daniel's too scared to show them. But uh, here you see that the, they're all talking about if Islam is undermined and people are modernized, then they'll le leave that religious passion, which is a good bulwark against communism. So this is the long-standing uh, support of Islamism around the globe by the U.S. and the U.K. The U.S. and the U.K. propped up Wahhabi Saudi Arabia and encouraged the spread of Wahhabi Salafi Islam, the brand of Islam that Daniel follows. In Egypt, the U.S. and U.K. supported the Muslim Brotherhood against the Arab nationalists, leftists, socialists, and liberals. In Iran, during the 1950s, the U.S. supported the mullahs against the socialist nationalists and even overthrew the leftist nationalist leader supporting Ayatollah Kashani, Khomeini's spiritual godfather. In the 1950s, Indonesia, the U.S. U.K. supported a brutal Islamist rebellion against Sukarno, a nationalist leader. In Central Asia, the U.S. favored right-wing Islamism in order to soften the Soviet Union's underbelly. In Afghanistan, U.S. support for the Islamic rights political movement in the country began as far back as 1973 as the U.S. sought to strengthen right-wing and conservative forces. The U.S. and U.K. supported radical religious forces and created transnational jihad in Afghanistan in order to fight off the Soviets. Meanwhile, Israel supported the Muslim Brotherhood from 1967 all the way to the late 1980s, with Hamas being created as a project of the Shin Bet as a tool against the secular nationalist PLO. 
In Iraq, the U.S. at some point supported Shia fundamentalists and other times Sunni extremists. It's well known that the U.S. supported the Mujahideen from which both Al-Qaeda and the later Taliban would emerge. An unclassified document reveals that even ISIS was, pred was predicted, welcomed, and seen as a strategic asset to Western interests in the Middle East. These are the pictures and the receipts. Here you have the Made in America mullahs or Made in London mullahs. Here's Israel. Here's they're talking about Israel uh, supporting these uh, radical Islamists. Here's Grand Mufti bin Baz of Saudi Arabia, the Wahhabi one that follows the same creed as Daniel, supporting half a million American troops to occupy uh, Saudi Arabia. You're talking about the Rand Corporation. The Rand Co Corporation supported this policy of supporting uh, Islamists, and it was these two papers that they cite that are the exception. So Daniel is incredibly misleading. Not only this, but these secret agencies, including of the British, have supported agent provocateurs. That's why in the UK, you have these people like Omar Bakri and Abu Hamza, all these people who are useful idiots for Western interests, and Daniel Hakikachu is one of them. In fact, Sheikh Ahmed Musa Jibril, who's Daniel's Sheikh, is connected to, is thought by some to be one such agent provocateur. This, of course, raises questions about whether Daniel is an agent provocateur or not. So that's the first part. Now we're going to get to the other lies of Daniel. There's too many that he mentioned against MPAC. The reality is he talks about Daniel, uh, that M Salam worked with George H.W. Bush and the next George Bush, but he always was critical of their policies. Here in 1991, Al Mariati excoriates Bush's foreign policy and the US led assault against Iraq. Again, the receipts are in the slides that Daniel is too scared to show. MPAC was opposed to the Iraq war. Here, here's another statement against that. He, uh, uh, they were against military interventions in the Middle East. Here, the, Daniel is trying to show them as Zionists. They're the opposite of Zionists. They support the BDS movement and have defended the BDS movement. And I know them because I work with them. They all support BDS. Yes, maybe they didn't say that we should go hard against MLI because they were trying to go for Muslim unity. I may not agree with that. And they, I think they actually changed their policy on that issue. That was in the heat of the moment at that time. They were saying, let's work these things out. Now they're against MLI as far as I know. As I know. Daniel is a liar. He repeats one lie after another. He's a smear merchant. He takes half truths and then uses those to attack people. He's attacked every major American Muslim leader. There's an entire website dedicated to him. And that's why he doesn't want to show this uh, you know, slides deck because their, their entire website's dedicated to him and his lying. And he's going to call it doxing. This is not doxing. These are the lies against him. All right. Everybody he, says he's a liar, even fashion. the people who have completely different religious views than I do. They all say this Daniel guy is a deviant liar. Even the Jewish people, so even Jewish people have said that he's a pathological liar. <laughs> and the receipts are, again, in the slides that Daniel's too scared to show. Daniel's pattern of deception and dishonesty is well known. He calls me Jafed. He says, in the last debate, he said, minutes? you are on the payroll of an organization impact that is getting funding directly from the Department of Homeland Security. This is an outright and blatant lie and slander, which I could actually sue him for. I work from MPAC from October 2022 to June 2023. During this time, MPAC received a grand total of zero dollars of federal funding, grand total of zero dollars from the Department of Homeland Security. The funding for my position came from local Muslim donors, which is actually and one of the reasons why I decided to quit. I'm this is a blatant lie. I had much we're more gonna to kick go it into, over to Daniel but we're going to go to these lies that he, he says, well. and he's used the CVS, CVE lie against all these other people, including Dahlia Mogahed. And Imam we're going to jump Soleimani into Daniel's else. rebuttal. Do want to say, folks, if you haven't yet, do consider voting in the chat on which speaker you thought was most persuasive. If you happen to think that it's Dr. Hashmi, put a J for Javad in the live chat. If you think that it is Daniel who's been most persuasive so far tonight, Put a D in the live chat. With that, thank you very much, Daniel. The floor is all yours for your rebuttal as well. Okay, yeah. So this is all a bunch of BS. I mean, I can't believe that. You're able to um, speak. Sorry about Javad that. Javad actually. Yeah, restart the clock. Is it unmuted now, James? Yep. All right, can you hold on while I reset? Yes. Thanks for your votes was, in chat. I was, a flurry. Your, I was muted. What was it? I, I was I was talking while I was muted. Sorry about that. It's been a long night for me too. Yeah. Go ahead. The, okay. the floor is all yours. Um, so the first point is that um, you know this is ridiculous. Javad actually violated YouTube policies by posting pictures of children. Um, you can look at uh, YouTube policy. Um, there's reports that say that YouTube will not allow live chat commentary um, when you have children showing in video. So Javad is actually violating YouTube policy. I don't know how a private picture of my family got on the Internet, but people have Facebook pages 
and family members can post pictures on Facebook and not really have the best understanding of uh, privacy settings. And then you have someone like Javad who's trolling through like all of my family's personal private uh, Facebook profiles and oh this picture is not set to privacy so it must be a public picture let's post this in a debate like how unethical and disgusting can you be and how is this not like clear fed behavior he's claiming that Muslim skeptic is um, like our channel is getting money from YouTube we get zero ad dollars because we turned ads off from the very beginning and we've been public about this so he doesn't even have his facts right my book I'm, I make zero dollars from the book that I've published because I wanted as many people to have access to the book as possible so I make zero dollars from the book like this is just smearing without any um, actual facts um, so he said that um, I focus on topics like slavery minor marriage um, concubinage yeah I focus on those topics because these are the topics that are constantly uh, being raised by Islamophobes by being uh, being raised by Islam haters they want to attack and destroy Islam just like Javad so they put pressure on these points of Islamic law on the Sharia the traditional Islamic religion so that once Muslims compromise and say yeah I guess slavery is wrong it's bad that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had slaves once Muslims compromise on that, on slavery or concubinage or conquest, then you can move the goalpost and start reforming the next most liberally offensive aspect of Islam. This is the strategy. If you remember from the previous debate with the dominoes, uh, once you concede on slavery, on minor marriage, on um, even a spousal discipline, you concede on those things, then you have destroyed the religion. It's a domino effect. And when you have Islamophobes focusing on those subjects, those subjects need to be defended. I defend the traditional Islamic view that is shared by 99% of Muslims throughout history, and by the way, is shared by all pre-modern and traditional religions. So Javad doesn't just have a problem with me and my approach. He has a problem with all traditional religions, just like all of these liberal Islamophobes. Again, this is cultural genocide that Javad is in favor of. Javad is lying when he says, that most modernist, modernists um, were not were against colonialism. In fact, most modernists in history between the uh, 19th century and mid 20th century were pro-colonialism. Sayyid Ahmad Khan, uh, Sir Sayyid, the one that I mentioned in my opening, he actually sided with the colonizer in the uh, Sepoy Rebellion. So there's a rebellion where the Indian Muslims are rising up and other Indians are rising up against the colonial powers. And Sir Sayyid is actually siding with the British Empire. So when we, wherever we look, in Egypt, Muhammad Abdu, pro-colonialism. He's on the payroll of the, of the colonizer. Mustafa al-Maraghi, Sheikh al-Azhar, he, he was a Sheikh al-Azhar, pro-colonialism. Uh, Sayyid Sheikh uh, Ahmed, pro-colonialism. Sayyid Osman in Indonesia, pro-colonialism. You know, all of these figures were pro-colonialism. The colonial powers were against Islamists. They were against people who wanted, oh, we want Islamic rule. We don't want non-Muslims from Europe, the white man, to rule over us. You think the colonial powers were in favor of the Islamists? Like, this is so ridiculous. This is, uh, I'm glad that this is on record. So every, like, academic, Juan Cole, if he's listening to this, which he probably is, should realize that his student knows nothing about colonialism or decolonial studies. Let's ask Edward Said, like, this ridiculous idea that the colonial powers were, were pro-Islamist or pro, like, religious Muslims. Let's ask, you know, uh, Wail Halak. Let's ask Hamid Dabashi. Let's ask all of these uh, experts, Joseph Massad, of uh, decolonialism, if what Javad said had any lick of truth to it. The West supports secular dictators for a reason. Like, how can you have any doubt about this? Um, what, look at Israel's actions against the Islamists. Look at all of these regimes that crack down on Islamists. So this is like so detached from reality. Just because you show a bunch of quotes uh, doesn't change that. There are entire academic works dedicated. There's entire departments dedicated to decolonialism. Um, and... Uh, you're going against all of that consensus. So this is really, really ridiculous. Uh, I also had some other notes here. Um, yeah. 
So he he criticized Haytham Saifedean, called him an extremist. Where's the proof for that? Uh, these are just claims that are made by trolls. And then Javad had no source. Where's the news article? Where's any kind of shred of evidence that shows that he has been um, indicted or uh, charged even for any kind of extremism. He cites Alwan, uh, Sheikh Al Alwan. This is Saudi propaganda, and he even cited like a Madkhali bootlicker from Saudi uh, in his list of sources, like a random YouTuber. <laughs> You thought people would miss that, like by citing a YouTuber, like that's the evidence. Yeah, uh, AQ, ISIS, these terror groups, they can cite whatever scholars that they want. That doesn't mean that those scholars support terrorism. Show us the proof that Al Alwan uh, supports uh, just murdering women and children through terror attacks, through bombings. Show that. This is just um, smear tactics. And I never said that Haytham Saifedean uh, is my teacher. He just had one article um, that he wrote for Muslim Skeptic uh, in the past. That This means absolutely nothing. I have no problem saying that Haytham Saifedean wrote that article because he has no evidence to show that actually um, this brother is has committed a crime or is any way involved with this kind of shady uh, com, con, uh, kind of behavior. Um, also, like motivated by money, like this is so ridiculous. I graduated from Harvard with a physics degree. I was in the tech industry for almost 10 years, almost a decade working um, in software as a product manager. Like if I wanted to make the big bucks, it wouldn't be, you know, online to talk about slavery and concubinage and debate feds like you. Um, so <laughs> we, let's see, 30 seconds left. Just ran really out. Right? I can give you, but since I didn't give you the uh, warning, I can give you 30 seconds if you need it. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, you noticed in the his rebuttal, Javad didn't really address all the accusations about impact. He said things like, oh, Salam Mariyadi was in the Bush administration to help Muslims. This is what all um, Uncle Tom say. This is what all these native informants say. Oh, I'm working with these governments to help the Muslim community. This is what all traitors and all liars say. Like this is this is your defense of Mariotti and MPAC. This is a joke. You didn't address MLI. You didn't like how is Mar Mariotti supporting this clearly Zionist organization. You didn't address the invasion of Libya, the Egyptian coup. You didn't address any of these points about MPAC. You didn't get to address CVE either. This is a fail on your part, Jafed. Like everyone can see that you are part and parcel of All this right. Fed and behavior. Time. We're going to kick it over to Javad. Javad, do I understand right that you somehow couldn't hear part of Daniel's rebuttal? Yeah, it kept going back in and out. It w I realize now what happened. It keeps switching between my headphone and my mic, but I heard most of it, so I'll make do with it. It's fine. Uh, okay, but he might. No. Uh, but but Daniel, uh, don't assume that I heard all of your points. So if there's something that you want to bring up, then you can uh, you can bring that up. Why don't we try two minute intervals for the open dialogue? If you guys really want to try open dialogue, I'm okay with trying it. But I have a feeling we're going to do know. two minute intervals anyway. Yeah, so just to start off with that. We'll start with those two minute intervals. Javad, you got the first two minutes, then we'll get over to Daniel. Okay, so thank you very much. So yes, I didn't get a chance to talk about the CVE stuff because you can only deal with so many lies at one time. So let's start with the first point because with the liar who is like a dedicated liar, you have to do one lie at a time. So let's start with the first and most obvious lie that's against me. Daniel has said, this is his claim. You are on the payroll of an organization that is getting funding directly from the Department of Homeland Security. This is an outright lie. Here's when I worked. This is the grand total of my funding. Zero dollars, zero dollars from Department of Homeland Security. So will Daniel retract this? So it's one lie at a time, because when you have a liar and a conspiracy theorist, they like to uh, sh they do a lot of associations and a lot of fast talking and stuff like that to get from one point to another. So we need to know, is this a lie or not? Now, as far as Daniel's um, financial thing with uh, Alasna and uh, Muslim skeptic, we can't take your word for it, Daniel. Release your financial records. Why is Alasna for profit? Make it not for profit and then release your records. You demand that for Yaqeen. You demand that for all Muslim orgs. You have an accountability tab on your thing. So we demand the same thing. So we can't take your word for it just based on that. So the first and foremost lie you need to deal with is this slander. And then we'll, this is a CVE lie. You're trying to imply that I take CVE money 
and this is the lie. So uh, that's on CVE point. Once you deal with this point, then we'll go to the next lie that you have on CVE. As far as your other points that you raised in your rebuttal, uh, you raised against Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan. I literally gave you the academic historical reference that shows you that the modernists were anti-colonial except for in South Asia, and the reason was there was a Hindu Raj majority there. As far as simply working for a, this or that government at some time, the, the Islamic traditionalists were also on payrolls of the of European governments. In fact, the British government used to all give Sheikh al Islam prizes to uh, you know they call them they they give them I think they call them Shamsuddin. They had a, a, a specific uh, prizes for them, and so the Islamic traditionalists were also and on the payroll as well. I'm so this is not a valid argument. Two minutes for Daniel. Yeah, so um, that's all nonsense. Uh, I also cited academic citations. Um, I never said every organization needs to disclose its funding. If you are a nonprofit, you get certain governmental benefits and therefore you are required to report your income. I'm not saying that, oh, everyone who is involved with online needs to disclose their income and their funds. That's ridiculous. So you just engage in a stupid straw man. Um, as for Muslim skeptics, like supporting extremism or terrorism, I have many, many times condemned ISIS. I have, there are articles on Muslim skeptic that specifically condemn ISIS and terrorism. We have said this over and over and over again. Feds like Jafed just bring this up to get us into legal trouble. This is how sleazy he is. Every sleazy tactic he will use it, including posting pictures of my children online. Um, when you, this claim that I said you may had like money coming in from the federal government. That's not my claim. I call you a Fed because you worked for an organization that is getting all of this, these benefits, more than just monetary benefits. You're getting benefits in terms of your closeness to the government. You saw those pictures with Mariotti next to presidents and presidential candidates. You get access, you get all kinds of non-monetary benefits. Um, that's how, what MPAC uh, does by being Uncle Tom's, by being close to the government, be, by being sellouts. That's what it means to be a Fed. Everyone knows this. It doesn't mean literally like the president is handing you a check. Are you stupid? Like this is not this is like a stupid definition of Fed that you're using to straw man my claim. You are a Fed because your organization is so closely tied to the federal government as, and has been deputized to surveil the Muslim community to promote this kind of liberal reformism in the Muslim community. Rand is literally promoting your organization. That's what makes you a Fed. Do you get it? Like, how are you not able to understand such a simple point? Go ahead. Uh, let me unmute Javad. So we now see him retracting his first lie. His lie, let's be very clear, he said this word for word. He says that you literally work for an organization that receives funding from Homeland Security. That is not true. That is false. Zero dollars. So you can say that there's another reason why you're a Fed, and then we can deal with that argument. But first, you have to be honest and retract your first lie, which is slander, and you said it word for word. The second point is that, Daniel, you yourself work for Yakin Institute. After you quit Yakin Institute, in 2000, you complained about something they did in 2017. Use Facebook posts of Imam Umar Suleiman and claim that they are involved in CVE. So look at this irony. I worked for MPAC years after the CVE uh, uh, stuff went down. And meanwhile, you were you were there at uh, Yakin while the CVE stuff. You didn't say a word at that time. So now are you a Fed, Daniel? You worked at an organization while they were supposedly, according to you. Now, of course, you're a smear merchant, but you were working there. So this works against you. As far as reporting people, you report people to the cops. You're the snitch. You reported Shimon Burgess, OK, a, a guy who's a right wing extremist who converted to Islam and was inspired by you. You, because you have this soft spot for white nationalists and far right and you love I'm, I'm white. I'm white, too. You know, I love you, white people because of that. And now he converts to Islam. And, and spouts your, exactly your rhetoric, and you said to call the cops on him. I have the tweets. I have the receipts. We can show you that, where you said to call the cops. And he didn't commit a crime. So you actually engaged in exactly what the negative things of CVE are, which is pre-crime. That's what you engaged in. So you are the agent. You're an agent provocateur. And then once they follow you because you're an agent provocateur, you then call the cops on them. That's a Fed-like behavior. Meanwhile, I defended your freedom of speech multiple times. I said, even though I find your views to be extremist, 
I don't think they are uh, against the law. They're constitutionally protected. I can show you the tweets on that. And number two is, I've defended Tariq Mahana all the way back decades ago. I defended him even though I thought he was an extremist. And I said the government has done him dirty because he didn't break the law. So I've been a civil liberties advocate, whereas you are a snitch who called somebody to, uh, you said to call the cops on this person because he was too radical, even though he was taking your ideas. That's fed behavior, dude. You get people to radicalize. And he's inspired by you. And then you call the cops on him. Fed behavior to me. I mean, Anti. so many other lies. I don't know where else to begin, but uh, we'll go one at a time. So one at a time, admit Daniel. that you lied. Yeah, this is just another red herring. The thing about Burgess is maybe you know this since you're such a Fed Javad that the government sends agent provocateurs to incite violence. These are people who will come into a community and say, hey, let's go bomb a synagogue. These are agent provocateurs so that they can entrap others. So when you see a person, Muslim skeptic does not advocate violence. Yes, everyone should report someone who goes online like Burgess did and starts advocating violence and just killing people in the street. Everyone should report that. So this is not some kind of hypocrisy. The difference between that and CVE is that CVE, like the Safe Spaces Initiative that your organization put out, said that you're a potential terrorist if you emphasize certain verses of the Quran or you read Ibn Taymiyyah. This is the difference. Like there's a difference between that reading Quran and reading Ibn Taymiyyah and you're literally saying, oh, we need to shoot up this gay nightclub. We need to go and kill this, you know, these non-believers. That's illegal behavior. Those are threats of violence that are universally prohibited. And Muslim skeptic has been very consistent that that kind of behavior should be reported. So this is not some like big gotcha. As for MPAC, yes, you have gotten gov government grants. Your history is of getting government grants. You apply for government grants. Like, how are you denying this? I showed exactly where you're getting government grants from. DHS is sponsoring your report of sp safe spaces on their official website. <laughs> Like your report that your organization has produced, I didn't say that you're working with MPAC this whole time. This is a claim about MPAC, your organization. That's the kind of organization that you are working with because you have the same kind of Fed mentality. Do you get the argument now or are you going to straw man me again? And also, Abdu and Mar uh, Marahi, these modernists that I referenced, they weren't in India. Yeah, so, means... what are you talking about? Hi. Uh, Kojabad? Oh, you're on mute. Let me unmute you. All right. So Daniel plays fast and loose with the truth. I want to see, just like he lied and claimed that this was not a public profile photo, just like he claimed that I showed his kids even though I blurred out everything, he lies all the time. He's a chronic liar. So here with Burgess, show me where he called to a criminal act. He did not. In fact, he used the same sort of rhetoric that you use, Daniel. So according to me, his speech is actually protected. So again, you, sir, are the snitch. Okay, you are reporting pre-crime. As far, and then again, you didn't address the fact that you were working for Yakin Institute during the time that the CVE stuff that you yourself would later accuse them of. So again, that entraps you. Do you see how weak, now you're all like, oh, I'm not attacking MPAC. I'm not attacking you, I'm attacking MPAC. Dude, this whole started because you were trying to avoid the debate with me. Okay, so then you had to go against my employer. Okay, now as far as my employer is concerned, we that those things that you say about safe spaces, first of all, safe spaces, so the only CVE grant that they actually got was one grant in 2016, which was a $20,000 grant, which they got for their alternative to CVE. It's in the documentation that it's not government CVE. It's, it's a pilot program for an alternative to CVE, which removes the deleterious aspect of a law enforcement aspect to it and that it makes it community self-monitoring exactly what you're saying that you should do which is that you should report extremists now me personally i don't believe that any pre-crime should ever be reported and in fact what they did was from the first uh, uh version of safe spaces to the second one they removed that aspect the one that you're telling to uh, report burgess they removed that aspect because of uh, civil libertarians were worried about this aspect. So they removed that. They also removed the aspect that you're talking about, Ibn Taymiyyah. I also find that to be silly. You know, if you read Ibn Taymiyyah, that, thing, that was an outsourcing. They made a mistake there. Not every organization is perfect. You jump on everybody and, and go down. Like you're going to Imam Suhaib Web and talking to him about something that happened years ago. You have done nothing for the community. You're just a grifter. You didn't even speak about that Imam Suhaib Web thing at that time. You just want cameras and show it in 4K because you, you want virality. Again, show your Fine. financials. Show your financials. Let's prove that you're not and an agent. Time.
Yeah, so Wait, Abe ran away. I was going to bring it up, but he ran away, unfortunately. Um, as for Yaqeen funding, I have never said that Yaqeen takes CVE money. I have never made this claim. So you are a liar. You are straw manning me. I said that there are many individuals in Yaqeen that have a background with CVE, whether they have been part of the CVE program, whether they have spearheaded or promoted the CVE program. That's the claim. Memorize it, Jafed. Memorize it, Yaqeen Institute that are working with you probably to spread these lies. Um, and I, you know, so they're not taking Yaqeen funding. So that didn't affect me when I was just at the beginning of the organization. And I uh, left within a few months after it became clear that they're just modernists like you. Um, what else did you say? You only got a 20K grant. Like this is such a Mariotti type of response. You applied for hundreds of thousands of dollars in grants. You were awarded a almost $400,000 grant. MPAC was awarded by the Obama administration. You didn't accept the grant that you were awarded for political reasons, but you applied for it. The grant, the CVE grant was actually awarded to MPAC. You just didn't accept it because it became politically inconvenient because the whole Muslim community was blasting you for why are you working with the federal government to police the Muslim community? That's the whole, that's the real story. So this, this is just a line from Mariotti that, oh, we only got $20,000. Even that $20,000 is Fed money. So why, why are you just uh, brushing that aside? You're getting money from the Fed. So you're just admitting that um, my point. You're also saying that, oh, we made a mistake. Yeah, you make a lot of mistakes. You still haven't addressed the promotion of the Afghan, Afghanistan invasion and occupation, the Libya invasion by NATO, which there was full support of that by MPAC. You never talked about any of that. Uh, that kind of work that CVE has done. I showed the screenshots. I, I showed the quotes. This is the documented record. How can you even claim that this is a pro-Muslim organization? And time. Javad? Oh, that's right. Whenever, I forgot, whenever you mute yourself, I still have to unmute you. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting. Okay, so Daniel engages in his, in his lies and continuous slander, and he tries to avoid the point. The point is that Daniel accused Omar Suleiman of working with CVE of people and intelligence services. We have the tweet from that. That is in 2017 when he himself was working there. And then we have his, uh, you know, in a nice suit and tie, he's coming up and praising Omar Suleiman and saying, tell us about this. Uh, this grift on your part, Daniel. Tell us about how you shifted your position, how your 2019 paper argued for the exact same things that now you're railing against uh, them about. You're just a grifter, Daniel. That's exactly what you are. Now, as far as um, the, let's talk about, first of all, your first lie goes out the window. You said that Homeland Security was funding our organization and I was getting money from this organization. That turned out to be completely false. Zero dollars. What happened happened many years ago. I was not even there. So why are you calling me the Fed? Number two, you said, and if you are going to call me a Fed for another argument, then make that other argument. Don't just use this loose associations that you're doing. You're a dishonest person. You're a liar. You're a serial liar and everybody knows it. Everybody in the American Muslim community. I have religious views that are not, a, you know, people don't like because I'm a modernist. That's fine. I understand that. But at least I'm not known as a liar. You're a serial liar. Even people who like say, I, I hate Javad's view, religious viewpoints, don't call me a liar. You're a liar and a grifter because you know what happened? You actually couldn't make it. You couldn't get a degree. You couldn't get any, you couldn't do the grad school route. You said that you're a failure in that video. You said you had to get a minimum wage job and an internship not related to your degrees. And so you were, you know, you were stuck. You said you were a failure. And then Yakin gave you the job. You took it happily. You didn't criticize them there. And then they let you go and you've been disgruntled ever since then. And now you're attacking them openly. And then you realize, oh, if I'm extreme and I grift, I get lots of followers. And this is the grift that you are involved with. Now, next, I want to deal with so, time. I want to deal with the lie of time. Okay. I have to I how have much, to kick it over to Daniel. How much uh, time for the open dialogue is left, James? 33 minutes and 23 seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, should I start now? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I praised Omar Suleiman in the past and then I criticized him. Yeah, it's called growth. It's called understanding the reality. It's called doing research. When you find out someone is a fraud or is doing something unethical, then you criticize for them. 
How is this like a own or a, a gotcha against me? Like, this is ridiculous. The article 2017 or the essay that I wrote about LG, LGBT rights, I'm very clear that Muslims cannot support LGBT rights and Muslims can actually engage in discrimination legally against LGBT. That is the argument that that paper makes. Now, was I, did I have all the same positions then that I do now? No. And I've acknowledged this. I have actually corrected my mistakes many, many times on the record. But this is like a gotcha that people like you and Medkhalis just want to keep trotting out. I've already addressed this. So this is nonsense. As for me being a serial liar, like everyone saw, so Habe Webb also called me a liar. But when he's confronted with actual facts, then he has nothing to say. He has to run away. And just like I'm doing now, Javad, all of your claims are just straw men. Like this whole Fed claim, you still haven't understood the argument. MPAC, your employer, that you very conveniently left and you dropped, or they fired you because of your dismal performance in the previous debate, very conveniently, right before our debate now, they are benefiting from their government connections with DHS. DHS did grant them that for almost 400K uh, back in 2017. So this is not a lie. The document, documentation is all there, and you, you want to just lie about it. That's all that's happening here. And... Um, yeah, so this is the Fed argument. It's not that you personally are getting checks from DHS. Like, this is a straw man. Um, and I want you to admit that Muhammad Abdu is a modernist who was pro-colonialism. Admit that. Admit it right now, Javad. And we'll kick it over to Javad. Let me make sure he's unmuted. And reminder, folks, hit that like button if you haven't already. Thanks for your support. Go ahead, Javad. Thank you so much. So... Uh, let's deal with your lie about oh, th that MPAC gets CVE money. So the only CVE money, again, that they've ever gotten, and that's questionable because it was through the city of Los Angeles. It wasn't through Homeland, directly through Homeland Security. But fine, you can count that. That was, again, as an alternative to CVE, as mentioned in the grant application. That This is an alternative, and we oppose surveillance of the Muslim community and entrapment. Okay, all policing, entrapment, and surveillance were all opposed by MPAC from the very beginning. That was what their entire alternative was designed for. It was a community alternative where we talk about public health and community uh, growth and all this kind of stuff without law enforcement. That's why when they applied for the $400,000 grant to pilot it in six cities, it was declined then by the Trump administration that you, by the way, told Muslims to vote for. You said Muslims should vote for Trump. That's how silly you are in your politics and your beliefs, okay? But the Trump administration rejected it because they said MPAC is not allowing law enforcement in this plan. This alternative is not real CVE, and we reject it. In fact, you can see what the right-wing uh, think tank said. They said MPAC was trying to fool the government and do uh, and get rid of all of the aspects that, of CVE that they want, which is surveillance, entrapment, and policing. So the, so the trick that you use, the sleight of hand you'd use as a smear merchant and liar, is you say, okay, MPAC was somehow involved in CVE, then this is what CVE is, and then you say the worst case scenario what CVE is, therefore MPAC tolerated this. But the reality is that what, CV, what MPAC actually argued for was as an alternative which said no policing, no entrapment, no surveilling of the Muslim community, and we just want law enforcement out completely, and it's just community self-monitoring. Now, you may disagree with that, I may disagree with that, but the point is don't misrepresent it. And by the way, you yourself did the exact same thing with Burgess, which you haven't addressed. You, you show me one quote where he breaks the law. You said to call the police on him. Show me the quote where he, give me the quote. You can't have general statements, right? You can't have, you have to have a specific Fine. statement where he breaks the law. And that's what you have to show. And you can't show that. And time. I did explicitly address Burgess. You still haven't addressed whether Muhammad Abdu was pro-colonialism or not, or uh, any of the other modernists that I mentioned outside of the subcontinent. So you keep dodging that question. Um, again, the, the MPAC in December 2020 apologized for involvement with CVE. So all of this justification that you're giving for CVE, your own organization, MPAC, distanced themselves and said, we were wrong on CVE. They, they admitted the guilt of participating in CVE. So why, are you, why do you keep repeating the lie that, oh, MPAC, it wasn't really CVE. 
yes, your own organization said it was CVE and we're sorry. We we apologize. And this is why MPAC has been boycotted from so many mosques in Southern California and the rest of the country because they're known as feds. They're known as working with the feds against the Muslim community. So all of your claims are complete uh, nonsense. Um, what was the other thing that you said I didn't answer? Like Burgess? Yeah, he's making threats. Go to the video. I didn't I don't have prepared like the quote from Burgess, but he is saying we need to use physical force to stop these degenerates. Yes, that can be considered invoking violence. Go and watch the video that I made on Burgess. And this is typical um, entrapment behavior, agent pro provocateur behavior, when you go and specifically advocate for physical force or violence to enforce, you know, some kind of ideology. So this is, this is what the guy was doing. He was posting it on social media. This is something that is completely illegal. And we were just uh, pointing that out. This is not a hypocrisy on our part. This is very different than saying, if you read Ibn Taymiyyah or Sayyid Qutb or uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, you're a terrorist or a potential terrorist and you, authorities need to come arrest you or talk to you like MPAC has advocated for years, as they admit. And time. Go ahead, Javad. Let me unmute you. And, folks, if you haven't yet, share this debate with someone who likes these topics. Go ahead, Javad. Daniel is... Daniel is a serial liar, so we've already exposed that his first lie goes out the window, which is that Javad was getting paid by Homeland Security. You literally said that word for word. That's a lie. Number two lie, you said that MPAC supported CVE. What MPAC did was it pro pro uh, provided an alternative to CVE to remove the harmful aspects because they thought at that time their ijtihad was that the government is going to implement some form of CVE, so we might as well give an alternative that removes the harmful aspects. This is in the initial grant application for the $20,000 that they got and also in the $400,000 grant that they didn't get. And it was rejected again because of those aspects were removed, the exact aspects that you're trying to associate with them. So you're a liar. As far as their apology, Daniel, they apologize because of community pressure. You're right, because there were people who were being dishonest and putting pressure on and saying that any involvement with CVE. However, I do think that there was other uh, mitigating information, which I do think that an apology was a good idea because it it became uh, apparent that government uh, uh, government documents came out that were declassified that showed that the United States government wasn't following through on what it was stating and was using CVE to spy on Muslims against them, even though they claimed they were not. So that was information that is uh, was declassified. And so in that sense, that is something that so you could say that they were naive and they shouldn't have done that. But the way you're portraying it as that they were trying, the way you portrayed it in your thread was that they're actively trying to spy and trap and police Muslims. This is a blatant lie. They're actually trying to remove all those aspects. And so you might blame them for being naive and they themselves think that. But now they do. By the way, the Brennan Center themselves, who were the most critical, says that MPAC refused to work with the FBI. OK, so I agree with the Brennan Center's viewpoint that it's against like it, it really is harmful to civil liberties that I a believer in. Meanwhile, you still need to show Burgess showing a specific that that statement that you said is not a crime. I'm sorry. You don't know what you're talking about. That's not a crime to say that you need to respond in a general fashion. That's not a crime. As far as agent provocateur, you're the agent provocateur. You say all the negative and things and don't cross the line because that would get people arrested. So as an agent provocateur, you have to. Yeah, the only thing that I advocate is traditional Islam that all of the Islamic no. scholars throughout history have uh, preached all of these books that you consider to be extremism and you consider to be ISIS light. Like that's all I preach, what Islam has been preaching for 1400 years. You just call that terrorism. Like that's you, even this debate, like your opening proves that you're a fed because you're using the same kind of CVE logic. You called me a tekfiri. You called me an extremist. You called me a radical. You're saying that I'm inciting violence. This is exactly what CVE, I didn't, CVE I didn't is. So you're talking about how, oh, CVE is something that we disagree agree with you're doing cve in this debate you're that you're presuming the cve logic of radicalization and takfirism in this very debate so you're proving that you're just a fraud um let's see when will you admit that mpac supported military invasions and the two to four million that were killed in the invasions that MPAC supported? When will you admit that the liberal West and liberal reformers support secular dictators, not Islamists? These are all things that you've avoided. What, what about fiqh books? Okay, uh, ask him. So let's see the Burgess claim, the Burgess claim. Again, he said physical force, physical 
force. This is illegal in, in, in Australia, especially. So do you know Australian law? This is something that is considered incitement to violence. It is potentially dangerous. It is illegal. I don't know why you keep wanting to bring this point up. You say MPAC refused to work for the FBI. Look at the 2006 interview that I cited. He is asking for working with the FBI. Mariotti, your president, asked to work for the FBI uh, in a counter-radicalization program. So why are you lying? Yeah, and all of these native informants and these Uncle Toms claim, oh, you know, now we know better. Oh, the government, yeah, now we, hindsight is 2020. That doesn't absolve you from the crimes. That doesn't absolve you from the Muslims that were spied on and were harmed by your programs at MPAC. This is such a mealy-mouthed type of apology, and it's and disgusting. And time. And Oops. All right. one thing I want to remind you folks, actually, I shouldn't say remind, it's the first time I'm mentioning it. Uh, we actually got the poll feature to work. So instead of putting a J or a D in chat, there's now an official poll in the live chat for who you found most persuasive tonight, whether it be Javad or Daniel. Javad, thanks very much. The floor is all yours. So Daniel is a serial liar. He can't get his facts straight. So he says, so I'm sharing my screen right now. Here's Dishonest Dan himself linking to the article, which disproves exactly what he's saying. Here in this article that Daniel himself showed, it shows that Salam al mariati opposed informants and entrapment. When I said that Salam refuses to work with the FBI, it's, I said in the program of CVE. Otherwise, MPAC believes in working with the government it's because if you're not have a seat on the table, you're going to be on the menu. That's the belief. You, Daniel, you take taxpayer money. I mean, you give uh, you give your taxes. Don't you want to know where it's spent? Don't you think that so Salam was in the government and he actually and he actually made a documentary. He was in a documentary that was against the FBI about their about how they're using informants. This is called the Newberg, Newberg Jihad, Newberg's thing. He was in a documentary. So you're misrepresenting just because you work with the government doesn't mean that you support you're actually working with the government to push back against those specific aspects those ones that you have accused me and mpac of so you're a liar even if you had a legitimate complaint you are a liar because you can't help yourself so you have to say salam works for the fbi therefore he supports fbi surveillance and entrapment and policing when in fact what he works for and, this, and you did this against um, uh uh what's her name uh, uh, mogahead as well mogahead gave recommendations exactly against the things that you then attributed to her because you're a liar so Salam, said, Salam works with the FBI to tell them that they shouldn't do these things. And you, you, we know this because the right wing says this about Salam. They call him an Islamist. And so does all, you know, the Trump administration rejected their, uh, their alternative to CVE. Again, these are all lies that you're saying, Daniel. As far as their record when it comes to uh, wars, I didn't prepare for this because you, you didn't have this in your initial smear thread. But from what I know is... Yeah, well, I mean, I'll, when you have a serial liar, it's hard to go through all of the onions of lie, right? But they do say that they're opposed to military actions in the Middle East. And I showed you that quote. Of course, you didn't show your audience that, right? So if they, uh, it, there were a lot of Muslims who supported the war in Afghanistan. I'm not sure if they did or not. And but and, but time. you yourself were part of Yakin Institute. And yeah, time. You, 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 you've, now said claim. you've now you already grown. You've now grown, right? Claim. You've now grown, right? Yet, so it's okay for other people to it... grow? All right, we'll get over yeah, you've, you've, for his you've had double time because you talked to your audience. You cheat. No, no, no. Look at this. You Look at this. Sorry, let's go over to Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. I worked with Yaqeen is comparable to working with the feds to uh, surveil Muslims and to spread this uh, policing of the Muslim community. He's interrupting me, James. This is not fair. Yeah, so you, stop you interrupting. Have double time. Have double time I'll, I'll interrupt. Javad, I'll I would interrupt have, his I section. Hold on. I got a view. I'll interrupt his time too. No problem. Just tell James enforce like him being muted. He is. Uh, he's muted now. Let me double check. Javad, you <laughs> you unmuted yourself. Wow. All right, now he's muted. Okay. Yeah. Look at this. Two minutes. Okay. Uh, so I started the two minutes. Um, you're comparing like working with the feds to me, like giving taxes as a citizen of a country. Like this is your argument. This is so silly. Like this is, and you're just admitting everything. Like I didn't claim that F that Salam Mariadi endorses every policy of the FBI. Like this is such a ridiculous straw man. Again, follow exactly what I'm saying, Javad. He has asked to work with the FBI for, for counter-radicalization in 2006. The link 
that I shared, that frontline interview shows that, his statement. Everyone can go to the link and see exactly where he says, we wanted to have uh, counter-radicalization programs working with the FBI. We wanted to monitor Islamic schools to make sure that they're not teaching anything that the government doesn't approve of. Go and see the quote, like I'm not saying it verbatim, go and actually see what Salam says. Um, and then like according to your logic, Javad, you can work with the CIA, like you can work with the, you know, the military, you can actually be involved with the Iraq invasion. But as long as you don't, uh, as long as you oppose some of the policies, like I'm a soldier working for the US government in Iraq, and we're killing a lot of Iraqis, but I don't agree with all the killing, maybe 50% of the killing. Like that's your logic. Therefore, it's okay. <laughs> It's okay to be uh, a soldier in the U.S. military. Like that's such a depraved type of logic. And this is the kind of logic that MPAC rolls out to whitewash its disgusting pro-Zionist behavior, pro-occupation, pro-invasion behavior, pro-CVE promotion, getting funds from the government, getting all this access. What better picture of corruption do you need than Salam there smiling and shaking the hands of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama? Like, oh, Oh yeah, there's no corruption there. We want to seat at the table. That's what every Uncle Tom says. Oh, we're just helping our community. If you didn't have me sitting at the table and getting fat off of the government funding, and oink, oink, pig. That's what your time. organization is about, Javad. Oink, oink. Time. Go ahead, Javad. Let me, make, let me unmute you. Let me. There you go. Yeah, oink oink sounds like you. You're the pig who calls the pigs and yeah. snitches. You're a pig, uh, and, you, and you and you look like a pig. You're right? a pig. So, oh, oh, yeah. wow, big yeah. insult, Javad. Really yeah, good. Yeah. Show you pictures of my kid. Can you mute him? Show Fair. pictures of my kid. Can you mute him? Yeah. Okay. Just mute so, Daniel. So uh, he has so many lies. MPAC is Z uh, Zionist. MPAC supports BDS. It can't be Zionist. Another lie. Uh, it, it, MPAC supports wars. It opposes Middle East interventions, as I showed in the uh, in the quote. Uh, e MPAC works for the FBI. Yes, it works for the FBI to tell them to oppose surveillance, <laughs> surveilling, entrapment. These are the exact things. You can look at the, as far as opposing radicalization, he then says, oh, he talks about opposing radicalization. Yes, by self-monitoring. That's what he's talking about. He's literally telling the FBI that leave the radicalization to us. That has been MPAC's policy, that the de-radicalization has been left to the American Muslim community. That's what Safe Spaces was all about. So you're just a liar. So you, you use loose connections to attack people. You're a liar. You're a dishonest Dan. You call me Jafed, you're a liar, okay? And uh, as far as, we should go back to your white supremacist uh, talks where you have these beautiful, lovely bro chats where you're all talking about common ground. You don't I'm have any problem them. with allyship. Why, why, are you, why do you have a problem with allyship? You actually love these white nationals. Let's talk about that. And let's talk about your views about black people. You seem to hate black people. You are a racist, Daniel. Why, why do you have, like, if I was on with a white nationalist and they were talking about criminality of black people, I would get infuriated. I wouldn't tell them, oh yeah, maybe they need religion more and because white people are more sophisticated and they don't need religion. Like, Daniel, you should fight back against racists. You shouldn't have lovely chats with them. And all of your viewers are talking about how, what lovely chat. You can't talk to a Muslim with decency. You talk, to, you know, you insult, you yell, you do all these kind of things. But when it comes to white nationalists, Daniel loves white nationalists. He loves them. Why? Because they give him virality. That's the reason. You're a grifter, Daniel. You went from being reasonable, working with Yakin because you were part of the community, and then all of a sudden you left, and so you had to make money somehow, release your financial records. You won't do that. You've denied that you'll do that, and now your your grift is all apparent. You you grift. Okay, you don't like hate them, Sayf Adin. Say it. Denounce him then. Denounce Sheikh Al Alwan then. Denounce him. You defend him. If you were reversing your position, that's great. Why don't you def Why don't you do that? You ask everybody else to do these apologies, right? So Imam Suhaib Webb supported Noor, Noor Taguri. What and about you supporting Sheikh al one Let's Took have you, which one's more time. harmful? Time and time. Let me unmute you, Daniel. I'm still not, oh. It should, I just clicked unmute. There you go, Daniel. Okay, sure. I'm starting the time. Uh, yeah, how can I be, I had two debates with or three actually with white nationalists and therefore i am pro white nationalism i'm trying to debunk white nationalism and i'm providing all these arguments to debunk white nationalism and somehow that makes me pro white nationalist also you said i used a anti-white slur 
before. You claimed I said, uh, you said wigger is an anti-white slur, so I'm using racial slurs against white people, but somehow I'm also pro-white. <laughs> How does that even make any sense? I've rejected uh, any kind of racial nationalism. I'm advocating for Islamic government, Sharia law. You know, my record is clear. I've denounced all kinds of terror groups. Uh, so this is ridiculous. You're the one who worships the white man, Jafed. Look at how you look at Sir Sayed talking about he, you, you tweeted this, actually, an entire thread about Sir Sayed's essay complaining about how Indian Muslims are disgusting slobs who just eat with their hands and grease dribbles down their face like this extremely Islamophobic racist portrayal by this coconut Sir Sayed. And you actually describe it in very positive terms. And you say that, oh, I felt actually very self-conscious as an Indian Muslim or Pakistani Muslim that I also am very uh, disgusting. I mean, I'm just doing this off the top of my head, but you can go look at the thread. Oh, you know, I, I realize that we need to have some kind of um, uh, manners, table manners. We need to reform our eating practices. Sir Sayyid is right. Uh, Muslims are disgusting. Uh, so this is the pinnacle of white supremacy. Sir Sayyid is praising the British, praising the colonizer, and you agree with Sir Sayyid. You're like, yeah, just go to any Indian restaurant. Go to Shalimar restaurant, as, as you put it, and look how disgusting Muslims are. This is the kind of white supremacy that you support, the colonialism that you support, the liberal reform project that you support, that every academic recognizes is a disaster and is responsible for cultural and actual genocide. These are your role models, Jafed. You've actually admitted that. So how can you claim that I, because I debate white supremacists, I'm pro-white supremacy? What a, what a crock. This is nonsense. Like, get a better argument. You're failing this debate. And finally, Jafed, here's a challenge for you. I want you to recite Ayatul Kursi. Prove that you're actually a Muslim. <laughs> recite the Quran. Recite Ayatul Kursi for the audience and show that you can actually recite part of the Quran. I think the audience needs to understand whether you claim to be an Islamic scholar. So prove that by actually reciting from Ayatul Kursi. I think that would be a good demonstration for the audience. And, or, you know, stay silent um, and ignore it. Go ahead. Let me go ahead, Javad. The floor is all yours for two minutes. So many lies. What can we do? Let's start with Wigger. I never said that this was an anti-white slur. That's, you wouldn't do that. You love white people. You repeatedly said, I love white people. All right. You said, uh, Wigger is an insult against black people. You're accusing white people of acting black. Please tell us what you mean by that, Daniel. You've, you've implied that too about Imam Suhaib Webb. Please tell us what you mean by what does it mean to be black? Uh, and and why, why, are you, why didn't you push back against when they said that black people are more criminal? What, wait, why don't you, why don't you uh, disagree with that? You said, oh yeah, they are, but let me give you a suggestion that maybe they need religion more. And then your white nationalist buddy agreed with you and said that's a great hypothesis. You say that these are debates. These are plausible deniability. They were actually friendly chats. In fact, you, you guys are, 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 are playing footsies throughout this entire thing. You didn't even need moderator for two of them. You can't even stand me. You, you can't stand Muslims. You had to blur out a hijabi. Again, she wasn't playing cosplay like your wife. Um, you know, so like you can't stand them. But for white nationalists, you love them. You're a bootlicker when it comes to white nationalists. All right. You, tell us, do you think, answer me this question. Do you think different races have different IQs and different levels of criminality? Can you tell us about that? Please let us know what your viewpoint is. And then if you do not agree with that, why didn't you point any of that out when you were debating, supposedly, these white nationalists? In fact, you were just having a love fest. And anyone can watch your discussions and just even look at the comments of the white nationalists. People are like, oh, I couldn't believe that white nationalists are so good. So this is all just lying from you. Um, and as far as Sir Sayed, you have to reach all the way back to Sir Sayed to attack me. That's hilarious. Uh, I support certain ideas of Sir Sayed, not all of them. I definitely think, like the most consensus of historians, that he went overboard in his statements when he was talking about British loyalism. That's fine. I, I believe that. But what about your Wahhabism, which was funded? The guy was literally funded. The entire Wahhabi movement was funded by the British. They were on a stipend. So if you want to say anything about against modernism, what about your Akida that you follow? You follow Salafi Wahhabism. You, you've said it before. You're an Athari and you want to now claim, oh, that's literally you had to take the Salafi uh, Shahada in front of these other people, which is pretty hilarious. And time. Um, but that's really who you are. Time. Take it over to Daniel. Yeah, I'm not a Wahhabi. Um, a lot of these Wahhabis absolutely denounce me. <laughs> 
a lot of these Madhali Wahhabis, they completely Madhali, denounce yeah. me. So this is like nonsense. I've never said that I'm Wahhabi. Athari is a theological school. Everyone saw you butcher it in our previous debate and you got like refuted by 10 different um, Hanbalis and Athari's about that. The term Uyghur is a racial slur against whites. Who else is it a slur against? It means imitating black people in this caricature of black culture. That's why it's so racist for a white person to act like he's black when he's not actually black. This is not an insult against black people. This is an insult against whites. So you don't even understand like basic cultural points. Um, uh, yeah, so you didn't recite Ayatul Kursi. That's what I was waiting for. Are you Googling it now, Javad? Can you recite Ayatul Kursi? The first word of it is Allah. I'll give you a hint. Can you recite it? Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> nod your head. No, 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 don't interrupt. Naam, naam. Anta turid an tatakallam al lugha al arabiya. Naam, naam, atakallam, naam. Atakallam, ya ya himar, ya himar. Kam sanatan darasta al lugha. Ya khinzir. Is ikhras, ya khinzir. So recite ayatul kursi. I'm not your monkey. I'm not your monkey. Hey, James, what is this? What is this, James? This is you, not you, violation, right? You He's literally asked me. Like, you literally on, asked me. Didn't I didn't finish my two to, minutes. Didn't no, you I, ask I didn't, him to recite? No, I something. wanted to taunt him for the rest of my two minutes, but he interrupted. Okay. He, and he okay. didn't respond. He didn't actually recite the verse. So how so can he just? It's a rhetorical. Okay. Yeah. So recite Ayatul Kursi. Prove that you actually know like one verse of the Quran. If anything, like this is really embarrassing, Javad. Recite Ayatul Kursi. Can you do that? Or are you Googling it right now? Is Khalil like sending you the verse? Can you actually read the Arabic? Recite it. Go ahead. What, what? This is something children, for the audience who are non-Muslims, children, Muslim children learn this at five years old. Like it's the, one of the first verses of the Quran that you memorize. Javed does, or Jafed doesn't even know this verse. Is he really a Muslim? Was he ever a Muslim? That's a question. And or is he time. like a Hindu? Javad? Actually, I'll unmute you. We have enough time for, see, what we can do is two more. So we'll have this one from Javad. I'll start the clock in a second, Javad, once you're unmuted. We'll have one from you, Javad, then one from Daniel, and then we'll be going into the next section, which is, if I remember right, it's Q&A. So, folks, if you put in a question for the Q&A, uh, we originally have a five-minute break for each guest. I think that was originally, though, that Daniel requested that for prayer time. So I don't know yes. if we need that break anymore. So we should probably keep on rolling because we're already like uh, supposed yep. to have been done with this debate an hour ago. So Javad, the floor is all yours. Yeah, thank you. So uh, not only have I studied the Arabic language for the last 10 years, I actually lead Juma khutbas. So yes, I do read the Quran and have memorized surahs of the Quran. Really? I actually took study. No, I'm not your monkey and I'm not going to do it. And the oh, reason, yeah, you can't... hey, stop interrupting. Hey, D J James, he's interrupting right now. Okay, uh, like I told you, if you want to speak in Arabic, we can have the rest of the conversation okay. in Arabic. I do. Uh, okay, you're, you're, you're muted, um, So, uh, you know, I'm not your monkey, and I'm not going to um, uh, just re recite on command. And the reason why is very simple. Number one is I'm not your monkey, and number two is if you even have one slight mistake in pronunciation, your kind jump on it, and that's the only argument that you guys have. All right. Uh, anyways, um, so let's go back <laughs> to uh, Daniel, the liar. Uh, let's uh, dishonest Dan. Excuse. The entire Muslim Ummah, um, you know, says that this guy is a liar. All right. Again, they might not like my religious views, but they don't call me a liar. OK, they don't call me a grifter. They don't call me all these things that Daniel is. All right. So number one, let's release your financial records. Why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you making it a nonprofit? Why is Alasna not a, 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 a nonprofit organization? OK, let's talk about your associations with white nationalists. You're claiming that you debated them. What did you refute to them? All you said to them was in the debate, you invited them to Islam and said, hey, why don't you consider a white ethno nationalist state? and just become Muslim. And you said, what if we cut off? You even were soft on migration bans. You were like, yeah, they actually, an audience member asked you and said, do you support migration bans? Instead of saying no, like somebody with guts, like the bootlicker that you are, the white bootlicker that you are, you said, uh, yeah, actually, I discourage people to come to the West anyways. And so, and then Roosh actually says, we actually agree on that. OK, and he understood well. So all of your people, they understand what you're doing here. We understand what you're signaling. So you are a grifter. You grift. White nationalists, why don't you condemn them and disassociate themselves? Why are you having love fest with them and footsies with them? Why don't you condemn? You still haven't condemned Haytham Saifuddin yet. You haven't condemned 
uh, even Sheikh Al Alwan yet. You haven't come to, and even Muhammad Hijab tells you that these are extremists. That you still don't say, "Hey, I made a mistake. This was wrong. I was wrong. I'm going to delete this content." You haven't done that. So why don't you fix your mistakes? You go around with microphone and 4K as a grifter, getting everybody. Why is your associations with these ISIS and Al Qaeda people less bad and white nationalists less bad than Imam time, Sahib time. Webb just talking to this, time, uh, you know, supporting this? Uh, hijabi woman, which I don't agree with what he did. Man, but that was a mistake. Fine. But you, you expect perfection from time. everybody else, and you go attack time. everyone else. We've got That's two time. minutes left for Daniel. The floor is all yours, Daniel. Um, okay, he got way over two minutes time. So let me explain why Muslim skeptic or Alasna are non-profits. Because when you are a non-profit, you have to abide by certain regulations, which includes disclosing the legal names of the people who are volunteering for you or working for you. Not volunteering, but the people who are on your payroll. Uh -huh. So we have people on our payroll that don't want, be, want to be doxxed by the likes of an oink oink pig like you, Javad. We don't want to be do Look at what you did to me in this stream. You're po posting pictures of my children. So for the safety of everyone who is involved with Muslim skeptic from pigs like you, I cannot, we cannot be a nonprofit. That's just the nature of the kind of work that Muslim skeptic does. That's the thing. When you want to defend Islam against people like you, feds like you, it is not easy work. And there are a lot of dangers to you and your family for defending traditional Islam because you have this war on terror. You have a fed organization like MPAC who puts people like you here to call other Muslims extremists and get them in trouble with their employers, with their academic institutions, with their with the law. So this is this is very risky, dangerous work because of this regime, this liberal regime, this hegemony that you are a part of. So this is why we cannot have um, this kind of nonprofit status. We would, we would great. It would be great because we get all kinds of benefits for being nonprofit, but we can't even get those benefits because of people like you. Um, as for race, you keep bringing up race. Um, I in those debates, I conceded the possibility that ra there is like race realism. This is not a racist uh, position. No, we can't. We can't talk about anything like that. Sorry okay, to interrupt. Right. So this is not like, this is not like my like a racist position. Um, and then there was another point. Yeah, I had till Corsi recite it. Well, lame excuse. <laughs> You don't want, I'm fine. Like, just give me the second word of Ayatul Kursi. Can you give me the second word? Allah, I gave you the first word. What is the second word of Ayatul Kursi? Do you even know what Ayatul Kursi is? How many, how many rakat in Surah Al-Fatiha, Jafed? <laughs> how many rakat? Yeah, oh yeah, sh shake your eyes. Like, how many rakat even know, in Surah Al-Fatiha? You didn't even, what is Ayatul you didn't, What is the Arabic word for debate? What is the Arabic word for debate? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me that? Hold Since on, you're Arabic you, master. I What's think, the Arabic on, word for to, debate? What is the Arabic you, you, word for debate? You, What's the dude, second word of Ayatul Kursi? Go dude, ahead and tell me. We are we are What's the engaged word in Jadal. What is okay? the second? What is no Jadal is not the word. What yeah, is the is. Arabic yeah. word for okay. debate? So, you're not well, you're not here. It starts with a meme. You don't. You, you don't what is okay. it? We're gonna jump into the Q and A. I hate to do this, guys. You did not even know. Know. You did not learn know. Arabic. You, you ignorant. Learn Arabic. But I've got to mute both of you, and I hate to do that. I know that you want to respond, Javad. During the Q and A, we'll give you a chance where you'll be able to do that. <laughs> Just tack it on the end of your answer to a different question. That's my recommendation. But I do have to go into the Q and A because we have limited time. So I'm gonna unmute both of you guys, trusting you know, you'll let me read these questions. This one coming in from. Want to say thanks so much for your question. Do appreciate it, Doctor Omar, Muslim theist says Daniel. In 2016, you said Malana Salim, who pled guilty. You said he was innocent. One woman's clothing had semen. I don't know if the analysis of the semen was published. Do you know? Do you now apologize to those women? Yes or no? Mulana Salim is a great scholar. Uh, these deviants, uh, people like Jafed, tried to frame him. Uh, he pled mm -hmm. guilty. Why? Because it was a plea agreement. He's in his old age, okay. and he had to agree to that because people like Jafed were blackmailing him. If you go to Muslim Skeptic, I'm very proud of that article, alhamdulillah, that I got the opportunity to defend this great scholar, Molana Salim, Abdullah Salim, one of the forerunners of Islam in America and has one of the biggest Islamic uh, madrasas in America. So, mashallah, he is a great scholar. I will defend him to this day. The people who smeared him, they'll be held accountable by Allah. And yeah, the whole case was a hatchet job. 
And I showed that through analysis of the actual court records. This was an embarrassment. It was a, a hit job. He served no time in prison. So people like Jafed, Jafed hate traditionalists. They want to get them James, in trouble with the law. This is a blatant lie, slander. So this I is, never said this anything is, about this scholar. I don't even know this case. So I said you're, people you're, like Jafed. Yeah, people no, no, like you said Jafed. no, no, no. You were clearly implied. This is the way you use dishonesty, right? People like you dishon oink, oink, pig. This is what hey, smear is. going to take a billion this years for us to get to the Q and A if, you, if yeah, we have this up, much. I hate dishonest to do this, Dan, but by association if, and affiliation, that's Daniel's hit job against oink, everybody. Oink, all these, we're going to jump. Oink, we're going to jump into the next question. This one from El Arante says, "Asalamu, Alikur, Alikum brothers." You are both Muslims, just just putting it out there. Just gently sliding it out there. Good luck, Daniel, and good luck, Javad. Yours truly, compassionate Imam fan. Thanks for your, your positivity. This one from Noor Aman says, This will be Javad, his the Janaza prayer. Javad is the most terrible fed of our time. I'm the only Fed in the world who has zero dollars funding from any federal organization. Great. I make my so own from, money by saving lives in the ER. Unfortunately, Daniel takes it by grifting the community and making money off of them and refuses to release his finances about that. Okay, so the, these insults are allowed? Gosh, okay. Let's see. Uh, if you want to quick give a response. it's If you guys can do me no, a I favor and go not ahead, go ahead, go ahead. do as much of the jabbing of the other because otherwise this will take... 12,000 years. Josh oh, said, Daniel coping and seething harder than he ever has. That account is not a doxing account. It's all a smokescreen. Not very Chad behavior, Danny. Uh, yeah, it is. So doxing means that you present uh, private pictures, like family pictures. It's these that trolls. That account didn't do that. It's these trolls that go through Facebook and they try to find any kind of picture that doesn't have a privacy setting. And they say, oh, see, this is a, pri this is a public picture. And then they post it and they say, oh, see, this is not doxing. That's not what doxing, that's not all that doxing is. Doxing can be taking your personal family photos because I don't talk about my family. I don't post my family. My wife wears niqab uh, on oh. all channels and she Does is she wear it in not, real life? Does she wear she it in real not, life everywhere? I must Does she wear it in real life word. everywhere? Yes or no? Let me finish my let me finish my answer to your question. Uh -huh. Okay, so just like many Muslim women who they may, may not wear hijab in their youth, and then they take on the hijab, they might not wear niqab at certain points, and they adopt it later. So this is just yeah. I, I but acknowledge does she wear that. it now? I everywhere. acknowledge. Does she wear it now? I acknowledge everywhere. Now, I acknowledge now that my wife. Um, has Who's taken part of Allah's practice. Yeah, part no, of Allah's practice. So. so she wears so are niqab you, this is not everywhere now? This Q&A for she, she you wears, and me. She wears niqab everywhere she goes now? Yeah, if she's in front of men and she's mixing because uh -huh. she has to go to a this grocery a store, or she has to go to a, per, I a must public go to the place next like one. that. Yeah. Bellarante says the moderator showed up in a t-shirt because it's for a murder scene. <laughs> oh, boy. All out war. I don't envy either gentleman. Good luck. Thanks for that. Pologum Gun says, Hey, James, you want to show people our emails? Yes, you should show them our emails to embarrass yourself. I seriously don't care. Show them. Elorante says, Ladies, calm down. Let's go. All right. Anyway, Holy Humanist says, uh, Nuria Khan, your old buddy, Daniel. She says, <laughs> Is it true that many scholars have issued fatwa? That Daniel's blood is halal. What does that mean? Is there an actual fatwa against me? I, not to my knowledge, but this I wouldn't one. surprise if it comes. People, Elorante compassionate says, imams, will come and might issue a fatwa like that, or medchali bootlickers, Jaf Jafed's no, friends. No, I would definitely oppose that. Daniel's Elorante says my conspiracy brain <clears throat> says my conspiracy brain is running wild. Doxing became the defense. Diam, Daniel is a wasted political talent. What is the question? That I'm talented and that I'm wasting it? So I don't get I the guess question. so. Josh says Daniel has retweeted the same doxing accounts. This is a yeah, total smoke screen. Stop funny. being a baby. Why would I tweet account an account <clears throat> that doxes me? Why would I exactly. retweet an account? Exactly. Yeah, it's never not happened. There was an account. You did. You no. tweeted. Yeah, them. the account didn't have my profile picture in it at first. Yeah. 
And I but retweeted. You, you're you're behind that. I know that that's your account. Oh effect. yeah, that's me. Then sure. the account I became a doxing account. That. Yeah. The account. Yeah, sure. The account spread a you Photoshop image. You accuse me of the, Jeff, uh, James. Look, he's interrupting my answer. This is this is for me he's, too. No. Well, let me finish um, my answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ted Daniel. Yeah. The question was directed to me. So this account uh, put a photoshopped image of me in front of an Israeli flag. And so I retweeted that to say, look, this is a Photoshop. And then the account, which is probably Jafed, uh, posted my address. <laughs> so Jafed is saying, oh, I post I posted doxing accounts <laughs> like such a liar. You're such a you're the, you're the liar. Bag. Now your lie has gone to that I'm the one behind the doxing account. Look how you have no evidence, no proof. You're just a liar. You every lie, every lie. If the lie shoe fits. That, yeah, the shoe that's fits. all you do. You speculate against all the these fits. leaders, and that's why you're a serial liar and grifter. If the shoe you are fits. the accomplished serial liar and grifter of the American Muslim the community. Fits. Do you this even, one um, coming? Do they even allow one... you in the masjid near you? Oh yeah. Yeah, what I get put the forward. So you can yeah, dox right. me. So you yeah, can dox you don't me. Get this one. Recite not, Ayatul Kursi. You couldn't even get the second letter of Ayatul allowed. Kursi. Oh, yeah. I'm not playing your game. Right? <laughs> yeah, you can't monkey. because you can't recite. Right, you I, don't uh, even know I the gave, Arabic yeah, word for yeah, debate. Give, You're a clown. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I You're just a poser. You. you don't know Arabic. This one, this one, all right, gentlemen. No, it's Munadhara. It's stupid. Munadhara is another word for it. Munadhara is Munadhara is the word. Al Munadhara is the term for this kind of debate. You think I don't know the word Munadhara? I've studied Arabic for the last 10 years. I don't think you do. You don't even know the second word of the Ayatul Kursi. Yeah, I'm not your monkey. That's the biggest fail. That's the real fail here. I have to figure out how to. I had a convenient button where I could mute both of you at once, but it's disappeared. Let me figure this out. But I do want to just keep speaking to his audience. The second the second word of Ayatul Kursi. Go ahead. I'm not your monkey. You haven't had time to look it up. I lead Juma Khutbas. And yeah, I'm there are many. Going, and I'm going to. I, I'm not going to know any Arabic. You, I actually like just recite it in. Do you German, know which actually. day you, yeah. uh, khutbas are supposed to be given? Do you know no. which day no. that is? Oh, I wonder what day that is, Daniel. How many? How many rakat in uh, Salat al Jum'ah? Do you know that? Yeah, that's that's hilarious. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how make wudu? All right. Do you know what do you know wudu is? Silly questions. You didn't even know what ijma. The problem with ijma. Do you know? Do you know? I watched your review debate. Do you know the second word of Ayatul Kursi? The second word. What's the problem with ijma? No, no. Don't get scared now. You're saying what is the problem with ijma? Okay. The second word is la. What's the third word? When I was saying that ijma. What is the third word? What did I mean by that? What did I mean by What is the third word of Ayatul Kursi? There's the button. Okay. Sorry to do this to you guys. You're on mute, but I do have to go forward. This one coming in from, oh yeah, I saw it just now. I didn't see this in the chat while we were going, but uh, folks, uh, you can't have any sort of ethnic slurs. So I'm going to have to ban those accounts that used it. And then mods, if you see the uh, word P-A-K-I in the chat, I just looked it up. That's uh, ethnic slur. If you didn't know that, it's not just an abbreviation. So we, uh, want to mute those or we're, we're going to delete those people so for real folks like we don't have any we don't have any lenience with that so alarante says i want my money back it's a debate rule of engagement just kidding man the man the f up and let's go i think that was when he almost canceled the debate this is the first one in a while that i've, I've been in like fight or flight mode and on your mouse says may allah protect our brother daniel from all the sh shia team that are working against him of men and jinn, Islam is future proof and won't submit l to liberalism. Any, uh, Thank you. Right, this one, Elorante says, moderator is channeling. Let's see, they say, take off your shirt. What is wrong with you? It must be one of Daniel's <laughs> fans. All right, come on. <laughs> That's a joke. It was funny. You could, come on. All right, Elorante says, uh, let's see. El Holy Humanist says, if anyone has Daniel's address, I'm willing to pay a lot for it. What? There you go. Okay, that's weird. There you go. There Alarante you go. Says, there you go. Fun. There fact. you go. Uh, there you go. Let me respond, James. Let words. me respond. I do want to say I'm gonna. Let me respond, James. Our guys. Let me respond. For a second. Uh, Look, he's cheating know. again. He's let me respond. That's cheating, James. <laughs> He's talking to his audience. Let me respond. See, this is exactly. He's Look at. They're doxing me. They're doxing me. They're trying to dox me, and while I'm debating. You. Oh, they should dox yeah. me. There you go. They should, there you I go. said they should not dox you. Don't. What? You're such a liar. I literally just said that you should not dox you. Speak clearly. Okay. okay. Speak clearly. Okay. Enunciate. Yeah, yeah. I know you can't oh, speak yeah. Arabic. Oh. Enunciate. You yeah, don't I'm, know Ayatul Kursi. I'm so sorry. Enunciate. I'm a wigger. What do you mean by No, no. There's another slur no, that they're using for you, apparently. What does that mean? 
Yeah, they're using Paki because you. Yeah, so because you, so because why are you, you talking about like? Be, yeah, because you're Persian, this, right? You're superior. You're so more you, academic. She's and intellectual, trying to dox me. Right? These these ex Muslims like you're you acad- are involved with mean? doxing. Tell at least okay. at least Nuria. She just asked smarter? for my address. Are different she races asked, smarter? At least Nuria didn't oh, okay, ask post pictures of are, my family. Are, they were at least blurred. she didn't post. Right. At least she didn't post my them, children. She's actually better than you. That I at least she's better than you. Nuria them. only wants my address right. for God knows what reason. Nuria, after getting oh, humiliated. All right, but we gotta go yeah. to the next one. I'm Nuria, sorry. look at that. I don't, man. Yeah. She wants my address uh, for what? See, look. She's, your, uh, these are, wife posted it publicly. I my address? It. No, your 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 picture with. Showing yeah, that she so doesn't if, wear, she doesn't cosplay uh, with. Nikah, you thought are appropriate uh, to it. look, Jafet. This is it. you. I blurred even the handle. I blurred the handle. Right, this is you. Gotta go to the next. Yeah, one. yeah. That's you. All right. You're the <laughs> Asian you. provocateur. You're the dishonor. <laughs> the word is El right. Okay, I gotta yeah. do this. Daniel brought a prop. Okay, this is from Dr. Omar, Muslim theist says Daniel. In two, oh, we got that one. Uh, this one from No Name. Thank you for your uh, super chat. He said. Uh, Jafed's argument, they say, in his feminine voice, <laughs> says, goes as follows. Daniel isn't conceding to liberal attacks against Islam like me. Therefore, Daniel is bad. And they say, no kidding, Javad. That's why the all Muminim love Daniel and all Munificween hate him. PhD from Quiznos. I'll give you a chance to respond. It's true so, that. Go ahead. So, what's the exact question again? I mean, is there a question there? They're saying that, uh, in a lot more words, they're saying that Daniel, that you're saying that Daniel isn't conceding to liberal attacks against I mean, Islam. That's not, that hasn't been my that hasn't been my uh, attack against him in this entire discussion. I even conceded at the very beginning that the people watching this might think that my religious views are completely anathema to them. I'm okay with that. I'm okay being an academic and an Islamic intellectual in an, a, a university setting where people don't want to listen to my views. That's okay. There are going to be a small minority that do, and I'm okay with that. But what I'm not okay with being is being a liar and a smear merchant, someone who constantly attacks every other voice out there and personality in order to get likes and subscribes, following around, going with a camera, and just as a nasty person overall. I mean, you are a nasty person who name calls. You're like Trump. You use. You, I okay, mean, you're so created what is, like what is Trump. The point you of have this? like Jahil North and all these. What names is the that point of this? With. What is the I mean, point? Yeah, is, your friend just, Jahil just North. Um, your friend and now here Jahil you are North. again, talking to your audience. No, you're insulting me so I can talk. Um, yeah, and you just yeah. lie. I'm a cheater. You're just a, you're just a you you're posting pictures of my family. This one coming in from. All right, Daniel. I'll give you a chance. You guys have to stop. Um, see, attacking each other in every question. Daniel, if you want to no, give a I'll, quick rebuttal. Yeah, just have him recite Ayatul Kursi. Just the, f- the third word. Can you do it? I gave you the first two. Yeah, you can't. This one coming, you can't do it. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. You, you clearly one, can. This is a humiliating. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this one coming in from Jimbo Jimbo. Let's see. Yeah, okay, Jimbo, I got to ban you, man. You can't use anything like that. Josh says Daniel's wife literally has videos with her face on his channel. This is absolutely ridiculous. On Okay. Ahead, no, uh, she doesn't. She's all. She's wearing a face veil. People don't understand the yeah, concept of niqab. Cosplay. Yeah. You guys pretend to be religious. You actually yeah, we send, pretend. You don't you, even know Ayatul entire, Kursi. You call yourself you, an Islamic oh, yeah. scholar. You call oh, yourself yeah. Islamic scholar. Yeah. Do you know you how many that, rakat? Yeah. How many rakat are in Surat Al Fatiha, Oh yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah. How many can you answer it? Oh uh, yeah, I wonder how many rakat are in Wudu. Right? Yeah. Can you? Like, yeah. Mean, can yeah, you yeah, answer that? Those are relevant for someone who doesn't know. What surah? What surah is Ayatul Kursi? No, what surah? What surah is Ayatul Kursi? What surah? Sorry, you guys. I hate to do this. Jimbo says, we got the Elorante says, Javad, please be balanced. Don't go overboard. I don't know what they are referring to. Jimbo, Jimbo. Um, says MAGA. Okay. Dr. Omar, Muslim Thea says, Daniel, do you now denounce the Al Qaeda? People you were promoting, yes or no, before you qualify your answer, if you have to qualify it. Can you respond without insulting God, yes, please? I have denounced Al Qaeda. I have denounced ISIS. This is a smear that certain people, because they have certain views, religious views, that they are 
uh, supporters of terrorism. That is the claim that smear merchants like Jafed use to get people into trouble. That's the problem. He is he's a Fed, so he makes this claim that oh, because you have certain religious views, that means you support Al Qaeda or you support ISIS. This is exactly CVE. This is exactly what we um, have been discussing about in this debate. So Javad continues to smear. I got it. We, and, with, without without Javad being insulted. Okay. Uh, I do want to just, Javad, do you, are you sure? I mean, we've got a lot of questions. Do you, do you have to like 10 seconds of a rebuttal? Do you want to do like. So Daniel is always like he, 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 he spreads lies and this, he says okay, that. This is just wait, 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 no, wait, wait, this is, no, 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 it's not, it's I, not, it's not, I, it's not no, an insult. I'm it's sorry. Insult. You, I just you want, started okay. with the wrong, I can't, it's just going to be forever. You can't start with that. And then like, I just. Muhammad seven one two three says Daniel, did you see Javad's debate with Robert Spencer? Would love to see Daniel debate Spencer. Make it happen, James. Yeah, I'd love to debate Robert Spencer, but he keeps running away. I've challenged him multiple times. So uh, yeah, Robert Spencer, if you're listening to this, why don't you face me in debate? You write articles about me all the time, uh, multiple like uh, was it like five articles now that you've written about me? So why can't you debate me? You can't face me like a man so this is another person that's in the Let's same ballpark the as one. hey Best. hey james i just need to deal with a slander that he said against me that's it i'm not going to insult him i just need to correct the record just real quick 10 seconds 10 eight, seconds please eight okay. seconds okay so here daniel says that because i'm calling him an extremist that means i'm calling the government on him that is false i even oppose the fact that these are my these are i'm even against twitter bans against daniel that's his right here is when he was banned all the way in 2021 against Twitter. This and is said, not yes, relevant to the Q&A. I, found this, out, he has I do not support such bans. This is, there, you just said it right now. These and are I said, Q however, this, this, this is does a not Q&A, not crimes. your presentation. I consider, for example, Hakeem This is not your extremist. presentation. Yet as far no. as I know, he has not committed any crime or call to that. In fact, one of his videos with Mo Hijab, he seemed uncomfortable when Hijab was suggesting that. Therefore, I would not only support report someone like Hakeem. Mm. Uh, I would not yeah, only so not this is, He's reading out like a written statement. This is Q&A. Ten seconds has passed. Ten seconds. Yeah. But this is, is a big lie. This is a big ten lie. Ten seconds is passed. Right. Just because I call you an extremist doesn't mean that I'm saying that you should passed. get arrested. Eight seconds. All right. This one from Bubblegum Gun says, Javad, what's objectively wrong with terrorism? I don't care about your opinion. Tell me an objective argument. Else, this all whining that Daniel isn't LGBT. I don't understand the question, but as far as what's wrong with terrorism. It goes against uh, both scripturally and from a reason-based perspective. Uh, we have reasons to obviously be opposed to that terrorism, as well as waging wars of aggression and, and this sort of thing. I mean, that's all I could say to that. That's a long question. To, that's a long answer if I wanted to give that. I don't think it's really relevant either. One quick question that I still don't understand, something that escapes me still. Was, it, was there an accusation that Daniel was hang that him and his wife went to a gay bar at the start of the debate what was that no no there well, that, that was I a get that? hypothetical that was a hypothetical oh. we were saying that okay. if i, I was, was making the a hypothetical okay. gotcha. that if we found gotcha. a picture i'm not trying to yeah. make a point i'm just i was like why did that come up i was like was that an accu accusation elorante says hmm, i think i am going to gish gallop away from here soon this is a high school fight wow which is long overdue. Elorante is a simp. And the beef. Elorante is a is a simp. You need to be These a the, Chad like James. These are the names <laughs> Thank they use you. for everybody. Let's see. Let's, this is the super sticker. Thanks, Ronnie Elsanon. Seriously, we appreciate your support. As well as Mr. Uptight says, James, a woman with face veil may take off her face veil when she is with close family. Showing a family pic without knowing the context is doxing. Uh, let's, we've gone public, over this like a billion times. Public profile. Um, let's see. Elorante says, taste of what? Taste of Daniel James. He is one of a kind, bro. What does that mean? Elorante says, no slides, no debate. All right. Shizu, how we, he was says feels like both sides are angling for some advantage and since neither side can get it both refuse to engage this was during the phase of the debate <laughs> where we were debating on whether or not javad uh whether or not his slides would show minecraft player says this needs subway surfers in corner too boring subway surfers 
Is that a new thing? Let's see. Valorante says karma. Omar Suleiman's prayers answered. Who's that? What does this mean? You guys know? He's the, he's the guy that Daniel used to work for and has then started smearing after he left. Yeah, smearing with oh. uh, facts and video evidence and that you didn't say oh, anything Jafed's, when you were there. Jafed seems like he's helping you, Jafed. Seems. I don't, I'm not making a claim, but seems like I just a, make lot, a lot of your talking points are coming from Yakin employees. That's why I'm saying. Association, affiliation, yeah, just, like I, 60 degrees fits, of separation. Just, this is your complete fits. Hey, here's strategy. a question for you, Javad. Can you be oh, a Muslim God. and reject the five question. daily prayers like Khalil? Yeah. Can you be yeah. a Muslim and reject the five daily prayers like your friend Khalil? He, yeah, Can you be a Muslim believe, and reject so you, the five daily prayers? Answer that question. Yeah. Yes or no? Do you believe in ethnic yes or no? cleansing? Yes Shia or no? Israelis? No, you, I don't. You, no, I don't. You supported Can you answer? You Can you answer that? Can you, you answer? Can you be a Muslim so, and not, not pray the five prayers and reject monkey. the five daily prayers? Respond. Sorry, guys. I hate to do this. Can't there answer so any questions. Bubblegum Gun says Javad's argument is, quote, Daniel is racist and a bigot. I'm guessing you wouldn't agree with that, Javad, if you want to respond. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I'm a racist. You know, put tried to any kind of evidence. Of... Do it again. So Who's I me? think Daniel's grift has made him grift in different extremist directions. I can't say I know what he ideologically believes because a lot of it is grift. And that grift means that he goes towards Islamic extremists on the one hand and then uh, white nationalists on the other. And you can just watch his interviews with the, the, his, his love talks with those three uh, white nationalists in which he didn't even need to have a dial a debate moderator. So what kind of debate was it? And they all said it was a friendly conversation and they enjoyed it. And so this one, I think he has deeply so uh, racialist views. So um, let me respond. And yeah, so I think they're problematic views there. Let me respond. JN says, let me hey, respond. Daniel, really fast. Um, go ahead. Yeah, really respond. White nationalists at least have the decency not to post pictures of my children in the debate. That's why it doesn't blurred. need a moderator. Public unlike profile, you. Blurred. Unlike you. Unlike Public you. Public profile, <laughs> blurred. To show the grift of, of you and Ola, yeah. who are part yeah, yeah. of my, my, my two year old was grifting. <laughs> blurred. Completely blurred. Three, my three year old was grifting. I hate to do this. JN says, shout out. Thanks for your kind words, JN. That means a lot. Thanks, Fia Vasconcelos. Celos. Thank you for your kind words as well. That This was, now we're in the phase of when the stream uh, we restarted. Zaid Barakat says, don't report modern day debate. Don't let Javad the snake escape. Wow. <laughs> the faces you guys have made tonight. Dr. Dr. Omar Muslim Thea says, I paid for two previous super chats. Will it be? They, yes, they will be us. M. Sheikh says, Nobody is listening to your garbage, Jafed. Attacking and insulting people's wives and kids. You might be getting a PhD, but what you need is manner. So I'll give you a chance to respond, Jafed. I never attack your kids. Javad, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, that's easy. He's dishonest. Dan likes to name call. And he name calls uh, imams, muftis. He actually calls Yasser Qadi Yasser. Like Sheikh Yasser Qadi calls him Yasser. <laughs> Imam Omar Suleimani calls him Omar. He's a very dis disrespectful man. Um, first name basis with everyone. Um, but I never, ever insulted his kids. I, yeah. I did say you just show their pictures. Is, you know, a fraud. You just show, yeah, just go after my wife. Lasna, what a parcel. In fact, She's what a, a coward! Like this. what a coward! Part of the organization. What a coward! And so yeah, I do call out that. They what a coward to go this. after a man's wife. Real life. Why doesn't he move to? What a coward to go after. Why not? What a coward to, to insult a man's wife. If your family's not <laughs> Show moving, then leave and them. You're children. living. You're in Darul Kufar right now. You're a coward. Leave. Stand coward. up to your beliefs and go. Cry about it, Jafed. Cry. <laughs> this one from. Also, we put a new poll so in sad. the chat. Look at him pouting. This is the first time ever. He's talking to his audience still. I mean, this is unfair. You should tell him to stop, James. All right. I just unmuted him so that he uh, we have a poll in the chat on whether or not you're a Muslim, atheist or Christian. And for the first time ever, majority, 52 percent of our uh, audience is Muslim. So welcome. We hope you feel welcome. Thanks for being with us, folks. This one from M. Sheikh says nobody is listening. We got that one. Uh, Richard Delhouse says Daniel. Okay, that's weird. Uh, pseudonym says J for Javad picks were blurred. No crying, Daniel, please. Um, oh, okay. We've been through this a billion times on the pictures. It's not going to age well. 
posting um, it, going after a man's geez. wife in a debate. Like this is unprecedented. She's part of your organization. How sleazy. She's key How sleazy. part of your organization. What Stop trying sleazy. to live. Yeah, she's, she's a not a part. random person. She does some she's, classes she on homeschooling. She's a key she's part. She's part of your program. What a sleazy She, she comes scumbag. on your YouTube channel scumbag. and she justifies pig. regressive, Oink, misogynist pig. views. You're a she, coward. You go after a man's wife and children. You're the coward. You're, you're never going to live this yeah. down. These clips yeah, yeah, are going to follow one, you for the rest of your one, life, inshallah. You're the one who propagates <laughs> These clips are going to haunt you for the rest of your life, inshallah. Your, these clips of you not being able this. to recite Ayatul Kursi is going to follow you for the rest of your life, Sorry about that. Let's see. And Dalhaus, it's true. I'm not reading your super chats. Dalhaus, you've been using some really bad language in the chat. Seriously, in fact, I'm just going to ban you now because you just don't forgot that i mentioned i was going to do that i do want to say folks we cannot take any more questions so don't submit any more questions this one from pseudonym says and public till to debate no more cry please daniel okay jimbo jimbo we got that amir says J jafed the type of dude to pretend to be asleep in the car so his homies can carry him back home Okay, is this true, Jafet? Have you done this? No, I'm kidding. Okay, this one from pseudonym saying says Daniel's the prophet for Islam. Um, Jafet, go. Let's see. Man, do you really have to read out all of the insulting? Yeah, yes, you're right. By his, These are pretty lame. Sorry, multitude yeah, of yeah. drones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's see. We're going to take it. serious Cry questions. It. it is there true. Just talking to his audience again. Cry about it. Cheating. This one from. Mr. Peter. Uptight Cry says, about it. I, I have to, you know, I, one thing to keep in mind is that Daniel, like probably even right after this debate, if he does an after show, will be talking to his audience. It's cheating. So like, James, but he shouldn't yeah. do it during the debate. I mean, it's cheating. I, and going forward, you should, you should like tell him that that's part of the rules. From, I would like for it. his focus to be here on the debate. But let's go to the next one. PHX576 says, Jafet, let's see, why? I mean, so, yeah, you have to I, mute I do want to say, folks, Jafet can't sent handle in a super the, chat the that questioning. That's the problem. Javad, Jafet, uh, like, that's not very meaningful. We're looking for meaningful <laughs> questions. As well as if you say, you know, blah, 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 you know. The debate Daniel stopped being meaningful when XYZ, he started posting pictures of my kids. Fad or whatever. Mr. Uptight says, uh, Javad made daniel's wife's name public if his argument is that she is part of the organization and therefore fair game he should show where she herself made it public would yes. javad be okay yes. with his wife's name yes. being shared publicly yes if she yes. was a part of the organization yes. and yes. promoted on yes. the youtube channel yes she's literally a youtube doxer host. she promotes dox hit her dox uh, my wife she actually is dox the one that my he uses children. to justify his misogyny you are and they propagate fed. this conservative fundamentalist form of islam on women hate women hating you are interpretation that is justified by her so this she's is you part, part, this she is you. Been in this debate in fact you should actually bring her in this debate she my. sits next to you on the youtube if she had Look nothing to do with your youtube that wouldn't be i wouldn't mention that at all but she's <laughs> literally on your youtube so why don't you bring her in why don't you bring her in and talk is, about it? Like you Japan do that anyways, and she used her to justify yes, these kind of yes, misogynistic red pill ideologies. You need yes, to. Yes, he is that, a fit. Right? So uh, this is just a, this is just yes, a is. tactic because he lost the debate. He lost the previous <laughs> debates. And so he's desperately trying to salvage. Is he a fit? And I'm is just trying to show the cognitive yes, dissonance yes, yes. of they live one way. They literally. Pre preach that don't go to Not school long as education, <laughs> and yet all, James can't educated. hold it in. And they advertise that, that she's Harvard educated, and they James can't even hold that. it in. That's the James hypocrisy. can't this, hold it in. James this can't. one from oh, wait, let me Tarantula. respond. Let me respond. Uh, Mr. Let me James, respond, James. On Islam, James. These debates. James. Well, tonight James. wasn't really on Islam. <laughs> let so me I respond. It's hard to. Uh, I mean, there let were some things related to Islam. Let me respond. But let me respond. Uh, this Let one me from, respond. Yeah, my wife's uh, so name is not public. Is um Khalid is not her actual directly. name. You dox this my one wife. From Dr. Omar, Muslim you theist. dox my Daniel, wife, you sleazy slime ball Mulana scumbag. Mulana Salim of molesting her. Mulana Salim pled guilty. Mm -hmm. Three more women said mm -hmm. they were molested. You supported Mulana Salim, though. Do you now apologize to the women? Yeah, yeah so uh, he did dox my wife because my organization does not have my wife's name 
on the website or on she's any a, documents. He's she's doxed a public my figure wife. on YouTube. She's a public she, yeah, figure on YouTube. I'm a public figure too. Does that mean you can go through my legal name and my record? That's doxing. That's the definition why, of doxing. Why, why would um, that be Khaled, doxing? You said her legal name. You yeah. dox. This is not for you to respond to. This is just a okay. point to responding to your previous claim when I was muted by James. So then as for the question, Molana Salim, yeah, anyone can claim to be uh, molested. You know, this is the grift of feminism. And we saw so many false accusations throughout uh, the past, um, you know, six years, seven years with this Me Too uh, frenzy, many proven false accusations. So if you are a, a figure of prominence within a community, you become a target for false accusations. So if someone falsely accused uh, or someone accuses Jafed of raping them or molesting them, maybe like in the ER, then would we just believe that Jafed has molested a two-year-old or a three-year-old? Would, would, we, would we accept that, that Jafed has been raping babies in the ER? No, we would say, where is the evidence? That's how we would approach it. Um, so this so idea I don't that accept I, if someone her came, name if someone claimed that Jafet, literally on the Harvard if someone Crimson claimed website. that Jafet, it's literally on the Harvard Crimson website, you, you, go, you can have multiple wives in Islam. How do you know that that wife is guys, my Um Khalid? Huh? Questions. How do you Dr. know that? Dr. Omar, we got you that lying. One. Oh, actually, you got caught. Second one. Dr. Omar, Muslim Thea says you, Daniel, have been accused of supporting Al Qaeda supporters in this debate. Do you now condemn those individuals? Yes or no? Before you qualify, if your answer. If you want to qualify, give you a chance to respond on whether or not you still support. Uh, they say I have condemned of... Al Qaeda. I've condemned ISIS. These individuals are being smeared as Al Qaeda supporters. Show the evidence. Jafed didn't show any evidence. He just made claims. He just cited these YouTube smear mongers. They call me an ISIS support. He Jafed calls me an ISIS supporter. So <laughs> this is a, when I've clearly condemned ISIS. So gotcha. this you is just smear. The next one. This one from Chocolate Walla says, Paris Turin. MPAC's DC director was literally seeking a job with Homeland Security. Later, he took a job at the org that formed CVE. Javad, I think that they're trying to insinuate that you're a Fed. Yeah, right? again, it's by association and affiliation, right? So six steps. So I need to be responsible for everything that MPAC did ever since the start of, its, uh, of it being an organization. And meanwhile, Daniel has no responsibility for the things that he accuses his own organization later once he's fired and going against them for his own grift. This is a double standard. The events happened while you were there at Yakin. Meanwhile, I was nowhere near MPAC when those things happened. All right. So this is a big double standard. Now, as far as them being involved in, I already told you they were involved in CVE to say that let's get rid of those aspects that are bad. Now, you can disagree with that, but it's not policing, surveilling and all that kind of stuff that Daniel. So he's a smear monger and liar. So like, to from... respond to respond to him calling no, me, no me a liar. Doesn't need to respond. No, no, to that. Yes, I do. There's I no do response. Need to respond to that. The no, response is that I then actually, to... when I found really out that Yaqeen is practicing me. something unethical and distorting Islam, I criticize him. You, you are not them. criticizing MPAC. You're defending MPAC. That's no, the difference. So, what principled. kind of analogy no. are you making? I've been principled. This is, I said that I disagree with certain things they've done. So, so then you agree with my critique of MPAC? I'm not a like you and go. You agree with my critique about MPAC? So you yeah, agree with I, my critique of MPAC? I do not. That they no, supported not CVE. No. Okay, then what you, do you condemn about them? What do you already, condemn about MPAC? I already, okay, perfect. What, so what do you let, condemn? So now let me speak. You keep interrupting me. Condemn so MPAC. Now, yeah. So like, unlike you, who goes ballistic on Yakin, going from one year saying uh, Umar Suleiman is a great scholar, unrivaled. He's in a tough I position. never said that. You're you, just, oh, I have the quote. I said no, he's I unrivaled. No, he's no, no, unrivaled. No, no. You, you have this. He's unrivaled. Where did I say he's unrivaled? unrivaled? You know, he yeah, okay. Exactly. Must okay. move so you, you think that been... must move on from your dumb... Yeah. No, no. You said mm -hmm. that he is... Oh, actually, let's get yeah, this. Yeah, I addressed oh, You want it. that? Let's, no, no. Let's yeah, get the exact I said, quote. I praised him. I praised let's him. Let's get the yeah. exact quote. Big gotcha. I praised someone and then I found out other information about the person and actions uh -huh. that he committed after I was after I made that gotta statement. Move. And I clarified. How is this I a gotcha? So sure. stupid. Jimbo yeah. Jimbo oh, says Okay, they say uh Javad is the Clinton backed globalist. Daniel is the Kroiper who represents and lifts up the neglected, abandoned white Muslims. Is this person trolling? Is this serious? Yeah, I'm not a racist. Like... I'm, I'm are. white Muslims, white Muslims Bosnian white Muslims, Turkish love, Muslims, well, Japanese Muslims, Indian again, Muslims, African Muslims, Cuban Muslims, Brazilian Muslims, Black Muslims. I love all of them. I love all of them. 
Go ahead, Javad. Right. I think that they were t attempting to target you, so I'll give you a chance to respond. So Daniel, uh, yeah, that's his white nationalist buddies who are uh, signaling that they understand his white nationalism. He goes with on a white nationalist, has his friendly chat, repeats that I love white people. That's the time to say I love black people when you're against a white nationalist person. That's the time not to reinforce that black people are more criminal or more violent or that they need religion more than white people. These are the things I, that you I said, I think Daniel. that they were attacking. The super chat was a go targeting you. I want to go to the next one. Um, what one was it? Where are we? Oh, yeah, Abdul Halim says, Daniel, people. is it true that the reason you always wear Bob? Am I saying it right? Is so because nice. your stones are too big for your pants. So there are they insane. Okay, Hitchens Boot says uh, James Daniel says YouTube took down your live chat except his stream also had Javad's slides with kids in them, and yet his live chat didn't get All taken right. down. Actually, I, I want to be as objective and fair as I can about this. I know that seems like a knockdown argument, but it isn't actually. Um, we don't know who did it, and so I don't want to indict Daniel's audience. Like I said, uh, most of them have been supportive. Most of the, the folks at Daniel's channel have been supportive. There are some critics, but we have critics at our own channel, too. Uh, the reason that this isn't a knockdown argument, though, is I thought about this as we were going. Sometimes YouTube will censor one channel's video even though the exact same video is on another channel and it doesn't get censored. So it could be, in other words, it might, you might be thinking like, Oh, if it was YouTube, then they would have taken down Daniel's live chat too. Well, not necessarily. Cause actually it's happened before where uh, YouTube demonetized one of Daniel's debates that he live streamed for modern day debate, but they didn't demonetize modern day debate. So it's just want to be clear and, uh, not indict anybody uh, when we don't know the answer. Elorante says, package Dr. Javad and brother Daniel and send them to Mars. I'm just kidding. Good heat, gentlemen. Kudos to you both sacrificing your mental health for us. It's not easy. Islam left the chat. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Dr. Omar Muslim Thea says, Daniel, was Joseph and Uncle Tom, we should probably not say the word Uncle T-O-M on stream either, says, was Joseph and Uncle T working for the king of Egypt? Yes or no? Was Esther a sellout for working for Persian Empire to help save Jewish people? Yes or no? I'll give you a chance to respond, Daniel. Working for the government doesn't make you an Uncle Tom. When you work for a corrupt government like the U.S. government that's actively involved with killing Muslims, surveilling Muslims, and trapping Muslims, involved with colonialism, involved with oppressing Muslims, involved with literal genocide and cultural genocide, that's what, make, what makes you an Uncle T or a native informant like Jafed. And so this is a really a moronic point. Just working for my claim was never that if you work for the government, there can be a, a pious government, an Islamic government, or even a non Muslim government that is still just. That's also possible, and Muslims can work for a just government. There's no contradiction in any in my point uh, against colonial uncle T's. This one coming in from let me see here. I've got a little glitch on my. Elorante says J Javad is not a liar. Disagree with his stances, but he is consistent. This one coming in from Sahid Lip Lifam uh, says people keep sending super chats that Javad should recite Ayat al Kursi for this to be covered in the Q and A. I don't know what this means. This one from Abdul so, uh, Halim's. James, Go ahead. I, I need to respond to what he said last because the, the, if your government is corrupt, so corrupt that you can't work for that government to stop its policy. So if a government is corrupt and oppressing your Muslims, just like Esther example that he, that person literally gave you, 
that's a reason to work with them and try to stop that harm. And that's exactly what MPAC has done. Now, if you think that that's not possible, then you should stop paying taxes to that government and leave. Go to Afghanistan, keep your word, and leave the country. You can't have it both ways. Either you stay here and pay taxes, and then you should have a say in how to use those taxes and prevent harm from your American Muslim community, in which case you need representation in the government. If not, leave. You just sit isolated with no responsibility, no accountability in Texas, in your uh, you know basement, and stay whatever you want and harm whatever whoever you want because you're getting paid by these you know maybe you're an agent provocateur who knows but you're at least pay, getting paid by your grift and if so you're not if you're, release, so you have no your, disagreement with your, the US government if you have a disagreement for the, with the US government you have to move so you have no disagreements with the US government you're paying have, taxes so why don't you have, move from the US because uh -oh. you're in the I US and paying taxes because that I must vote, mean that you have to agree with everything vote? with the government do you believe does? in voting do you believe in no. voting I don't vote for so you don't you vote. Know, so you don't believe in versus another you believe it. So do you believe it's haram many people to vote? don't vote. Many people so you don't, don't vote. You don't believe it. You believe it's haram to vote. There's an ikhtilaf on that issue. OK, so you don't yeah. vote. You just say, here's my taxpayer money. Do what no, you answer want the with question. It. Go you, harm. Go, if you disagree go with the government, you move. Aggression. Javad, you agree with everything that the U.S. government does, right? Otherwise, because you should I, move. No, because I can actively work against it. I can w speak against it. I well, can you left my MPAC. Government. You were with vote. MPAC for. Yeah. You were with MPAC yeah, because for. I can still use my voice as an academic and speak. Yeah, out I can use my voice too. I have a website. Yeah, it's then, called Muslim yeah, Skeptic. Then, I use my voice so to then, advocate so for then why justice. Why would you be opposed to voting? I, I to advocate vote for justice. I try to influence no, you don't. the, the you U.S. Don't society no, you by don't. advocating for you justice. Yeah. Just like you advocate with voting, I advocate with. My website with my activism. Why don't you do that in Afghanistan? You don't need internet. You why don't, don't need, you? you just why don't internet. you? Why don't why you do I your activism? Why don't you barbaric. do your why activism from overseas? You're you disagree with the U.S. government. You're the the, the, your tax dollars are going to the U.S. Work with government. The government. I can actually. Yeah, I know. I know you actively I work for the feds. Back. We know that. Oh, That's yeah, why you're never, you're a pig. Again, a That's why. Again, a lot. Let's go to the next one. Do appreciate it. Smear merchant. This one from. Need to do this, gentlemen. How, how Random much more commenter this? says Javad is a Clinton backed. Okay, we got that. One zero 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 one. It'd be nice if I could move to the U.S. As, to Afghanistan without as, the U.S. bombing uh, it, like no, like uh, MPAC promoted. What, what happened? It would be you'd great be if I could move to Afghanistan without one, zero, zero, it being one bombed. Says, Ask them both to recite Surah An Nas. <laughs> um. Yeah, guy. Javad, do you feel like doing this? Yeah, go ahead, Javad. I don't need. Or we're gonna go to the next one. Random. Go ahead. Do you know Surat Anas? Do you know Surat Anas? Do you know Surat Anas? Do you really think that I don't know that I lead khutbas? Yeah, I think you don't know that. I lead khutbas. No, you don't. Prayer. No, you don't. Then you should. It should be easy to recite it. It should be easy to recite it. Blabbing. Okay, got that. Famo says Javad. We got like basically all of the same over and over. Dr. Amar, Muslim Thea says, Daniel is a liar, period. According to the Quran, liars will go to hell. Worst form of lying is slander, which Daniel does according to all. Supporters of liars like Daniel hurt their afterlife. Daniel will give you a chance to respond. Yeah, go watch the latest video on my channel with Soheib Webb. He was also one of these liberals who accused me of lying about him. And I showed the receipts and he had to run away. So Jafed at least has All the right, we testicular. Go to the next one. This one, this one from Chocolate Walla says Jafed, you um, said MPAC was funded only by Muslim donors, but one of the biggest donors was the Tides Foundation. They push homosexual behavior in the mm. Middle East. What about Prophet Lot's Dawa? Give you a chance to respond. I never said that they are only funded by Muslims. I said they're not funded by the federal government. And my position specifically was funded by Muslim donors. That's what I said. So Daniel made the lie that I was funded. He, this, is, he, this is why he's dishonest. He could just say I was wrong and I lied and you're fed for other reasons. He could say that, but he's not honest enough for that. So his claim was that you are funded directly by Homeland Security. That is false. You said that MPAC is paid by Homeland Security. That's where your salary comes from. That is false. So as far as the Tides Foundation, yes, they support things uh, over there, but that doesn't mean that MPAC is supporting those things. Okay? Just like Daniel has okay with allyship with white nationalists, he literally says that we should ally with you on what we agree on. Similarly, you can ally with people on the left. This is unfortunate that Daniel has shifted the entire discourse by his troll-like behavior and pushing everybody in the other direction. Okay, he himself, <laughs> he himself insults, allies James. with... So you what you so you're cutting me off and I have a pig. You Daniel, literally have a pig if you want to give a quick response, cry about it, and then we'll go to the next one. 
Yeah, so this, again, is a, a misrepresentation of my claim. My claim is that... I have the, the quote. ...that MPAC benefits financially from uh, its connections to the federal government. That's because of its legitimacy that it gains from being affiliated with the federal government, with having a president that's literally taking selfies with um, presidents and presidential candidates. So it benefits financially from the government. Um, and it's involved, it has been involved, as you have admitted, um, with get, applying for grants and getting grants from the government, specifically for policing the Muslim community. So that's all my claim Lie. was. It's backed that's by facts. This one, they literally this oppose one policing. Elrante. They work with the government to oppose policing. If you read Why certain you verses lie? of the Quran, you're yeah. a radical. You have this to be one from they, that's neutralized. False. That's false. They didn't even Dr. say that. They saw the screenshots. They no. saw the articles. Yeah. No, this one, false. they say, Dear Dr. Javad, this is Elorante, since they will run with this plot. I'm asking if you could please recruit. I'm asking to hear Quran. Forget about Daniel. Um, <laughs> okay, looks like Javad shaking his head. No, this one from yeah. Richard. No, <laughs> folks, if you say anything like ethnic slurs in the live chat, you know you're going to get banned. So He's begging you, like please. One zero zero one zero something. to both is slander haram, is calumny haram. I would guess both of you would say yes. Okay. Fair. This one from M. Sheikh says, Javad knows, uh, might know Ayat al Kursi, but he cannot recite. Okay. Same <laughs> thing we've heard. These uh, are the people trying to help this Javad. Famo says, Javad, how did you feel sitting there uh, in your room? Uh, let's see. Oh, they yeah, said, what does it room, matter to you another what man's Daniel's family. wife does? I think this is covered earlier in the debate. Yeah, Javad, covered. if you want to respond, you can uh, really quick because we may have to wrap up soon. Yeah, so, go ahead and talk more about okay. my wife. Uh, you know what? That's real manly. This That's... kind of nonsense uh, about reciting. Really verse. chivalrous. I, mean, I could do that. The, the thing is that they are going to like hyperfixate on every little, uh, you know, uh, inflection point and that's what they want to do this is part of their game when they can't figure out an argument can't traditionalists recite, will say oh it. look he can't recite the Quran in this specific way or not so yeah, you can't look, recite at all uh, Surah Hayat al-Kursi is in Surah al-Baqarah so I don't have wow. it memorized okay it's the longest Surah in the Quran but uh, you know as far as making the Quran a toy I mean you asked me to recite uh, you know Surah al-Nas I mean I could do that but they're going to just hyper fixate <laughs> on my pronunciation and you know but we can do that Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس مالك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب رب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وكب ومن شر نفاسات في الأقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد We could keep going on and on I don't have the best pronunciation I didn't want to pronounce it because do that because of that reason but I speak Arabic I speak it with an accent I mostly focus on reading Arabic I have better Arabic than Daniel He might have better pronunciation than me as far as reciting Gotta go to the next one is not a I hate okay. to do this, but this one from Dr. Omar, Muslim theist, says, "Got that one." JN says for Daniel, "What do Mac, what do Mad Collies, do to Boots?" Please tell me I didn't just read something inappropriate. Huh. This one from Muhammad huh. S. If you want to respond, Daniel? I'll give you a quick response. They lick them. Okay. This one from Muhammad S. I didn't see a question. Let me know if you have one. Alexander says, Daniel, you let your wife go to the store alone? Yeah, that's that's allowed. That's permissible. Alexander says, Dan admits his wife only wears niqab sometimes. Yeah, when she's sitting in a family gathering, yeah, she doesn't wear it with relatives. That's true. When we're in the, when the, with our kids. <laughs> Elorante says, Daniel makes uh, money out of Muslim audience. That's just a fact. I hope he does well. What can I say? M Mahum. Yeah, like every, anyone who is involved with um, activism, they need funding. Every organization. Release your financial funds. records. Yeah, so we have. Release your just, financial records. Yeah, so we can't do that. Why? Because mm -hmm. we'll get doxxed.
Well, our children, like the MS team doesn't want their children yeah. on your, YouTube. Your wife put the, her own yeah. picture so, up well, for everybody to see on sorry, a public. You lied sorry, about Jafet. that. You and, doxed yeah, you lied my family. About that. James so, even admitted like, this is, that it was a public profile <laughs> photo. And I am the yeah, one who blurred I can out. Come, you can I can find, the same people lies, can find pictures of your family, people. private photos yeah. of your family and members, and then allowed. post them publicly. Yeah, they're public photos because of if tagging. Like, you haven't made them private on Facebook, and then some loser like you finds them and posts them publicly. I didn't show anyone. We can do that. People can do that. I don't want anyone to do this. I don't want I don't want anyone to go and... Are they part I don't of my organization? Anyone, I don't want anyone. You're talking about people. You're talking about I don't want anyone to go okay. through Next your question. family's Mahmoud Facebook pages. Mahmoud says, great job, James. I side with Daniel. These liberal Muslims want to whitewash Islam to appeal to Westerners, unlike him who preaches true Islam. Uh, do you want a quick pithy response, Javad? Do you feel compelled? Do you need one? Okay, really quick and short and pithy. What was the exact point they said? I mean, uh, they're just saying that you're trying to water down Muslim Islam to make it more appealing to Westerners. You know, that is not the point of the debate today. Even James if you don't like, like my religious views, really... that's irrelevant. The point is that you can be a deviant and even be a sincere deviant. So even if you take me as the worst deviant that ever lived, at least I'm not a serial liar and smear merchant. And so Khaled. Daniel... All right, Khaled Das says... You both have decent talking points, but for the love of goodness, both your Arabic pronunciations are horrible. Wow. Oh, yeah. So uh, uptight. Say, Arabic debate. pronunciation is not a sign of the truth. What is, is actually understanding the Arabic and, and being able to read the classical sources, which I assure you I can do better than Daniel. Aller, Alexander says, Daniel, why do you have a Haram pig toy? Is this true? Is this Haram, Daniel? No, stuffed animals for little children are not haram. There might be ikhtilaf on that. He literally probably bought it for this debate. He bought it for this debate. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you did. It no, fits you. It fits you, right? You bought it for the debate. It's, a, it's funny, Walmart. right? James kept laughing it. at you. Both. You debated it, right? You, you bought this it one, for the debate, right? This what if I did? Like, what, is the, yeah, what did. does that prove? <laughs> yeah, because it shows you're a childish kid. That's what it shows. All right, come on. Alarante says in Joe Rogan's voice and then all heck broke loose. Manim says, Javad, the word is Ilah. What is the fourth word? I'm not doing this uh, joking. Uh, this, this, uh, we're making the Quran into a joke. I, I haven't memorized Surah 2. It's the longest you're the Surah joke. of the Quran. Yeah, you're the joke, Daniel. You're the one joke of Children, the Children. Like, my everybody... three, my, my five year old okay. has memorized it. Aziz okay. says, suicide bombing is Haram, prohibited. Some Ikhwanis, Al Qaeda, ISIS, Hezbollah, and some Shias support this deviant, innovated practice. I completely reject suicide bombing and terrorism. We have an article on MuslimSkeptic.com titled, Is Jihad the Same as Terrorism? Undoing Two Decades of Anti-Muslim War Propaganda. It makes our position very clear. We condemn all terrorism in all its forms and terror groups like ISIS do, and Al-Qaeda. Do, do, you, do you condemn This is not Q&A for Wan? you. Do you, sh do you condemn Sheikh Show me that for show suicide, me that he show me that bombing? he show me that he encourages attacking civilians. Show me that. Prove that. But well, okay, so you're okay with suicide Prove bombing if, 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 you're, if you're okay with Sheikh, suicide bombing? No, I just said I rejected it. I just said we condemn it. But if you can prove that Sheikh Al Alwan prove that he says yes, you can attack civilians, I'll say I condemn Sheikh Al Alwan. How about okay. that? Is that a deal? Prove right. it. How, okay. How about this? How about if I can prove to you that they use a sheikh that you are connected to for saying that you can kill Shia as uh, lay, lay persons because they're unbelievers? Is that something I condemn that? that? Condemn that? Okay, yes, so then why don't I you condemn the people? Why don't you? Because I don't consider I don't consider don't Shia consider... non-Muslims. Yeah, but I don't why don't consider you condemn Shia the people? But why don't you condemn? The I don't people support who... any terrorism so, so against anyone. Don't... Yeah, you can say that. Non-Muslim, Muslim. But you literally <laughs> support the sheikhs that Al Qaeda and no, ISIS which sheikh? Support which sheikh? I just told you, uh, Sheikh Al Alwan is cited you just by Zarqawi. Show me, show, is... show me where he. Okay. Yeah, you can cite anyone. A terrorist okay, can cite so anyone. Have... That doesn't mean that that sheikh supports terrorism. Show me where Sheikh okay. Al Alwan supports terrorism. You can't answer that. Literally. Show Zarqawi me where he says, supports. I'm show you show right me now. where he supports, and I'll condemn him. You, I'm literally telling you right now, he says, Zarqawi says, there are scholars who have spoken of lay Shias as unbelievers like, and then dot, 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 Sheikh Suleiman al-Alwan. 
Okay. No, no, yeah, there, there are is, many scholars that who, who consider Shia to be non-believers. Yeah, and he's using this to That's not justify, terrorism. He's using that, Zarqawi is using that to kill Shias. That's literally the point of That's it. not on Sheikh al alwan That's not yes, on the Yes, it is. If you are the a only, Sheikh that's no. being used, you use... There are many There are many. There are many Shiuch. Yasser okay, Qadi, when Al, not when Yasser Ilhan Omar. When Ilhan Omar, somebody supports Ilhan Omar, you suddenly say that you can't cite uh, Ilhan Omar supportively. Otherwise, you're incriminated in all of her LGBTQ stuff, right? You said this about Sheikh Yasser Qadi. You said this about Omar Suleiman, that if they cite uh, if they speak approvingly of Ilhan Omar, then they're condemned for that because of their, their LGBTQ views. So why is it the fact that here, when it comes to extremists who, who are used to justify killing Shias, how come then the same logic does not apply, Daniel? You're bungling the logic. If it uh -huh. was, if it was um, in, in your analogy, mm -hmm. Sheikh Al Alwan is like Ilhan Omar. It's the opposite. The problematic person is the one who, Zarqawi, that you're saying is justifying killing Shia. He's problematic. Sheikh Al Alwan is not t saying kill Shia. So, so many, there are many Sunni scholars. There are many Sunni scholars. Way too much. I hate to do this, guys. There are many Sunni scholars that forever. make takfir of Shia. I don't agree with that, but that doesn't mean they support only killing Shia. Attacks against Daniel. Is that because you're mad? Uh, give you a chance to respond. Yes, it was definitely a very personal uh, debate that we had because Daniel attacks everyone personally. I didn't even want to have this debate. I just wanted to have the intellectual debate that we had last time. And if you compare my mannerisms in the last time, I never went personal last time. He's the one who Call continuously me a used name calling and insulting. Supporter of rapists, support, uh, and pedor time, supporter you know, of pederasty, reciprocate and act like him. Uh, An extremist. These are all terms that you out, used. But, uh, you you know, didn't, the reality is, is that you didn't use personal uh, for attacks, exposing him for the grifter that he is. <laughs> And he, he's talking about Al Alwan. Al he's a, his student is a 9/11 yeah. hijacker. He's, he's, he's brother-in-law to the leader of Al Qaeda. Yeah, None yeah. of this stuff is like relevant to Daniel. But it's like if you're associated with anyone that's even close to LGBTQ, oh my God, you know, stay away. Yeah. This one from Josh. Daniel. What a bungled Josh analogy. Josh says, Daniel, you exude very feminine energy. Mark Manley challenged you to a fight. Are you going to take it up, or do you think burning calories is haram? Give you a chance to respond. Who? I don't. I don't know. I don't. Mark who? Manley. I mean, Daniel's this one from Alarante. Tell me it's personal. Give me a break. They yeah, you call Roberts. me a supporter of rape and pederasty. You are, but those are your views. Oh yeah, so that's those not. Those are that's your not views. Per, I don't support no. rape and pederasty. You, you lying do. scumbag. You no, I don't. You, no, you I literally don't. were debating. See, this is Yeah, you so it's not personal. It's not personal, right? It's not personal. You can accuse me of being supporter of rape and pederasty. That's not personal. By your views, yeah, you're okay. A rape yeah. And you're a you you're say, a pig. Okay. Oink oink pig. Yeah. Oink oink. You can't even recite Oink oink. Thank you very much. This is what the debate has devolved to. This is what they say. Elaranti says Robert Spencer is actually Azamat from Borat. Okay. Zane Kazi says, question for Daniel. Omar Suleiman released a video being very clear against LGBT. Have you addressed this recent video? If not, why? Yeah, I haven't addressed it because I've been busy handling the trash, taking out the trash. But um, I will address it, actually. So stay tuned for that. It's a great advertisement. Response to Omar Suleiman that's coming very soon, um, probably within a week or so, inshallah. This one from, quote, that brush behind Daniel. Like, you named your YouTube account after Daniel. Uh, they say Javad's gay bar example is weird. Okay, thank you. But this one, just for the record, no one is at a gay bar. Alexander says, why do you have a pig toy? Not very Islamic of you. I think you already responded to that. This one from Elorante says, Giga Daniel by a... Let's see. A random commenter says, Daniel times Nick. He represents neglected white Muslims. Um, what is this about you and Nick? Nick who? Fuentes. Oh. <laughs> What about it? What about it? They say Daniel I criticized him. I slammed him. Nick. Maybe like okay. a debate. I'll debate this, him. Elorante says, Daniel, bro, please give me uh, give me my simp certificate in person. I am a physical therapist and Sambo sleep specialist from former Soviet Union. What does that mean? Syed Fashidin says for Javad, uh, why don't you grow a beard? 
Is that a Islam thing? Yep. Really? I didn't know that. I'll give For you a real Muslims. Uh, I just unmuted you. So I don't believe that uh, growing a beard is about your tells you about how virtuous you are. We believe in following the Prophet when it comes to his virtue. That's what the Quran, when it talks about him being an exemplar, the very next verse is talking about his bravery and his patience and his steadfastness. So that's what we believe. So for me, following the example of the Prophet Muhammad means that I don't support uh, brutal and nasty things like uh, you know sex, uh, slavery, rape. Uh, conquest, child Lost. marriage, these kind of things. Uh, yeah, the, the prophet had, had this concubines. One. The prophet had concubines. Freed, freed, I, we already uh, had this debate. Yeah. We already had this yeah, debate. Yeah, you lost, so lost that one you too. Lost it. So you didn't even know. Yeah. Talk about my kids. Jaw. Talk about my wife. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just says keep bringing it back there, even though they were they were completely yeah. Keep out. keep you know, talking they, about my family. Hold on. They say for Javad, you denounce Agua Aga San, who is well known stooge of British. Oh, good point. This is again. They try to smear me, like his um, his camp try to smear me. Sometimes they think I'm Ahmadi. Sometimes they think I'm Ismaili. Sometimes they think I'm Hindu too. They, they, this is how Hindu. Fine. This is this is how the fundamentalist brain thinks. But the reality is, is that I believe in loving people of all different religions, and I don't like, fear them like Daniel does, and uh, you know even fellow Muslims. Um, so no, I'm not going to be here and be your stooge and condemn anyone or anything. As far as Al Khan. The third, I mean, yeah, they obviously they would be uh, loyalist to the British based on the fact that people like Daniel would want to kill Ismailis. He justified genocide, just, ethnic cleansing. Again, I have the nope. tweet, Daniel. Where did you, I, you, where did okay, I justify I have, him? So, so let me yeah, get the sure. tweet for you. This, okay? These are your Let's, lies. Oh, where yeah, I say, really? I justify Move genocide. Oh, show you know, that. Plausible deniability that. always for Daniel. Show Just like that. The, show what, that. what did you mean when you said show bungee that. jumping? Hey, of can you, can what you, you what why you don't you say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why saying, don't you, why can't you put, uh, send salawat to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Can you pronounce I, it? Can you pronounce I praise on the Prophet? Can you? Can you? I'm, because can I you? believe that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, you believe the Prophet. You literally were saying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, wow. Gibrit Shwaga, too, says to both, what's the meaning of Salat in the Quran? Which is the root word? Uh, go ahead, Javad, first. So, while Daniel pronounces Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he simultaneously uses Christian early accounts that, that he is an warlord, and this, uh, 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 he, those also said that he was a demon possessed, and he's using those sources to know about the Prophet. I, on the other hand, respect the Prophet and try to clear his good name from the filth that Daniel and his kind attribute to the Prophet. And so that's the reality. So I don't consider the Prophet to be a warlord like Daniel does. He's using this Christian one from Ibra. Got oh, Daniel, did you want to respond to that? Wait, what was the question? The root word for Salat in the Quran. What's the meaning of Salat? It's a connection, Sila. This one from Corvo Adams says, question for Javad. You led Kutba, but didn't memorize Ayat al-Kursi. <laughs> um, we've already been over that. Abu Abdullah says, Javad, Masha Allah, Javad, your recitation moved me. Is it being sincere? Yeah. This one no from Truth. I mean, my, my recitation truth speaker. is not the absolute worst. It's not the no, best, he, I he impressed me. That. I was impressed. Um, I didn't think okay. he knew the three well, quotes. I was impressed. This is a lot. This is Mashallah, a lie, you are this a real is, scholar. Is, oh, you're a real you, scholar. What are your, what are your <laughs> traditional? You recited the three quotes. Give me the your three quotes, amazing. Your I was no, no. So I was well, really impressed. Me, I'm not. I'm not me. being sarcastic. Well, what, what, tell me I'm about not your sarcastic. Javad, that you, I'm you not being do... sarcastic. You guys I was talking at the same impressed. time. Hold on. I'm sorry, but I was impressed. Truth speaker says, Daniel, is there any action of the U.S. government that would be egregious enough for you to do hijra? Are you relying on them for protection from them? Go ahead, Daniel. Are you going to do some hijra soon? Hijra means to um, emigrate out of the country. So, um, yeah, if the U.S. government banned education of children, like homeschooling uh, and being able to control education, then I would personally try to do Hijra, and I would recommend that other Muslims in the country do Hijra. Um, the problem is that the U.S. bombs countries that don't impose its liberal ideology like that's the problem with moving to a country like afghanistan or even um you know countries in africa because the u.s is constantly uh, attacking and boycotting or um uh imposing sanctions on countries that actually imp 
uh, implement Islamic law. That's the problem. Um, the rest of these super chats look uh, oh, there's one positive one. Totolino said, thanks for the debate. Have a good night. All credit to the speakers. They are the lifeblood of the channel. They're linked in the description. You can certainly hear more from them. Thanks for your positivity, Totolino. The rest of them are basically just people calling both of you <laughs> bad names. So not very productive to read. We're going to go into the next section, which is 15. Oh, we got that one. 10 minute closing. So 10 or five. Is, it's 10 is what I have. So oh, wow. unless there's something, an email that's different, that's what I've got here. So what we're going to do is first, let me just fix my screen. And then I'm going to hand it over to Jav Javad went first. So we're going to have him go first for the closings. Javad, I've got the timer set for you. The floor is all yours. Okay, just one second, please. All right. Um, I'm ready to begin if you're ready. Ready. And if I could get a... Uh... Two minute or one minute warning, please. Thank you. Yeah. All right, I'm going to begin now. All right. Thank you so much. Let's recap how this dialectic began. I have been challenging dishonest Dan for a long time to debate on the topic of Islamic modernism, which is the very thing he rails against all the time. In fact, his fraud of a book is literally called The Modernist Menace. Dishonest Dan knew what would happen if we debated that topic, and we all saw what happened in the last debate, where he revealed that he almost had no knowledge of Islamic studies. Because Daniel did not want to debate me on an intellectual level, since this would be bad for his grift business, he then instead chose his standard method of ad hominem attack, smearing me as a quote-unquote fed. His exact accusation, as articulated again in our debate, two weeks ago was, and I quote, you are on the payroll of an organization that is getting funding directly from the Department of Homeland Security, unquote. This is a demonstrably false lie and slander, which I could uh, actually sue him for. I worked for MPAC for less than a year, during which time MPAC received zero dollars in federal funding and a grand total of zero dollars from the Department of Homeland Security. If dishonest Dan was an honest man, he would retract and apologize and say, I'll attack you from another angle. But he won't do that because he is, after all, dishonest Dan. He can never admit that he was wrong or false or lying. The irony is that dishonest Dan uses CV attack against me, even though the MPAC controversy with regard to CVE took place several years ago before I joined MPAC and had nothing to do with me. Not only this, but Dishonest Dan himself accused the Akin Institute of being involved, at least in some way, with CVE officials and implicated with intelligence services. He uses 2017 posts from Omar Suleiman to claim this, but Daniel, Dishonest Dan, you yourself were a part of Yakin at that time, and so you said nothing at that time against any of this. So wouldn't this make you a fed by your own logic? The level of hypocrisies and double standards abounds in the case of Dishonest Dan, who is a serial liar and professional grifter. Dishonest Dan mocked me for supposedly getting fired from MPAC as research director. I wasn't fired. I resigned and resigned amicably. Meanwhile, Dishonest Dan was fired from Yakin and became a disgruntled employee afterward. He was fired from the exact same role as research director. But this doesn't stop Dishonest Dan about launching an accusation against me where he's vulnerable to counterattack. That's Dishonest Dan through and through. Dishonest Dan's grift means a shift to the far right. That's after he got fired from uh, Yakin. He started attacking Yakin on the very things that he was promoting just a day before. And he has recently gone postal against Muslim leaders for their Navigating Differences paper on the LGBTQ issue. Yet Dishonest Dan himself published the first draft of Navigating Differences in 2019, which honestly was more mild towards the LGBTQ issue than the Navigating Differences paper. Everything he criticizes in Navigating Differences is in a, his own 2019 paper. Dishonest Dan and a grifter. That's what he is. Dishonest Dan criticizes Muslims for allying with people on the left, yet Dishonest Dan himself seeks allyship with white nationalists and red pill misogynists. He has friendly conversations with them and then for plausible deniability he calls them debates, even though they all say we had a great conversation, it really wasn't a debate, and we have all this common ground. Dishonest Dan accuses other Muslims of being bootlickers, but Dishonest Dan is himself a bootlicker, just a bootlicker of white nationalists. Remember his words that he would repeat to them, I love white people. Please accept me as white. Dishonest Dan's desperate attempt at validation from the white nationalists and alt-right is sad, pathetic, and embarrassing. Dishonest Dan accuses Imr Suleiman and other Muslims of this or that, simply because someone is standing next to them in a picture or video. He even comically criticizes them for two white grins or kneeling. How about kneeling to white supremacists like Dishonest Dan? does, or about his multiple associations with Islamic extremists. So he wants to distance himself from them, but then why doesn't he just repudiate these individuals and offer an apology? But like the true Trumpian character he is, he can't ever apologize or retract. Dishonest Dan should repudiate Haitham, Saifuddin, Al-Alwan, the Al-Qaeda Mufti, Ahmad Musa Jibril, and all of these other figures that, he's sympath that are sympathetic towards Islamic extremism, extremism Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. Dishonest Dan will now cry and play victim that you're putting his life at, and livelihood at risk by pointing out these links. Don't you think that it is the links themselves that threaten all of this, your own stated extremist views? And how about all the people that you put in danger? Dishonest Dan, I've heard that you, after um, uh, um, you attacked Omar Suleiman, he now needs a security detail. And you have called me a Fed. And literally, you put my life in danger by the things that you say, and your followers call me a Kafir, Zindik, and say that I need to be killed. 
After all, Mufti Abu Layth's house was attacked by your kind of ah right bros, and I was mentioned in the same video. So what about you putting my life at risk? But you just like to play victim all the time. And it's you who actually accused Muslims of being feds, and you've also called the cops on Sherman Burgess for not committing a crime. He was an extremist, just like you are an extremist, but you were snitched on him. Dishonest Dan accuses me of being a fed for simply cracking a joke or calling him ISIS light, whereas Dishonest Dan literally said to call the cops on Shimon Burgess, a far-right convert, as we've said. This is the Dishonest Dan. He's inconsistent. Meanwhile, I have said that Daniel is an extremist, but his speech is protected. I was even against his Twitter ban, let alone calling the cops on him. And there's the receipts that I've shown on that. Dishonest Dan, you go into the finances of other orgs, but you refuse to release the finances of your own uh, for-profit business, and you come up with meek excuses for that. Dishonest Dan, you praise the Taliban and yet refuse to move there and instead live in the comfort of your own home in Texas with your rich family. Why is that? Dishonest Dan, your entire family is highly educated, with all the women in your family being educated and are working, including your own wife, who is a part of your organization and a spokesman for you on your YouTube channel. Now you're trying to hide behind her and claim that she has nothing to do with your organization. You literally have her on on your YouTube. Why do you then preach that women should not receive a college education? You demean college education for women, yet you tout your wife's education and use it as marketing for your school to make money. Dishonest Dan, you make fun of men whose women work, yet your wife works and runs your institute. Dishonest Dan, you blur out the face of Muslim hijabis on your channel, yet your own wife, who is part of your organization, a grift, does not wear niqab and has a public profile on Instagram without niqab. The one that I showed, but I'm the one who blurred it. You are the one who did not blur it. Your wife did not, at least. Or maybe you didn't know about that. Why does your wife cosplay on your YouTube channel? Dishonest Dan, you mock Khalil and Dani for being a glorified TA at Agastana when you yourself have admitted that you tried to go to become a professor, but you were a failure in the graduate school tenure track. You were not able to go that route at all. So why are you lying and trying to downplay the achievement of Khalil and Dani? Why do you lie all the time? Were you lying then or are you lying now? And if Andani is a glorified TA, what is your wife, who's a senior instructor at your made-up institute? Dishonest Dan, you've said to me numerous times that I'm a no-name nobody. But to your own audience, however, you say that I'm a Harvard academic and academics are getting more influential and that it's important to refute such people as me. So which one is it? You're a liar. That's what it is. You speak with both sides of your mouth. You claim that Harvard means nothing and you have even made fun of me for mentioning Harvard a lot. In fact, it's you who flaunts Harvard undergrad repeatedly. You're the only one I know who puts it on their book cover. You and your wife flaunt it and make that as part of your marketing strategy. You accuse me of deforming Islam. Fine, I'm a reformist. I admit that. But meanwhile, you destroy traditionalist Islam more than anyone else. You make Islamic traditionalism look barbaric and you attack all the traditionalist scholars as a layperson with no ijazas, something that is simply not allowed in traditionalism. You're not a traditionalist, you're a postmodernist. You are against hijabi women posing clothed in Playboy magazine, which I disagree with too, but you simultaneously consider sex slaves posing virtually naked in slave markets as part of family values, which is worse than posing clothes, uh, per, 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 posing clothed in a magazine. Overall, <coughs> Overall, you are a grifter of the worst kind. As Imam Suhaib Webb said about you, quote, you are completely unaccomplished intellectually and Islamically. All you have done is your social media following, which you have obtained through your extreme grift and selling out the Muslim community. You are nothing but a content creator, meme maker, and a non-serious failure in life. You had a promising beginning at Harvard, but it's been downhill ever since. You couldn't get into even Harvard's philosophy master's program, worked at a minimum wage job, and then you were desperate to get that job at Yakin. After you got fired, you've been angry ever since. You scrambled to make money, and now you're engaging all of this grift, taking us for a ride. I repeat the charge against you. You stand here accused of being an agent provocateur, spreading the worst stereotypes of about Islam. You're an insincere grifter, an extremist, a racist, a hypocrite, a conspiracy theory kook, a smear merchant, and serial liar. And nobody should take you seriously. You are now found guilty, and the punishment we deem worthy is complete cancellation by the Muslim community. This means that nobody should be allowed to platform you again. Anyone who does so will also be canceled. Anyone, and anyone who did it in the past must now issue a condemnation of you and, or also risk cancellation. I am, of course, not a mainstream traditionalist, so maybe my words will go in vain. That's fine. I'm happy with my position as an academic and liberal Islamic intellectual pushing the boundaries of Islamic thought. But the reality is that it's unfortunately some mainstream traditionalist organizations that supported you and platformed you and created the Frankenstein monster that is Daniel Hakikachu today. And they must reverse the damage and take the steps that I've laid out. Complete cancellation and repudiation. As far as MPAC, although I no longer work for this organization, I'll always be a proud supporter. Unlike Dishonest Dan, who works as an agent provocateur to reinforce the worst possible image of Islam, MPAC works to increase positive Muslim representation in the media, in Hollywood, and at all, all levels of the government. Those in such delicate situations must engage in the difficult balancing act that Dishonest Dan himself admitted to many years ago when he was speaking about Imam Umar Suleiman. In such difficult positions, sometimes you get it right and sometimes you get it wrong. MPAC may have made mistakes in the past. Imam Su Suhaib Webb may have made mistakes in the past. Imam Umar Suleiman may have made mistakes in the past. But all of them have done immense good for our American Muslim community and you have done nothing for the American Muslim community except divide them and spread fitna. You have favored grift and self-enrichment over service and community. You are a failure in this life and you threaten to be a failure in the next life unless you cease and desist from this destructive path you have chosen to take. I sentence you now to cancellation. May God have mercy on your soul because we do not.
We'll jump over to Daniel for his opening statement or closing statement. Long day. Thanks very much, Daniel. The floor is all yours. Uh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Can you hear me? I thought you were muted. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, so Javad claims that he's getting uh, death threats. Every public figure gets death threats. That's part of being a public figure. The difference with Javad is that he uses terms that gets you in trouble with the federal government. This is, this is Fed behavior. He's done it in both of our debates. And that, that's the difference. Every public figure gets death threats. So what? Uh, but you invoke language, and this is your plausible deniability. You, you say, oh, I don't want you to be attacked by the government, yet you use the triggering red flag language to smear someone as a supporter of terrorism, as you've done in this debate. This is exactly what CVE is about. You've demonstrated the worst aspects of CVE in this debate. Like This is embarrassing and quite shocking behavior from you. Um, you know, you're... It's true, you know, when it comes to critical race theory, I don't accept critical race theory, but that doesn't make me a white supremacist. This is a bizarre accusation from someone who is literally uh, promoting a white supremacist, Sir uh, Sayyid Ahmed Khan. You literally praise him and you say, yeah, he has some white supremacist views, but I think he's being judged too harshly. Like that's your perspective on a... Uh, Uncle T, native of informant, colonizer. Um, you know, you did dox my family. I think that's the biggest news about this debate. You showed pictures of my children. Uh, you used my wife's name, which is not public on our site. You claim that, oh, well, there's articles that have her name. But how do you know, like, if that's my wife or not, my current wife? You don't know that. This is, this is what doxing means. So you've doxed my wife's name. You have posted pictures of my children. And anyway, what kind of scumbag, even if my wife is involved with my organization, what kind of scumbag like just focuses so much of his talking points on my wife? Like This is a really bad look. It's disgusting. I, I'm shocked that you would take this path. It's like, you know, you talk about suicide bombing. You basically torpedoed your own career <laughs> for the purpose of saying my wife's name and showing her picture. Like, th this is so stupid. I hope Khalil didn't encourage you to do this because if he did, he's really your enemy. And Khalil, by the way, man up and debate me. Stop running, okay? It's interesting, Javad couldn't confirm that you're a Muslim uh, because you don't pray. You think it's permissible to drink Muslim. alcohol. Yeah, you consider someone who, d who doesn't accept the daily prayers, who, who thinks that it's fine to eat during Ramadan. He believes, he believes who in believes, hey, hey, don't interrupt my uh, opening statement. Come on, James. Uh, he uh, doesn't believe that you need to pray or fast or do hajj. You think he's a Muslim. So that's very interesting. Why won't Khalil debate me after I took care of his puppy here over two debates? Uh, my wife does not have an Instagram. This is a blatant lie. Have you heard of impersonation, Jafed? Have you heard that you can impersonate? There are so many accounts that are impersonating me. I really hope no one impersonates you on Twitter or on Facebook or anywhere else or your family members. This is something that is extremely distasteful, but it happens to people. So my wife does not have an Instagram. You say I'm anti-white, but I defend Andrew Tate. Do you know Andrew Tate is not a white man? He's half black. Um, so where's the racism with that? I had a minimum wage job after grad school. Yeah, are you looking down on that? It wasn't minimum wage. It was 12 bucks an hour. I was in a difficult situation and I worked hard and I got a job in the tech field. I worked in t the tech field for about eight years. Uh, alhamdulillah, it was a great experience over you know multiple companies in Silicon Valley. So I I've, uh, have been a professional for a, a long time. Yeah, you couldn't dox that, could you, Jafed? Uh, go, go and dox my employment record, and you'll see the companies that I worked for in Silicon Valley. I worked for companies like Staples. I worked for Fortune, or I didn't work directly for Staples, but I worked with them as a client. Um, so this is like such a stupid smear with your disgusting, arrogant elitism. Um, yeah, so you didn't answer the questions that I posed to you about MPAC's pro-invasion stance. Um, you didn't had no response to that. They're pro-Zionism. You had no response to that. For their pro-CVE stance, you admitted that, okay, they were involved with CVE, but mistakes were made, but they're not so bad. And ultimately, it was good that MPAC was involved with CVE because, you know, that's, they made it 
better for Muslims. This is exactly what every native informant, every Uncle Tom or Uncle T claims. You're no different than any of these uh, colonial agents who claim that, yeah, we're helping the colonizer because if we weren't helping the colonizer, it would actually be worse for Muslims. Or Muslims who go into the military, or Mortads, I should say, who go into the U.S. military and go and kill Muslims overseas, they can claim, oh, we're just making it better for Muslims because we're not killing as many Muslims as would have been killed otherwise if we weren't part of the U.S. military or the CIA or any of these kinds of uh, agencies that are killing or uh, oppressing Muslims. So this kind of argument is very typical of the native informants and feds uh, or fed affiliates. Um, you Let's remind everyone that you begged me begged me to delay the debate. And James is here. He can confirm that you begged me to delay the debate. And out of, you know, my kindness, I granted you that. And then I found out that you were sharing or you were following. There's like multiple accounts that dox me with just two or three or 10 followers. And you follow every single dox account. Okay, that's number one. And then you reply to these docs accounts. And yeah, you say something like, oh, don't share pictures of Daniel's family. But you know that when you reply to an account, that will show up on the timeline of your followers. You know that. And that's what you do because you're such a sleazy scumbag. And I don't have to convince the audience because you directly dox my family on, on this stream. It's unprecedented. There's no debate that James has had where this has happened. Like you got his stream in trouble. Uh, because of your irresponsible and unethical behavior, your cowardly behavior. So this is, so you begged me to de delay the debate. Oh, and then coincidentally, you announced that you're leaving MPAC <laughs> just a few days ago. Wow, what an interesting coincidence. Is that because you were canned? Is that because you were fired, Jafed? I don't know. I don't make a claim that you were fired because I don't have the receipts for that. So I'm just speculating. As for me, I was not fired from Yaqeen. I can provide the receipts from that. I left Yaqeen after uh, they would not allow me to uh, publish cer certain views on feminism, on LGBT, etc. That's why I left Yaqeen, but I was not fired. My, my employment with them was not terminated. I was not fired. Um, and I dare Yaqeen to uh, say otherwise because I'll bring all the receipts. Um, so these are just lies from, from you. Um, let's see. Also, you claim to like have such respect for imams and scholars. Like you keep name dropping these American scholars. Like you hate traditional Islam. So you should hate all of these scholars. So what, what is, <laughs> and, and plus these kinds of figures that you're name dropping like Omar Suleiman. Trust me, they don't want you to, uh, their names in your mouth. Like that's bad publicity for them. Um, yeah, so you're. Yeah, so you claim that you're so sensitive about uh, your child's health. I was showing consideration for your child's health when you asked, oh, my child has a fever, let's delay the debate. But then you post pictures of my, my children in the debate. Like that shows what kind of a scumbag you are. So yeah, overall this debate I think went about as much as I expected. You can't recite Ayatul Kursi, my five-year-old. Like Muslims can respond in the chat like, when did you learn Ayat al-Kursi? His excuse is, oh, Surah al-Baqarah is the longest surah in the Qur'an. Uh, yeah, so what? It's one verse of the Qur'an that children memorize because you're supposed to recite it as protection. Uh, maybe that's why you are failing so much in life, Jafed, and in this debate, because you're not reciting Ayat al-Kursi. Here's my recommendation for you. First, number one, um, say... Praise the Prophet وسلم, after you mention him. This is something that will bring benefit for you. Maybe guidance will come to you and you'll leave your state of apostasy. Uh, maybe start reciting Ayatul Kursi. Learn it, memorize it. This will protect you from evil forces. Yeah, roll your eyes. I know that you don't really believe in the unseen, but Ayatul Kursi is a sort of protection. Yeah, chuckle, chuckle. That makes you look really good. Ayatul Kursi will protect you. So, you need to learn that and memorize it. Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salawat after the name of the prophet. And uh, yeah, stop being such a sleazebag. Stop like spreading photos of people's wives and children online. Like that's another big advice I have for you. You've been, you're off of, 
you're off of MPAC. So I would have told you to quit MPAC to, you know, save your reputation. You're already out of that organization mysteriously. I don't know what's the real story behind that. But yeah, MPAC is such a such a Fed organization. Its harm to the Muslim community has been established just by my opening statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No one had a response to that. So alhamdulillah. Time. With that, I want to say thank you very much, gentlemen. It has been something tonight, that's for sure. Any, uh, oh, actually, we'll just, I think we could leave it at that. I do want to say thank you very much, gentlemen. Folks, we have many more upcoming debates. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button as we have many more upcoming debates. I want to say thanks so much for being with us, folks. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us here tonight as well. Thanks, Thank James. You, James. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Folks, stick around. I'm going to do like a two-minute after-show housekeeping stuff, in particular about keeping the chat clean from any sort of ethnic slurs, as a reminder. And want to say, though, thanks for your support. I'll be back in just a moment, so about 23 seconds. Stick around, folks, and I'll be back in just a moment. Thank you, gentlemen.